PKA560, our guest Danny Mullen is back. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Blue Chew and Feels CBD. Brand new one. We'll hear more about that later. Danny, looking fit. Yes. As always, looking mm. good. Good to have you back. Mm. Yeah, that's that COVID diet I had in August. Went to Vegas, and I guess it was just the absolute epicenter of this alleged Delta thingy. And mm-hmm. I was I was in nightclubs, bender weekend hangover. But then suddenly, I, I was I remember I was eating some pink berry frozen yogurt, and suddenly mm-hmm. it felt like I'd been dropped onto the Hillary step of Everest with no coat. Mm-hmm freezing <laughs> just started ch- teeth chattering and um and then suddenly it went from down like those uh, t- somewhere below zero body temperature to that night i soaked through my sheets five times you'd have to get up shower off all the sweat come oh, back think ass. i was okay sweat through another pair of underwear and a t-shirt have to find the new spot on the bed to sleep in and uh, i had it for about 15 days and Wait, but how many days were like that there were eleven days. Like there, there was wow. one day you must where have dropped some serious weight. Probably yeah, 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 yeah. Not much of an appetite. And um, there was the one day where I had that like um, that stage of grief where you're negotiating with God. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh I should have, I should have gotten the vaccine. I should have gotten the fucking va- I If I could go back in time, I would. And then uh, now that it it's passed, I just um don't want to get the vaccine again. But there was a day. <laughs> There's a day. <laughs> That's good. We shouldn't learn from. I mean, like for you going to like, I like how you said like I went crazy. I went to a nightclub. I was drinking. I, yeah. I didn't even wear a mask. It's like I saw a mm. video of you four months ago, open mouth kissing homeless people. Yeah, <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> that was pro- that was probably about a year ago. A year uh, ago. Okay. But uh, yeah, where what your the point you're making is absolutely valid. Are you all better now? Yeah, man, I feel great. I've Did been you get uh, to enjoy that. Like, you know, I, I might get the vaccine again just to see what free healthcare is like. <laughs> I think I use it. It's free already. anyway. <laughs> but oh. that's, that was the point. Oh, yeah. How much um, uh, did like you enjoy regaining the weight? Because if you're like me, are you, you're not like a naturally fat person. But like when I would get the flu and I would lose like six pounds when I like got back and my appetite was ravenous. Mm-hmm. I never thought like, let's take advantage of the lost weight. It was like, mm-hmm. no, you're in, you know, the world is in your debt. Do whatever you want now. Eat mm-hmm. anything. Did you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I my it was the perfect time. It was during my break from uploading videos to my main channel, and I was home with my mom. And my mom just gave me the standard fifth grade home from school with the flu treatment. So she was ordering sushi, cooking me spaghetti. So I really wasn't that deprived. What uh, the hard part for me wasn't gaining weight back. It's I I went back to jujitsu. And I felt like I had a plastic grocery bag over my head and mouth when I was rolling for like the first two weeks. It was suffocating how much damage this thing had done to my cardio and my lungs. Did you feel weaker, like in your muscles or anything? Oh, yeah, I felt terrible. Do you think your cardio damage was from um, the inactivity or just your lungs not being as effective as they used to be? Probably inactivity. I mean, it was like a, a month that I took completely off of going to the gym because I didn't want to, mm-hmm. like the day my fever broke, yeah. throw the key on back. and hop back on the mat. Yeah, yeah man. But you uh, should have came yeah. back earlier. Those people might want to code, might want to, might wanted to have had COVID too. They could yeah, have been it, trying to make weight. They yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Like you, you just sort of, I don't know, hogged it to it, yourself. No, and then even if there weren't weight issues, it's sort of like training with a weighted vest. It's it adds resistance and it builds character. Yeah, you'll be a Sherpa before you know it. Just what is Kyle doing? Towards, Kyle is having praying. a so, it's a seizure disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle has strep. I, I think I should quiet down and let Kyle tell his story. It's, it's only been told on PKN. Oh, um, yeah, I, yeah. I've been. I'm trying to think where we, where where we begin. I, I don't know. I've got a pretty bad fever. My my, my brain is a little slow. Um, I guess I've been sick since like last PKA. Like maybe since that Friday you know, the day after, obviously. Um, and, uh, it's, it's honestly, it's COVID symptoms. Uh, but I don't think I have COVID. Uh, and, uh, I, I was, I was going to get tested for COVID today when I went to urgent care, but, um, there was some confusion. And like I said, like, I'm something about like whatever's going on with me right now, I'm a little slow. Uh, so like I asked how much the test was and she's like, Oh, it's, um, $221. And I'm like, and I'm like, but what she was trying to say was like, that's the cost of your entire appointment plus a COVID test. 
Like, I think the COVID test was going to be like fifty dollars or something. Can you opt for just the test? Or I guess you had to go anyway and get your dot medicine and everything because you're very sick. <laughs> yeah, 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 slide the test under the door, and I'll, I'll give it to myself. And and no, I've got to have the appointment and the. Yeah. But like, I misunderstood her, and I thought the test was like two hundred twenty dollars, and I was like, "Well, no, I don't want that." She's like, "Oh, okay, so it'll be one hundred fifty then," or like, or and I was just mm-hmm. like, "Oh." Uh, but I didn't want to like pret- I didn't want to like reveal that I was an idiot and that well I didn't want to be like you're an idiot you described this whole thing poorly I just wanted to get into the doctor's office because I was kind of iffy and I figured maybe I could ask for one back there and I did but he didn't give me one he forgot because my doctor is 80 87 years old um, <laughs> great guy <laughs> take him off the front take him out 87 did you give you <laughs> I didn't follow a covid test oh okay he didn't give you. okay yeah so that would have um, been important yeah but no, like like today I woke up. Um, I'll, I'll I'll go back a little bit. Today I woke up and I felt really bad. Um, my throat was so sore that I couldn't really swallow. Um, I was eating breakfast and I could feel the food like sticking to my throat and sliding uh. down. It was like I was eating sandpaper. And uh, I'm using that chloroseptic spray and I'm taking like tons of over the counter pain medicines and uh, it's just not cutting the edge off. And I'm just laying there trying to like sleep. I've, it was like 8 a.m. and I had woken up because I, I went to bed early and I was trying to sleep some more. Like I was just trying to sleep until noon or something to not to like maybe wake up and be better. But I was just laying there in pain and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. What am I doing? And I called the doctor's office and they're like, yeah, come in at one. Uh, you, can, you can just walk right into the urgent mm-hmm. care. And uh, so that's what I did. And um, because I could feel my lymph nodes are really swollen and tender. And that says to me infection, not virus that's 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 a that's a strep throat thing your lymph nodes swell when they're dealing with um an infection of, of one kind or another and these specifically would indicate um a strep throat type situation uh so i, I went in and he was like yep that's strep you nailed it and i'm like i always do i always do <laughs> i don't know why i you fuckers <laughs> I, I just need you to write the scripts doc like, like <laughs> i don't remember the last time one of you people figured something out for me Derek was the last one of you people, quote unquote, to figure something <laughs> out that I couldn't figure it out. Figure he's out. only sort of one of you, and he's not even a real fucking doctor. He's, <laughs> oh, but they won't say that to his face. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'll say it to him. I'll say Beat it the shit I'm... out of that eighty-seven-year-old. <laughs> oh, he'd take him to Pound Town. Um. So yeah, he um. So he that prescribed me something different. Yeah, that's when you fucked the guy. Yeah, he would have I mean, raped that 87-year-old doctor. Dude, that doctor would have wished for the rest of his very short life that he had <laughs> Maybe, maybe. So How I don't know. How long have you been in on antibiotics? It's in hours, right? It's in hours. So they, um, he, he, was, he was like, all right, I'm going to prescribe you some, um, some steroids, and, uh, which I knew. I was like, prednisone? He's like, yeah. And in my head, I immediately went, I'm not going to take it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and and he's like, and uh, I'm going to get you some uh, moxicillin. And uh, if you want, we can what give you a that? shot of uh, penicillin. And I was like, how much is that? Because, you know, I don't, I don't have insurance. He's like, I'm like, how much is that? He's like, $25. And I'm like, fuck yeah, give me two. Like, let's give me go. four. <laughs> give me a couple to take home. Like, Do you have like, any you synthol know. while you're at it? Just a horrible <laughs> stomach problem because there's no flora in there. You do all. Oh, I immediately, I immediately like as soon as I got home, I started taking like um like like probiotics because I know I'm nuking my whole system today. Uh, so so mm-hmm. basically, um, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll send the nurse around with a shot. So she comes in, it's this uh cute little black lady, and uh, she's like, I heard you wanted a shot, and I'm like, you're goddamn right, I I want a shot. I am very sick. I was I was like, how do we do this? She's like, she's, she's like, well, it's going in your butt, and I'm like. All right, like, like like pants all the way off. Like like, do you want me to Charlie Brown this or like how are we gonna do it? Like why I said Winnie the Pooh. I said you want me to Winnie Pooh this thing? El and Carnitine it, track huh. marks across your ass back yeah, and forth for yeah. the last ten years. You want me to uh, Charlie Brown this? <laughs> so, she, um, so so I, I see the needle and I can I can tell like right away that it's a two inch long twenty five gauge needle or maybe twenty seven gauge something like that. And I'm like, <sighs> could I inject myself? And she's like, ha, 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 ha. and I'm like, no, really, could I do it? She's like. Well, where would you put it? Like she's like testing me. I'm like, right here in my upper glute. And she's like, Have you done that before? I'm like, Oh yeah, every day. I do it every day. She's like, Well, all right, sure. Here you go. <laughs> also, <laughs> sir, you shouldn't use that much penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> she's got it full of, you know, she's got three milliliters of fucking mm-hmm. um, wow. of penicillin, uh, and uh, I didn't know the consistency. So like. I aspirated it because she didn't do a good job. You know, I got the last of the air bubbles mm-hmm. out. I was, I was looking at her like, it's a uh. good thing I took over this operation. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Are, you're, 
where's the real nurse at? Because you just handed me a syringe and this is not properly aspirated. So like, she's like, are you sure you know? And I was like, pow. And I'm like all the way into my ass with this two inch needle. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. I do this literally every day. She's like, you're going really slow. I'm like, yeah, you bruise if you, if you go fast. This is three milliliters of liquid. She's like, oh, I guess I've never injected myself. I'm like, yeah, it really hurts. I've noticed that you guys always <laughs> slam them down. Like that really hurts. It makes a knot and it bruises. She's like, huh, okay. You learn something every day. And I'm like, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be learning anything right now. <laughs> if not from me. <laughs> not from me. I should not be teaching you anything right now, lady. That's the nurse that couldn't hack it at the hospital. I don't know what I don't know what her deal was, but like like I, you know, I took a solid like 45 seconds to get it all in, which is still fast, but there's a black lady staring at my ass crack while I do this and the you know, I, I wanted to get the show on the road and get out of there and get to my real, um, not my, not that those aren't real antibiotics, but I wanted to get to the fucking drugstore and get my amoxicillin. And, uh, and so like got out of there fucking, I don't know, $200 total or something like that for the whole shebang. The point of the shot is that it starts working instantly and you're a little bit of a, yeah, we're, start, we're right? yeah, yeah. This is a huge, like, like the penicillin would probably just do the trick on its own. Like adding mm -hmm. in like a full regimen of regimen of amoxicillin seems like overkill to me, uh, in my medical opinion. But I'm certainly they always say to... just take it until you feel a little better. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sense. corollary take... to that is get your medical advice from comedy podcasts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you see the sun rising on a new day, the sun always continues to rise. Stop. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you're it's... gonna feel better. So, uh, so yeah, I I got the prednisone. I was immediately like, not taking this. Uh, cause I don't take prednisone. I've got a long history with prednisone. It makes you feel and look awful. Uh, and, uh, but, but, you know, I immediately started taking my, um, amoxicillin and I've been, um, gargling with salt water and, uh, using lots of chloroseptic spray, which is that numbing cherry shit. And, uh, I just feel awful still. Um, it, it, it doesn't hurt to talk. I mean, it hurts a little, but like no bitch in my blood. And, but but when I swallow, I like like you'll see me like do this every now and then. It's because I'm like, don't swallow that hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, that sucks, like, dude. Like, yeah. like it's, it it really fucking hurts. But but I think it'll be over tomorrow. I literally think tomorrow it'll be like night and day because we've we've pumped sure. so much bullshit into my body today. Like like that that shot. I was when he offered it. I was like yes, because I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask mm -hmm. for a shot of penicillin because when he when he like looked at my throat, he's like oh that's red and i'm like <laughs> yeah he's like that must hurt huh i'm like really really that's fucking bad i'm here <laughs> i won't retell my strep story but and to add to it i think that if it works tomorrow it's strep if it doesn't work tomorrow our minds could be on covid yeah it could be it well could be what uh did they did both. they make you do that thing that. uh where they stick the long swab down your throat or did he just let you do an eyeball thing Oh, he shined the light in there, and he was like, "That strap." Like, 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 I think it's very clear. Like, it's probably strap. That, that's a well, good doctor. I remember going to like the doctor as a kid, knowing I had strap. My mom being like, "Taylor's got strap. I'm taking him to the doctor." And the guy would still do the the throat thing. And I, no, as a kid, it was horrible. I, I like my doc a lot. Um, it just so happens that his clinic also does TRT. So I've I've had discussions with him about TRT, and they do those um those IVs that. I, I'm going to ask Derek about the, those IVs that are provided by some clinics um, because I, I'm not sure how they're kind of borderline to me between like pseudoscience or What's kind of in like, it? they have different ones. And let, let me look up exactly what they are. It's different kinds of health and wellness. Like like the one it's of those. It's not TRT in the IV. No, lots of vitamins and stuff. Like you're doing a full bag of saline with like vitamins and minerals. And, and there's like different ones. Like, like, like one of them's mm -hmm. like for one of them's for hangovers. Like if you've had like a crazy night of drinking, like I um I can't remember what like wealthy person I've heard that does this, but like every time they every morning after like a crazy night out, they they, they have a bag of saline with like certain the, shit. The, in this it. is I'm a real a doctor, that but works. that makes sense to me because yeah. uh, one of the hangover issues is that you're dehydrated. Yeah, and so they can totally I, cure that. And I just want to say this for for those of you out there who are, who are like in your in your twenties or whatever, and you, you you have hangovers and you always have those rough nights of drinking. I haven't had those in so fucking long because when you finally get into bed, two things. One, if the room is spinning, you put one, one foot on the floor, okay? That's your first pro tip. That'll stop the room from spinning. One foot on the floor. You're, you're, you're stabilized now. Your brain mm -hmm. figures shit out then. The other thing is drink at least a full glass of water or Gatorade, preferably, before you go to bed. You're going to have to wake up and piss anyway. You've had so much beer or liquor. Like, mm -hmm. Don't even worry about that. You're getting up in the middle of the night. 
but you'll feel good the day after. I, I've had two hangovers in my entire life. Kids, I mean, I'm the drinking expert. I'll take it a step further. Put your cheek on the cold tile floor of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're right there to pee afterwards. <laughs> <Vomit> <laughs> towards the toilet. So it's easier to scoop in there. Like a, a friend of mine, his wife is a doctor. And like, it's funny you mentioned the IV hangover thing because he's mentioned that he was like, yeah, we were at this trip and they had these banana bags. And then my wife like gave people these IVs for hangovers. And there were, he was like, it felt like, nothing he's ever experienced before where like in real time he went from like that woody status like i'm i'm dying give me my will so i can finish it to like he said like over the course of five six minutes sitting there letting it go in at least part of it and being like oh, i'm good like everything that was out of me totally replenished i'm feeling soft i'm sure that's not good for you all the time but it can't be worse for you than a hangover right so that, so they have a bunch of iv bags they'll do they have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten um, one of them is for athletic hydration. One of them is for weight loss. One of them is like B12 energy booster. Um, uh, go, but go back. Yeah, but we'll go, back. <laughs> go back to you. Want to see, you want to know what's in there? Um, well, it's a fine poison that gives you lockjaw. Before I look at it, before I look at it, I guarantee, before I look at it, I guarantee L-carnitine is one of the ingredients and mm -hmm. some basic bitch vitamins. Like, like that's why I think that like they're probably mix and match here and they're like, oh, and it does this too. Um, yeah, immediately. Yeah. Uh, essential vitamins and minerals in, such as L-carnitine, vitamin C, B-complex, um, methionine, uh, inositol, choline. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking make it as complicated as you can. Choline. You can buy a bottle of that on Amazon. I, 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 I took that during my weight cut. It's like over the counter. Like, What does uh, that do? It's, it's another weight cutting agent that's like over the counter and like um, like super soft core. Is it like no go. water retention or no appetite? Yeah, no water retention. Neither one of those. Like, like it's, it's just helping you sh like burn fat. Does it um, just tell you what's in it or the amounts of what's in it? Uh, just what's in it. Um, it. It doesn't say the amount. It could be an ineffective. Oh, actually, dose. actually, hey, um, yeah. Uh, oh. It kind of does here. So 800 milligrams of glu that word I can't do, glutathione, <laughs> um, 1,000 milliliters of saline, 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C, and the rest is like proprietary. So like X amount of tor taurine, X amount of biotin. Uh, and But like I said, there's 10 different ones. I've thought about doing it before. I don't know how much they actually cost. Um, the thing is, I really hate IVs. Like, like I really dislike them. I get it. I, I can get queasy uh, mm -hmm. when, when they when they pop that vein. Um, I so love like, IVs. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't love them. I wouldn't. I do. Dude. I've never had an IV and a bad experience. I get the IV suddenly like, all right, that whole thing about eating, it's just taken care of for me. Now they put sugar in it. They put liquid what? in it. They, it's just, yeah, you don't, you could be on an IV and, and you, they just got you covered. And you they're putting I'm, sugar in there. I mean, probably they're, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, uh, could you grind up a pot roast and just throw it in the, yeah, right I, here. I, I, I might be wrong about the, the, <laughs> Food, but I think there's something to that. I'm not that, that uh, but anyway, so your but your hydration is totally solved. And plus, it's usually the gateway to better shit, right? When you get morphine, it's from that IV. When you get like uh is it fentanyl that, that they give you like that that's through that IV line. That IV line, it's like it's like a Pavlonian thing. Maybe it's just saline now, but they've introduced a gateway to more glorious things that could come soon. Like drugs. Suppose, you know, but, you know, <laughs> they've opened up the highway for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but but I really hate intravenous stuff. I don't like it in the uh the crook of my elbow. I really dislike it in the back of my hand. It always hurts. Um, I've never had one that didn't hurt. I mean, I when I injected myself today, it didn't hurt a bit. Like 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 it might like like it I was immediately I was like, oh man, I really thought this was gonna hurt because I usually don't use needles this fucking big. It's a fucking harpoon I stuck in my ass today. I didn't I wasn't looking forward to it, but it really didn't hurt. I, yeah, but, at the prices that these hangover cures are sold, I'd rather get a thousand Gatorades, like hmm. three three hundred dollars. Oh, I doubt this shit is that much because I saw poor people in there today, and they were there for warm. How'd you identify them as poor people? No, I mean the mobile IV medics. They're wearing dirty sweatpants in the middle of the day. I walk around L.A. with jizz stains <laughs> on my Under Armour sweats. Yeah, but that's in L.A. This is in a place where, like, I mean. They've got no business wearing wearing those. Like like, it, like like the the hobos in L.A. have more money than these people. Okay. By the way, I'm right. They do put food through the IV. It's called. I also just 
I also just want to say this was our obligatory 30 minute supplement discussion on PKA when I'm on. <laughs> well, it's good. Whether, Kyle's an expert. He is. Whether it's herpes medication, load stacks, or intravenous hangover cures, you let me we got you covered, you people. Like, like if, if you ever get the herp, you know, if you've ever got some HPV, like, mm -hmm. like, like whatever you got going on, I can hook you up. One of our podcast uh, sidekicks got chlamydia in his throat, which is novel as far as my experience. I've never seen that before. Uh, Gross. Straight guy? Yeah, that's a fair question to ask, though. I yeah, think he yeah. contracted it in West Hollywood, too, which is, you know. Your friend, so look, not your, your friend has opened his, uh, mm. his world up to, to, to other possibilities, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Zach says he got, he got it from eating pussy. What is he? What is he like deep throating or clit? Right. He, that's not how clits work. See, this is going to support your theory that my buddy's gay, Kyle. He got it from licking the girl's asshole. Oh, now that can happen. He's straight again. OK, he's straight. He's straight. I've come full, full circle now. Yeah, he could actually get it from eating her ass. You could also get salmonella. So make sure they're clean back there, boys. So David, yeah, I have a oh, question for you, gross. and it comes from the last, <laughs> it comes from the last Patreon hangout. We do this thing as a fifty dollars tier. We hang out with the pay all right. So a straight guy. Oh, I also I also just want to interrupt you, Woody. I on my Patreon we tried to copy exactly what you guys did, but it was just too complicated, and we just never did a fifty dollars tier <laughs> hangout. We tried shamelessly to rip off PKA and uh, walked away with our tail Whatever between our legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm sure we do it without any technical. I love the fifty dollar patron. Like, like I'm paying the show full attention right now, but I've got the high stakes poker game open on one of my other monitors. I'm not playing. I'm just like. If something crazy happens, like like I'll just glance over and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. They are playing so high stakes now that I can't play. <laughs> <laughs> so this is important. There's a guy and he's straight. And he says that he just got pegged by a trans guy. No, a trans oh. girl. Right? So this is oh. someone who was born a man, but now oh. vibes girl, but has oh. a penis. Oh. And and he got pegged by her, and he maintains that he keeps his straight card. Now there's a gay guy in the same call who uh -huh. says, "No, you don't." And then that led to the discussion. We talked for like an hour about like, like what is gay? <laughs> okay, sex? is it is it the penis that makes it gay? And, and I think most of us agreed it was kind of the vibe, uh, right? Well, yeah, you, I, you I'm so with you. Bailey J versus help me, with Buck Angel. Things. Yeah. Uh, I'm so with you. Woody, if I flew to your house and you helped me put a foreign object up my asshole, that would be a gay sex act. But it's not. But, but but what if Woody there, was in a dress? There's levels. Then I'm down. That would change it. That would literally <laughs> change it, Taylor. Like, like not. Look, it's not like you're either in like position. It's not binary, right? It's not position one or position two. Mm -hmm. Because I would argue that if yeah. I were attracted to Danny, or it's, it's gay, but. It's much gayer if I'm attracted to Taylor. That's fair. It right, okay. like, like Danny. Da Danny's all hairless over there. Yeah, he, very nice skin. Danny right? just made the decision to vibe guy. He could choose he, the other way. He has decided to look like a man. It was not thrust upon him. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 like, I can beat all of you up. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> he beat us. and he could and, beat the shit out of us and rape us, and that would be gay. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I, I think all elbows it, and teeth in that scenario. He wouldn't like it. <laughs> I, I, it's really interesting. I, it's definitely less gay than if it were the uh, trans individual's real penis. I think right now, just transgenderism is just coming into acceptability. It's sort of like where gay was 10 years ago. By the way, I'm and, like a thousand percent sure what he like told that story wrong. There's no way that it was a person who had a real penis, but opted instead to use a fake one. Yeah. Uh, it's, it seems... right, that's how I remember it. I didn't mean to tell it wrong. I, no, 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 no. I, I, of course you didn't mean to tell it wrong. I, but, but like, it's a, it's a, tra it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a. If it, I don't was, know if if a a, a if it was a girl with a dildo, there would be no question. It was a straight act. Mm -hmm. It, it yeah. was the fact that it was a trans girl, someone mm -hmm. who used. I think you're conflating guy. two different scenarios because we we're talking about so many different scenarios, and yeah. there was one scenario where someone was just getting pegged. And then there was another scenario where someone was just getting fucked by a trans girl. And like, 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 like I think maybe we're comparing those two. Like there was a I lot like of stories. Getting fucked by a trans girl is a the trans girl has, has, well, that's a real penis then if it's a trans yeah, girl. Yeah. A trans but, man is a woman who is, who has transitioned. I have into, all this, right? So he, but so the guy Kyle, had sex with the trans girl, but said that 
it was straight because she now vibes girl. And Switch was like, no, nah, not straight. Yeah. But she Switch used, being uh, the gay guy. She used a dildo instead mm-hmm. of her penis. There were other stories that involved that, but this was a, okay. if I understand oh, it right. This oh, trans okay. girl used the stories, you asshole. Yeah, yeah, you said Wait, I didn't. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's because we're just fact checking here. no one's no one's suggesting you're a liar, Woody. Like, like we're we're just trying to get the story. Yeah, you did. I'm just trying to it was it was Kyle, I mean it was a great philosophical issue where guys driving on the freeway, here's on the radio, be careful there's a crazy guy going backwards. Looks up, the, says everyone on this freeway is going backwards. What's he talking dude, about? The, the way Here I am, the, right? the way Woody said it made it so much funnier in my head because I pictured mm-hmm. a guy oh. who is thinks he's straight yes. on his hands and knees turning yes. around, and then she's about to put her penis in his ass, and he yes. goes, "Whoa, what am I gay? Use the dildo." Yeah, no, 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 no. no. If I understand the story right, a guy straight on his hands and knees, getting as, as she puts her penis in his butt afterwards, comes on the Discord and says. That doesn't make me gay. Yeah, you said pegged though, and I oh, think did that I use that word? Yeah, I always yeah. think of pegged as meaning a dildo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where I made it confusing. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Let me give you my take, Woody. First of all, what you brought up with the dildo—that was a very interesting philosophical question. I'm glad you let us play with that, even though it wasn't a real thing that happened. But Let's talk about it in three hours. As, as far as <laughs> as far as the trans girl. I think trans, it's like, that's the new minority that's still trying to break through into the mainstream. I said it earlier, but there were gay people were 10 or 15 years ago. And I think if you give it another 10, 15 years, it will be considered straight to get fucked up the ass by a former man, now woman. I mean, if you think back far enough, like in the 1800s, your family and friends probably would never talk to you again if you had sex with a Chinese girl. Like, that's where the level of bigotry was back then. Mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years, you're going to be straight as a goddamn desert highway if you plowed Mish by a trans girl. That's what I think. Wow, we went Mish. That makes it even gayer, the face-to-face part. Yeah. (laughs) I um, I, I was on Amazon. I was on Amazon. (laughs) This is so many questions in my head. Where's the line? I guess Kyle's right. It is a spectrum because it's absolutely a spectrum. It's much straighter to be attracted to Finster all done up than to want to fuck, fuck, uh, yeah, Buck Angel and his pussy. I I agree. And if you were to go back even like three and a half years, I didn't even get the whole gender versus sex thing, the girl with the penis thing. Like I, I flat out didn't understand you, the concept. It you get like, it now as if it's crystal I do. clear. You know, yeah. I straight up do. I just get it. I, I get someone who uh, has chosen to live life as a woman, even if they have a penis and they say, I'm a girl now. And I'm like, all right, so this is just like, this is the, what you're vibing. This is your vibe. This is, this is your mood that makes you feminine and uh, you know, dick or no dick. That's sort of just your your own business. It, it's what yeah. you outwardly project, whether you want to be boy or girl. And uh, I know there's people listening that think that's insane, but I I, I get what they're going for. Yeah. And I have no issues with it. Also, yeah. and, and Danny was like, hey, you'll be straight as a highway if you do this. Cool, cool. <laughs> I also think that you'll always be allowed to pick what you want. Like it's going to be okay to say, I like girls, but not the ones with penises. And they'll be like, well, you do what you want. I don't know about that one. No, um, no eventually oh, really? that will be that, that will that, be. Uh, what do you mean? Eventually, yesterday that was yesterday. Transphobic. <laughs> yesterday was transphobic. Last year that was transphobic. It's been a really? thing for a while. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So Kyle, if you don't have trans on your like okay on your Tinder profile, that makes you a little transphobic. Makes you a bigot. Um, first of all, I don't I like don't the, I don't I don't <laughs> like the, when whenever you don't are not into something, suddenly you have a phobia of it. Yeah. Like, I I have a phobia okay. of being yeah, yeah. burned alive. Okay, I don't hate <laughs> fire though. I don't hate <laughs> fire. I don't see somebody <laughs> a cigarette and go and like start hate criming them. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I, I hate, I hate that whole thing. Like, like, Kyle. You know, either... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I called out to you in the middle of your thing. Continue. I'm my bad. No, I refuse now. Um, okay. oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, there was there, <laughs> there was a clip going viral that my girlfriend and I full body uh, winced at. It was a girl on TikTok, an obese girl who's filling the entire vertical frame of her TikTok video, um, aggressively telling the audience that, you know what, having a preference for being fat or skinny, it's not a preference. 
It's bigotry. That's like saying, I won't date black people. So you know what? Don't be fat phobic people. It's basically racist. I'm exaggerating is, a little bit, but that's what you like was going saying. for. It's not. Yeah, it is um, nothing like saying you won't date black people. <laughs> no, well, I, I mean it's a lot. No, it's, I'm, gonna, I'm going on no, a diet. I'm going to be white by first September. All, like what? First, no. Well, well, first of all, it, in, in my opinion, is just like saying that you don't want to date black people, which is a okay. Like I don't know how many how many chicks who I've seen profiles on Tinder where they're like, no white men. Yeah. And you know what? I don't go. Oh. Yeah. I go cool. <laughs> That swipe. I know which way to swipe now. Not to. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste your fine, time with my eight, with my lily white ass. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, if you're looking for a for a, for a brown guy or a black guy, like that's what you're fucking into. Yeah. I've got a friend who will only date Asian women. He mm-hmm. does not want a white woman in his life. He's a white guy. He doesn't. He, he's not into black women. He's not into white women. Only Asian women. He's not racist against white women. His mm-hmm. mom's actually his mom's Asian, which which is a little bit. <laughs> oh. Uh, I. I all right, your mom's Asian, right? He'll see this. He'll get back. To <laughs> um, so, but but yeah, like like, like so like, um, I don't really have any color preference at all. Like, like I've dated like black women, brown women, fucking Asian chicks. Like like every, every race I think that I can imagine. Um, and like I don't really have, I don't know that I've got a preference per se. Like mm-hmm. like, I don't know it's, preference because I can can I interrupt? Yeah. I, I, I can see beauty in everyone, especially mixes. I think somehow mixes always land as like extra beautiful. Yeah, there's this. But if I had read to it. pick like what the perfect one would be like, white chicks with dark hair are the hottest to me. That's mm. that. See, I, and that's I, your I preference. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I strong disagree. Um, it's yeah, me too. Definitely, um, definitely, probably. Um, white chicks with red hair i like red hair also i'm oh, red what? Red oh my god if, let me the, let me find this new red to me if the cubes aren't hair. dark you're playing on re, like recruit if, if they have no, cubes, they're they're not have just, just some yeah beautiful see, I, I, I like a little pube too that, no pubes you know, for me <laughs> well i'd like I, I was gonna make a joke but in, in reality no pubes vibes child to me and and i get maybe other people don't get that vibe oh no i, I get the I vibe do. and i prefer it <laughs> uh, makes you feel like you're back in grade school yeah uh, uh, that, well, it, uh, no it makes me feel like she's back in grade school which is what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what yeah my 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 theory is that white girls should never be somebody's first choice because if uh, as a white ev- exactly everybody has a built-in market of their own race like indian guys have access to the top indian girls asian guys have a group of hot asian girls that'll only date asian men we white guys have that too there's back and forth dating between white people the problem is that every race of man on the planet wants to lock down a white bride as a status symbol so there's immense competition for white chicks and they get big heads about it and out here in L.A., especially, <laughs> I, I'm hot. People want to fuck me out here in L.A. because I'm white. And I think one of the best plays a young man could make, this is for the uh, the single audience mm-hmm. members among you, is you, you start looking for black girls and Asian girls because they're over in the corner with 800 Instagram followers as opposed to 15,000. And NFL players aren't going to be trying to fuck your chick every time she goes out. And the guy who works at Goldman Sachs isn't going to slip her his business card. She's going to be under the radar and you have a much higher mm-hmm. percentage chance of having a fidelity filled relationship and a higher percentage chance of a uh, happy Pretty trail in the smart. belly get yourself an Indian woman <laughs> get yourself an Indian <laughs> if you want that, that hairy belly mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I mean uh, I, I I can't even be bigoted about your preference there Woody because we're not allowed to <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's I mean like, yeah every preference should be allowed unless unless you're a pedophile we can't can't be allowing them yeah. now wait Taylor what if the pedophile doesn't act on real people, but instead he engages in his impulses on anime pedophile, pedophilia material. I don't founder. You, you follow like you like looks at like cartoons of, of, of like of, children. Yes, I'm not like I've I've heard a both victimless sides. crime. I've heard both sides of that where people are like it gets their deuces out, and then I've heard other people say like it just pours in until they need more and more intense more and more intense stuff because like, you know how porn works you start off when you're like you know 12 or whatever and you're like 
boobs mm-hmm. and you're like oh and you're just like beating <laughs> off the just hits and then you're like i need something more intense I need something more intense and before you know it you're in a dark place and so yeah. like, it starts definitely off with see like couples in too. love and before yeah. long you're like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> couples who hate each other <laughs> and are mad at each gang bang and like so i could definitely see that point of like this these these pedophiles are going to tantalize their tongues a little bit with cartoons until that's just yeah. not enough and then they yeah. pursue real life so so this is my new favorite um uh chick on reddit um okay. it's not safe for work obviously um her username though for those of you out there who might want to find her it's uh the letter u the letter r as in your and then favorite redhead but favorite is spelled like they're fucking british or something so it's f-a-v-o-u-r-i-t-e <laughs> Brit- i don't know why she made this so difficult but it's your favorite redhead Good um god when did she turn 15 She's not. <laughs> um, 2016, I think. The shit won't load for me. I'm pissed. I want to see her. Shit won't load for you. She and so she's your favorite now, Kyle. You've been you've been tracking oh, all yeah. her posts and, and everything. I mean, she's super popular. So she's like top one percent on uh, OnlyFans as well. I don't pay for OnlyFans because why would I? Here's here she is naked. Um, uh, Does she like, use like, a filter to look that young, or do you think? No, she's 19. I mean, someday she will be. <laughs> <laughs> Four years. Not if I find her and put her in my freezer. Then she'll stay young and beautiful forever. <laughs> <laughs> this girl could legit pass for 15. Dude, I'm so fucking... Oh, here's a little gift. Guys. No, why would it work for me? A little gift. Um, yeah, here's a little gift. You, Danny. Maybe... I'll make a we, gift of this. Mine, here, here we go. Here we go. I was clicking on some... I don't know why. Just any of my secondary windows won't load right now. Well, it was bound to happen. Technology issues with Danny Mullins. Dude, PK, I love I the people that that comment on porn posts. <laughs> like, <laughs> you doing? Now that you're home, I'll give you a second workout. And she has, she I want to click like, on the like share this video just to see what happens. <laughs> you know, like just you're like oh yeah, let's tweet this one out and see. What, yeah, yeah. See what like what is it pre fill? I don't know. Pop it up on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally on, on Kyle's on uh, team, team Redhead with Kyle. Team Redhead, I'm not. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, man, a big time. Um, so so second in command is uh, Ayla Girl. Ayla Girl is um super fucking hot and has, she vibes much more um adult, I suppose. Um, for for I, I don't know if this is a good link. I'm just sending like multiples. Um, but it's her 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 shit is spelled A E L L A Ayla Girl. Much easier to like look up, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and she is a brunette, and she is very beautiful. I mean, they both look like they're worried about midterms. Like that's like, <laughs> <laughs> their, like level of age. Like, oh, Mr. Johnson's so mean in class. I mean, you know, like that's it. Or for them, it'd be Mr. Johnson's so friendly in class. I I, I see that she's pretty and that she's obviously busty, <laughs> but oh my god, she's I got tits too. She's the standout. The second image, you don't see it. Oh, dude, I can't see any of them. They're not working. None of she my has, are like, working. She has like a perfect body and she's very pretty. Oh, God. I, I, what were you saying? What were you saying? What are you, I'm sorry. I'm just, just uh, she I want to jerk off to her. So I, I feel like if you would walk through the mall or campus, you'd see like literally like 10% of the student body be her match. Would she be shoving things in her pussy? Oh, <laughs> probably only 3%. Man, of probably the not. Probably, probably that it takes some uh, clever dialogue to get. Well, there. I don't need any clever dialogue. I just <laughs> need to like open my fucking phone and Ayla girl is right there shoving produce into her snatch and uh, dancing around in her front yard or some man's front yard um, naked. Uh, and, uh, and I'm a big fan of it. Ayla girl and uh, your favorite redhead. How do you spell Ayla right girl? A-E-L-L-A. A-E-L-L-A girl. Kyle, I've been going on deep reddit beat off um, spirals because i've been trying to not watch porn so much because i've been desensitizing myself to the point where it takes like 20 minutes in tremendous grip strength to get myself off when i'm beating <laughs> off tolerance break i get in your grip yeah maybe <laughs> one of these like, you know, okay you can in, in addition to a, a herpes med tutorial you can teach me how to jerk off properly yeah um, I, I, I think I, I i've noticed that like so few women like know how to like operate their own vaginas and i can only imagine that it extends to men and their penises like like i don't i, I bet the average guy doesn't know how to like flexes like kegels to like make a cum shot really hit the other side of the room like <laughs> like, like uh, i see guys that's that's functional because like that. because like i see guys in pornos like and they're and they'll come and the cum just sort of like falls out of their penis mm-hmm. it's just like dribble dribble and i'm like 
I have never once came so pathetically. <laughs> Every time I come, it's just like, bam, bam. bam. I always assumed that those Every guys time like I come, I either up. bruise her cervix or shoot flies from across the room. I, I didn't. I <laughs> like a salt can. Look, <laughs> yeah. I, here's what I'm gonna do because I love cum experiments. I'm going <laughs> this week. I'm going to go for distance. I'm going to stand. <laughs> it doesn't even have a good ring to it. Cum experiments. <laughs> Yeah. I like it. Oh, I'm, doing I, I'm it. going to stand and come and nice. see how far I can go. Now, obviously, it's not very. It's, it isn't fair because height is going to come into it. A midget wouldn't could, could come much harder than me, but he doesn't have the range because I'm firing from a higher altitude. The, the, the physics. It's, you should sit off the side of what I assume is your standard height bed and do it from a seated position. I have a we rather tall call bed. It the Olympics. And I've got to come in my living room because I need I you need you need like hardwood because, so that you can like find every little bit of cum and clean it up. I'm not coming on my carpet. Well, then what are you a weirdo? You might lose the farthest dot. I might lose the farthest dot. A mirror is the best for that, but I don't have a mirror long enough. <laughs> and you what, know what, what about like a dark mirror. piece of paper? Like that would sort of dent you know, I think I think the hardwood's going to be the way. and it's better for cleanup as well. Um mm -hmm. and but, but but yeah, I'm going to go for distance. I guarantee I can come at least 8 feet. At least 8 feet. I guarantee you. You think so? That'd be I good. know so. I know so. Yeah. And so you're, you're always keeping I'll make a video. Coming. Yeah, make a yeah. video. You, we, we were not going to share it. Just send it yeah, to you us. Yeah, you're like flexing. You got to like flex your abs and stuff. Like there's a whole process. Like like every time it's just like, ah, ah. Like, like, like you, you really got to put put some oomph into this. I, I swear every time I see a porno where the guy is just like coming and it's just like, I don't know. It's just dribbling it's like out of like a science fair yeah. volcano. We're just kind of I barely... Him in my science fair volcano, yeah. It's my guess that this is his second shoot that day or that this, something went wrong. Maybe he prematured on the first one. It's not the amount. There's plenty of it. it and it doesn't matter if it's my third, fourth, fifth, tenth time coming that day. Mm -hmm. It's it's gonna There's going to be less semen, but it's coming out with the same ferocity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking uh, of I, masturbation, I how's been putting T right into his prostate? That shit has worked out. I, I, speaking of uh, <laughs> speaking Dick masturbation, Bain's just blown out, just <laughs> like, like a heroin addict. So I was. Uh, you think his biceps are good? You should see his fucking <laughs> Vaz Devrons or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I think it's a prostate. I think those are internal. They are. Yeah, they are. I think it's the prostate. But that does the but I, I, that doesn't yeah, mean you can't see them. So I've got. Um, have you noticed that Kyle has positively come alive since he started talking about jizz stunts? Strep yeah. throat has faded away. It's the amoxicillin, <laughs> man. He's rolling now. I, I'm, just, I'm, just gonna, I'm fighting my way through it. We're, we're, we're 42 minutes in. I, I, I can do this four more times. So um, I, uh, I I was running low on my my lube of preference, which is, of course, wet platinum. Still, you're on the wet platinum. Okay. <laughs> I will always forever. Trust me. I'm going to be on the wet platinum for quite some time, Woody, because I, I hopped on Amazon. And, you know, you can do that thing where you can see what the price per ounce is when you buy it in various amounts. And 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 it's you would think that it's a it's a it's a perfect like sliding scale, but it's not. There are some bottle sizes that are just whoa whoa whoa. This like like for example like like nineteen ounces is way more expensive per ounce than like twelve ounces is. You wouldn't think. But you wouldn't yeah. think you're getting yeah. you know you buy in bulk you save money, but I'll tell you where you do make a big savings where you start saving like eighty ninety cents an ounce. Fifty five yeah. gallon drum. That's when oh. you get yourself a gallon. <laughs> Oh, you <laughs> son of a there bitch. Go, That's dude. when you get yourself a whole yeah. fucking gallon. I like son that. Of a the pump There's a pump on top, boys. <laughs> dude, that container is going to be so gross That's... after a while. Uh -uh. So <sighs> here's what I do. I have a separate container that also has a pump on the top that I got at like Bed Bath & Beyond or some shit that looks kind of like stylish. Um, and I empty these. Well, this is my first gallon ever, and it probably mm -hmm. will be my last. This is going to last like a year, like literally a year at least. It doesn't take a lot of wet platinum to get it done. No, little, very, very little, efficient. A little bit goes a long way. So I put that into the smaller like thing that's a little pump thing, and I keep that on the nightstand, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody knows what, what's in there. You know, I've never yeah, had anybody... look like a real asshole <laughs> if you had the, the gallon what, if, what if What if I went a step further and I had like one of those uh, one of those sprayers that you put Roundup in and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I just prefer I, to apply I directly the to your pussy. <laughs> a, a backpack. The backpack so you could follow her, go anywhere around the house. <laughs> Kyle. I usually use this to spray for mosquitoes, but... <laughs> I, if any what? of you guys are on Amazon buying wet platinum right now, take some advice from a pro. You don't want the flavored kind. No! That's, that stuff can give a, a girl yeast infection. Mm -hmm. I, I think there might be sugar in it. I'm not. Anyway, that's not. I don't know why they even make it. It's this irresponsible is the only and kind, cruel. This yeah. is the only kind you want. Look at all the things that aren't in it, right? Gl glycerin-free, paraben-free, 
um, other thing free. It's hypoallergenic, right? Like, like Luxury you want, you want, you want, you want wet platinum silicone. You don't want the mixture. You don't want the, uh, the one that's, that's uh, water-based. None of that. They, uh, you, you want exactly what I've got there. You don't need a gallon of it, but like get a small bottle. Cause it is very expensive, especially if you're overseas, if you're overseas, mm -hmm. don't order it online, go to a sex, sex shop. It's much cheaper there. And, um, you will be, it is the best lubricant in the world. It is the best. Trust me. I've looked around. I can, I can afford any lube I want. That's $200 worth, by the way. Like, Fuck. Like, I mean, wow. but it's, it's, you're saving money. You're being, it's but like I, a cost I, code I feel for... like there's this, you know, like at the beginning of the peanut butter jar, it's like, there's an endless supply of peanut butter. <laughs> and then when it's empty, you make the, the sides last forever. I feel like Kyle is just going to be over lubing as, as if it were. An, like it was free out. I've yeah. had girl I've had girls like like grab some lube before and and get like more than two pumps and been like, whoa, first of all, that you that just got expensive. You just spent two dollars. <laughs> Second of all, what are you're you more doing? of a 75 cent girl. <laughs> like, 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 Did you bring six friends? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is someone else showing up that needs their transmission lubed or something? <laughs> like, like you got a grease, you got a fucking squeaky axle outside. Look at your hands. It's pouring down your elbows now. Like, like what are you putting that on me? Are you putting that on you? Like, but you'll be you glad I'm lubed up to my elbow in a minute. Oh well, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a different story. You could probably, you know, you want some. You, it it even takes off. a little bit of time to wash off in the shower afterward. Because if you just blast it with like a couple blasts of water, you'll like wash your dick or whatever. Like before you bring soap into the mix, and you're like, no, I probably got most of that off just by rubbing. It's like no, like your dick is so slippery. It feels mm -hmm. nice though. It feels <laughs> nice. It simultaneously doesn't come off very easily, and does come off in that it makes the bottom of your shower floor dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. Like, like you know, like, I think most accidents take place in the bathroom or in the shower. Mm -hmm. This is why it's wet platinum being washed off your cock, turning the bottom of your shower into a hazardous zone to stand in. Yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on to think about. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> I, I, I got to ask you, as a fellow jerk off aficionado, well, I fancied myself that before I got on this podcast with you. Now I'm not. You're so a journeyman. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Kyle's I'm a first like, round pick. You're a, I'm, yeah. I'm like uh, I'm like Tank Abbott in the UFC. Even yeah. record. You were technically there. there. Yeah. Still collected a paycheck. But I gotta ask you about cleanup methods because I've always been under the impression that I've been innovative in that regard. I do <laughs> The hand cone I, for the audio only audience. Um, and Kyle is just already fucking shaking yes, his head. This piece of shit. Well, hold on. Let's, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I, now I'm nervous because Kyle is just shaking. But basically, I use my open hand as like uh, a lot way to hollow paper. out. A lot of toilet this. paper he's using right now. This, I've, been, I've made a catcher's mitt out of a roll of toilet paper. Well, uh, a, a stream of toilet paper. Yeah. And it's the perfect little receptacle for my jizz. It's like a. It's like a Charmin vagina, and I don't see what's wrong with that, Kyle. And you put that on the head of your penis at the end and then continue to jack to get, like, the post-O spasms yeah. and everything out? Yeah, correct, Taylor, yeah. You don't shoot with the velocity to blast right through that like a forty-five caliber would? Uh, see, no. And <laughs> no. What I do, I, I put my hands behind the toilet at an extreme angle. I bust directly into the toilet. Right. See, no, Just fuck that. Down. That sounds so Can you imagine the least comfortable way to beat off? Okay, that was lies. Down all the way, beating <laughs> off into the fucking toilet. Yeah, yeah I use a towel. I use a towel because um, I, I own a washing machine, and uh, I can wash the towel after I'm done. Um, I really don't masturbate very often at all, but um, if I if I do... Or actually, you know, if I'm if I'm just coming during sex or whatever, like like the mm -hmm. towel is right there for like what clean up right after. But but no, I would never I have never thought that coming into tissue is like a good idea at all. Like like for like like I come a lot, like 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 wet with, with my supplements or not. And so like I'll soak right through a lot of that. And then like like it's gonna take so much of that that I can't even flush it now without without like clogging the toilet. I mean, I like that. The, I like your approach, Danny. That's something I can see myself doing, like when I was in middle school, or uh, like not wanting to get caught as uh, as a young guy. Because like I remember back then, like if I was beating off, it would not cross my mind, fourteen year old Taylor, to like mop like mop it up with a towel because it's like somehow someone's gonna find out I busted all over the towel. So. 100% tissues and Kleenex and all that shit then. But now, now that I'm a big boy with big boy towels, that's the way to do it. Get a nice soft towel. Everybody has a couple towels that when they see it in the lineup, they skip over it when they get out of the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Just take that one 
the one that got a little bleach on it. Yeah, yeah. We have like this ugly ass yellow towel with like bleach all but, over it. I, there's but, so much of my cum in that towel. But and let me ask you, I'm genuinely <laughs> I'm genuinely curious now. What's the protocol as far as how many loads per towel? And if it's more than one, where is the staging area for the towel when you're not jerking off with it at that moment? It depends how degenerate we're feeling that week. You know, uh, you know, when it starts to smell, you know, you've waited too long. Good. But um, uh, 50 loads. Don't, don't you me. You know what? You know what it smells like. We I know. <laughs> That's why I said, ew. Because we all know, they know exactly what it smells like. I remember at that old place I stayed that I when I moved out, I had that. That like uh remember when Lion King there was that gr- dead elephant place they went to it was yeah. like that except it was a bunch of like crispy old tied off condoms and like I like would oh. peel some off the the hardwood floor and then you like you pull one that's been there forever and the bottom part busts and now there's like ancient load I had a, I had a condom that I had done that with I just you know, tied it off and it had fallen by the wayside under the bed between the mattresses or yeah. whatever and like I guess the cum inside of it had started to like decompose and give off <laughs> and give off gases yeah. so so now the, now the condom is swelling like a balloon <laughs> ah! did you throw it away or are you kind of keeping it and tracking it now you gotta huff I mean, it like I a mean, helium balloon i mean that was three years ago and now i've had to name it and it goes to preschool um it, yeah, no, like no i threw it away drones. it was so disgusting <laughs> it was so disgusting <laughs> it was so gross it was i mean so gross to answer it was, your question danny like i do I if I've busted on a towel and like we've used it to like wipe up any excess lube or anything that uh-huh. goes straight into the laundry and yeah. then next time just grab a fresh towel like see I have two t- I have two towels oh, one of which I would like to use for uh, drying purposes mm-hmm. and the other one's there for when my girlfriend's over I don't have I suppose I just got to get more towels you got to get more you towels, literally man. only I have two towels Danny yeah it's it's one of those things socks and towels they just go missing you start out with five you end up with one I probably That's got 15 story. towels here like just, yeah just to have so a couple well, of girlfriend's gonna use the wrong towel and get pregnant yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean <laughs> I, don't, about the I don't smell. I probably don't have 15 but I've got at least like eight you know yeah well my, my wife really for- supplemented that number I'm with, sure. Yeah, I get like like one for every day of the week, and then like an extra. We have a lot of towels, but I think half of the herd needs to be cold. We have a lot of towels that I'd be embarrassed if any of you saw. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's some. Tattered, see, those are load towels. Please. Yeah, mine don't all match because I, like 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 every couple of years, it's like ah, oh, I need a couple of new towels, and and like sometimes I'm feeling like let's get the finest towels money can buy, and then sometimes I'm like oh, there's a sale on Amazon. Yeah, give me four of those. So like mm-hmm. I have this one towel that's like enormous and so plush and absorbent. You know, sometimes towels are like super soft yeah. and like you'll you'll like try to dry yourself off and nothing happens. It's oh, I'm not that kind of towel. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm for looking at it's like it's like that, it's, it's like that scene from a brother for art. It's a uh, it's a it's scene from um from uh jo- the outlaw Josie Wales when when they're like out of out of food and he and he's like I I got this piece of rock candy but it's not for eating just for looking through <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the kind of towel that, that like those super plush ones are i hate those we have a bunch of ta- like every once in a blue moon the dogs will like track in mud across the hardwood floors forever mm-hmm. so we have towels that are really like for that kind of thing they're you know drying off the dogs anyway yeah that's where a lot of our gross ones are but i, I literally i i took a couple uh of my of those plush towels Kyle was describing and just move them into my wife's bathroom that she uses more often out of the one I use most of the time because like all it does it just moves water around your body it doesn't soak anything like you need the towel to be a little aggressive with you like I don't you don't want it to be super soft and comfortable or it's not going to get all of it out you need a little bit of grit there you know, grit. Those little, those little well not not a little bit of life to it not one of those two soft ones yeah, just can't I don't know. Be treated like if, if it has like a I called it plastic, but that's what it is to me. Like if it's some sort of non cotton mm-hmm. coating or something, and it can make it feel these soft, towels like are polyester. <laughs> it can make it feel like a soft fleece thing, but that's not for cleaning. Oh, You're speaking right, so- of, of like towel, well, this just made me think of like uncomfortable shit. My I was at my uh, my brother's wedding this past weekend, and my other brother, I, I see him arrive, and he's got like red like rash looking marks on his ears on his face on For the wedding great on his uh he's not the one that got married but right. um and he got like he like lifted up his shirt and showed his chest and like red marks i'm like what the hell happened to you and he's like i ordered some shirts off amazon and i wore them before i washed them uh, wow and like i always do that, that yeah I, and i was like are you serious 
I always wear them right out of the thing. And he's like, yeah, I looked up online. Apparently this isn't as rare as you might guess. Like people, yeah. like, it's got like some sort of coating or some, it's, ha- something it's happened here. to me. It was like the way history. I, yeah. I understand it to be flame retardant that does it. And I did it once at this shitty Hawaiian restaurant. I worked at when I was just desperate for a, a bus boy job, when I lived in San Francisco, I had a boil under my armpit that probably should have gotten lanced that oh. I had to deal with. Boils like a and, giant pimple. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's, it. It just de- there's no head though. It just grows downwards, and all oh. you see is the red mark, and you can just feel the pus packet. Oh, the pus sucks. packet! The pus packet. Did you lance it on your own in the end, or did it I, go? I, I I don't have whatever Kyle has that makes me believe that he would do that. I just like <laughs> fucking giving myself a shot. I've had that shot, by the way, that penicillin shot. I cried. I cried in high school when I had to get that for MRSA. So the chances that I would give myself one of those or or administer my own alliance. You MRSA? Yeah. From, uh, it was be- grappling from wrestling, time? right? It was before I even did grappling. I don't know what it was. I, I think it was just dirty. I was m- malnourished. I was dirty. I just wasn't. I only had two towels and I kept reusing yeah. them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was just malnourished as a kid. And uh, yeah, it was. I have two matching scars on each bicep. My arms swelled up like I imagine. It's like uh like there's that scene in Master and Commander where the little kid in the Navy gets a splinter in his arm during a yeah. sea battle. Yeah. And it just gets gangrenous and all swollen up. It looked like that. And if I lived in the 16th century, it's great. They probably would have had to amputate it, but instead they just lanced it in like every color of the rainbow came out. And I, I wish I I wish I uh had video of that I guess, just to relive it, it somehow uh, you mentioned mercy and it made me think of wings have, 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 are you guys kind of caught up on the wings drama i don't think i fully know i don't fully get maybe it. you can start so, in the beginning so i don't know how people uh, uh, made this happen but they have convinced some some tiktokers who seem to be unaware that wings is a pedophile who is like after their children you phrased so, that weirdly you said they are unaware that wings is a pedophile no, no, no. He, he, he's conv- someone has convinced these TikTok talkers that he is a pedophile after their children, when obviously we know he's not. Yeah. Um, but but like, I saw this uh, this woman like going on a rant today, and, uh, and and she's like, "This guy right here is coming after people's children," and like like go report this guy. So like the cops showed up at Wink's house last night. Jesus and they're, like, Christ, questioning him about his pedophilia. And uh, it's it's a whole bunch of nonsense, and it's like, come on, guys, Poor guy. that's awful. Like, there's lots of way to have fun with wings without making him a pedophile. Okay, uh, like like like, why does it always have to be the nuclear option, right? Like, <laughs> like 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 like, why can't you just like make a song parody? I haven't heard a good song parody since that first one. <laughs> <laughs> the song parodies were great. Yeah, right? those were a lot kinder in spirit than Mr. Big Guy. Like, 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 oh, the the Mr. Big Guy was great. Like, like, like if you, I get it. If you want to like have a little fun with this guy or whatever, like, like a song parody would be a great way to like have a little fun at his expense. But at the same time, like, I think he profits from those. By the way, like all those that Spotify playlist, I think that guy has to split like with wings on. You that. never know because he says things that aren't true sometimes. He does. Um, but in any case, good lord, guys, like like straight to pedophilia, like like like. Yeah, yeah, that's very shitty of people to do to him. It, and I mean, to have a cop show up, you if a cop shows up at your house for anything, it's scary. Sometimes I'll get like a letter in my mailbox that'll be from my like local police precinct, and it's always. Uh, a trooper saw that you had left your garage door open and wanted to let you know you shouldn't leave your garage door open in the middle of the night. And it's, but even every time opening, it's like, Ooh, did I, I haven't done anything illegal, but I'm afraid. <laughs> I got a phone call the other day. It was one of the, I knew immediately it was a scam thing because um, they said, um, you, this is a message from the IRS. And I'm like, IRS doesn't call people. And <laughs> immediately I'm like, let's have some fun with this. This is a message from the IRS. You have done, and they just like use some like legalese terms that are just nonsensical and, 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 and serious repercussions are forthcoming unless you call this number right now. And I'm like, all righty then I call, the number, <laughs> I call the number and this guy goes, thank you for calling the IRS. <laughs> and I'm like, my name is John Anderson. <laughs> and I couldn't hold it together. I couldn't. Hold, I just immediately start. I laugh in his face. I'm like, "You got a pretty strong accent. Accent <laughs> from someone working at the IRS, don't you, Patel?" And he's like, "I will 
and he hung up. And I was just like, <laughs> and I tried to call him back, but the number he called from like immediately goes, the number you have dialed has been disconnected or blah, blah, blah. It's some sort of like, I don't know how it yeah, works, some but there's some sort of rotating yeah. bot phone number thing, like like some sort of clone number they're using to try to like skirt, skirt around the legal system. But mm -hmm. it was like, who's falling for this dude calling them? Yeah. Hello, thank you for calling the IRS. I was like, dude, boomers are falling for that stuff. I was like, they, they wouldn't do it if they weren't making money. Boomers are the ones who should know that the IRS doesn't fucking call people. Yeah, I guess I've done that twice, Kyle. I've had two of those guys call me and it ended up being the same guy. Same thing. He got on the phone. He told me his name was like, like uh, fucking John Anderson or something. Hello, I am Peter. Yeah. <laughs> and you could tell like you could hear just in the background, like a, a new deli or, or fucking office space or whatever, like a fucking donkey yeah. going down the street, a guy <laughs> vending fucking what. A, and uh, yeah, I um. I, I, I forget. I was just I was fucking with him and he started telling me he was going to fuck my mom and shit. He knew I was on to him. So he just <laughs> let loose just all. I mean, it's one thing to be a telemarketer who's cold calling, but it's got to be an entirely different thing to be a, a felon cold caller telemarketer. There <laughs> yeah. must just be some so much pent up rage. And then like two weeks later, the same number called me and I called back. And I got on the phone like, hey, man, I want to get this squared away. If there's a problem with my tax return, I want you and I to sort it out. And there was just this long inhale. Listen, motherfucker, you never call this number again, okay? You never, ever call this fucking number again. I don't know what accent I'm doing now, but I can tell I, I just by calling back twice and fucking with him, I broke him. Oh, you, I, I, oh Like the ones I get numbers. most often are like I, I, the um, the computer ones. Do you guys get those? Where it'll be yeah. like, there is oh, yeah. a problem with your Apple account. It's like, <laughs> what, what, so, I, what kind of product do I have from Apple? They're like, a computer. <laughs> <laughs> the electronic product. Yeah, yeah, one, that, one that you charge or leave plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, Sorry, so, go ahead. so as you know, like, um, been trying to get this Diego uh, Sanchez guy to fight me, and he just keeps running. And uh, and uh, but anyway, he um, he's clearly like. He's clearly has CTE. Like, like that, that's not a joke. Like this yeah. guy's brain damage, um, nice. which makes me kind of want to lay off because um, it's like not as much fun if I don't have like a proper opponent to joust with as far as like the shit talking goes. Mm -hmm. like, like, like if it were Chael Sonnen, like I feel like he'd be like a troll battle, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Let me get my trolling gloves on. Like, 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 like he would get it. But this guy is like this guy literally said like 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 fa our fans were going to him on on uh instagram they, they, were, they were like kyle says you're fucking bi you got bitch in your blood you pussy ass faggot and he's like ain't no bitch in my blood you tell him to call me here's my phone number and he just puts his <laughs> oh my god <laughs> All right, we, we, we gotta number. stop <laughs> we gotta stop he messing puts with his this guy. phone number right there in his instagram because he thinks that like why not like, like, let's get this, <laughs> dude what, this russian wants to throw hands let's get him to call me up see if he's so tough on so so tough on the phone well you know what happened then you know what happened then dude, like, 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 uh, your your fans were very respectful and none of them <laughs> used his number in an abusive well, manner i guarantee some of them called did their best russian accents and had him going <laughs> like, 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 like who knows what happened but, but this it is, wasn't stop, stop hiding from kyle punk <laughs> Kyle would destroy you, Diego. Stop hiding. <laughs> the most popular comments. One guy got Instagram. real. It was like, Diego, you put your phone number on Instagram. You already lost. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, so you guys, yeah. Go, go, I, I don't know. Like, like, like I don't, I, on one hand, it's really fun because like this guy is like mm -hmm. famous and like he's been in shit talking matches professionally before. Like maybe I shouldn't feel so bad because I don't feel like I'm crossing any like lines or anything. I'm not talking about his family or or anything like that. I wouldn't do that. But like, you know, it's mm -hmm. general shit talk. I don't know. I'll let I'll let the audience here who are always so even keeled decide <laughs> what we should do about this. On one hand, you could go to his Instagram and let him know that he's he's got bitch in his blood. And uh and, and I'm Oh just my god. This like we we should let off off him if he's got these problems and everything, but there's a comment on here. It's a very sweet picture of like two guys holding a guy in between them and the guy they're holding is like doesn't have legs. Like he's being okay. held up. And like probably a war veteran or something like that. And someone said, that's going to be you when Kyle's done with you. He is trained with monks, bro. You have no chance. 
<laughs> I'm gonna do that shit. You ever see that Shaolin monk movie where like in the final like 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 fight at the end, he does this move where he like reaches and grabs like the top layer of skin off the guy's forehead and just pulls it off. <laughs> like, like, like I'm gonna do that move to Diego. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that ridiculous bullshit his boyfriend paints on his chest right off of him. <laughs> I'm just gonna tear that layer of skin off. You need to that make shallow. a short video of you doing it to like an orange or something, like to prove I, you got the move. But, but but I've really taken a scalpel and like very oh, carefully. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, just, like, I'm just like I'm just like peeling fruit like that. <laughs> They're just badly edited. Do it to a banana, then an orange, then somehow what if, an apple. What if, what, if, what if I'm in my backyard, like like doing kata, and I've got like watermelons up, and like. I would trust my dad to be part of this, and I get yes. my dad to be, like have a suppressed gun off in the background. And when I make contact with the with the watermelon, it explodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm just I'm just I'm just like walking through a, a field of watermelons, <laughs> like, and they're just like boom, 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 <laughs> not even suppressed. They should sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just turn around. Pulp dripping from my skin. <laughs> and I'm just like, next to you, Diego. Next to you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> to I'm you. your nightmare. <laughs> like, like, just, it, yeah, he's got no chance. You're too tough. And he doesn't not, get it. Yeah. He doesn't get it. He's never been to prison. No. He's never been. He's never so. been. To, that's true. That's a legit like shit talk thing you could bring up be like you've never been to prison man you don't know you've only heard what i've chose to share on my podcast I, all the real stuff no no you don't even know what i've done you think man, i was there for weed moron man I, <laughs> if, 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 if i actually had a fighting background and it wasn't bare knuckle i would have be having so much fun with this i would like i would get someone who looks like what i've described i can't hang out with snow because the fellow but i'd like get i'd get like a snow stand in to like be training me with like a cholo accent like, 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 I could make so much content out of this, like, like, just funny, silly. It silly sounds, it video. sounds good. I kind of want to start talking shit to Diego so I can inherit this beef. <laughs> dude, get on there. Yeah, the beef. Like, like, like dude, tell him you want to like roll with him. Like, 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 dude, I, you know, the funny thing is, I know, I used to know Diego a little bit. I used to roll with him. So I've got Diego stories. He's a pretty fascinating, what, what, Kyle? Why did you start with that? <laughs> I didn't want you were going. I didn't want to break you're, up you're the like, watermelon story. It, well, I mean, after watermelon, <laughs> the watermelon explosion, story. After, wa <laughs> after my watermelon bit, it's all downhill. That's when you jump and you're like, you know, I actually know this guy. And, and, and he does have bitch in his blood. So <laughs> now, Danny, you're a top level purple. Is am I on target with that? Or maybe you peaked at a yeah. top level purple? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty good purple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, and I used to how did he's you do black him? and where were you when you rolled with him okay so uh, the first time i rolled with diego was down at solo ribero's gym in san diego because the thing about diego sanchez is he is the picture perfect cult member every three years or so he finds a new sensei it was greg jackson in new mexico and then for uh, three years it was solo and shanji hibera which is where i was training jujitsu now it's i think it's the boyfriend you were referring to kyle like some fucking ridiculous they movement cut. coach so what's interesting uh, not to just to interject they cut ties professionally publicly yeah however whenever he talks shit to me he mentions that that I am a sensei of Joshua Fabia. How dare you besmirch, besmirch his name? Yeah, and like like and, he, and I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? Yeah, <laughs> like, like 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 so so I, I I was talking about like how I trained with Shaolin monks, which is true, obviously, and and he saw that and he was like, oh, awesome, this is going to be a great fight. He he goes, this guy trained with Shaolin monks. <laughs> that was his reaction to seeing me in a very being very clear about how that I trained with Shaolin monks and him uh -huh. be like, oh, so he he trained with Shaolin monks uh -huh. when, when that's not maybe the reaction that you would expect. Yeah. So Diego said, oh, like Diego started taking you seriously. He is taking me seriously right now. Yeah, OK, <laughs> See, that's another thing with Diego is, yeah, Diego, when he was at Solo and Shanji school, was only training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu which most would argue is, is not the correct formula for MMA. So in his mind, like a Shaolin monks is probably, he's like, oh, I, I fucking, this Kyle guy's got the right idea. I need to get over to India. Like he so, probably thinks that's a kick-ass martial art that he needs to check out. Was he just head and shoulders better than everyone around? He was, I rolled with him when I was a blue and he was a brown belt and he was definitely better than me, but he liked rolling with me because I would quote unquote bring it. And the last time I rolled with him, actually, I had a fat ringworm on my hand. 
and he mm. called it out and he was like you got a ringworm on your hand homie and then i uh, wasn't suck al- its power out <laughs> <laughs> and i wasn't allowed to train for like three months after that. it was a really bad did, ringworm three did but you, uh I, so did you ever get any gay vibes out of him because like i think that's he, the deal. he, he had a dolce and gabbana gear bag I, no it wasn't a gear bag it was like a little backpack it was like a little backpack that a 14 year old mexican girl would wear and it was Dolce and Gabbana. And he had he was really in to the mind over matter shit, which I kind of am into as well. He was like Sensei Solo. He said that when he did his main run, when he won the world championships like six times in a row, he got fucking drunk every night. It's whatever you believe, homie. If you smoke cigarettes and eat red meat every night and you think it's good for you, it'll be good for you. Those were the things he would say in the locker room, which I kind of like that stuff. I, I like that about him. But uh I, I mean, the sad thing about Diego and his, his CTE is there. That's like the third guy in that first Ultimate Fighter season that's now coming out with gnarly CTE. Like Chris, well, Lieben, the other two? Chris Lieben. Lieben had it really bad. And there a clip okay. just surfaced this weekend of Stefan Bonner having a meltdown in a hospital, like a CTE induced meltdown because they cut him off from his painkillers. And then he starts getting it into it with the cops, too. And if you remember Stefan Bonner, I mean, Stefan Bonner looked like an accountant and spoke like one as well. So for him to be world star hip hopping it, it's definitely brain damage. It's pretty scary that this high percentage of guys are getting it. So four days ago, um, Stefan Bonner released a video that's described here as highly disturbing. Um, I, obviously, I'm not going to watch a 15 minute video here on the show, but um, yeah, I think there's something wrong with him for sure. He He's educated. He oh, spoke like it, at least. Yeah, he is. A, he graduated from Purdue with a degree in sports medicine. For some reason, I thought he had a master's, but I, I might be thinking of Chuck Liddell. Uh, Chuck Liddell has a master's. It, <laughs> he's an accountant, Chuck Liddell. Chuck guys, Liddell is I tell you basically how retarded. Accountants are, and no one gets it. But um, Chuck Liddell is one of those guys who's punched out of his mind too. Yeah, yeah. I would fight Chuck Liddell. I would fight a lot of people, but um, I wouldn't fight any of them. I, I think Kyle I mean, could beat I mean, Chuck Liddell. Did you I mean, see his like, last Tito fight? Yeah, I he do. looks. Uh, he looked like, like I feel like, um, like like if I had to fight him right now, obviously I, I think he beats the shit out of me. But I think if I if I got if if I had like a real boxing teacher to like teach me balance because I don't ha- I don't understand that concept <laughs> um, for like you know six or eight months. Like, like they did that shit like from Rocky where they tied my my feet together with some strings or something and like taught me how like to to not like fucking lose my balance when i'm like throwing or whatever and like uh-huh. look silly because he looks so unbalanced and so yeah. just like all over the place like like mm-hmm. he was discombobulated yeah before he got struck once yeah like he, he would throw a strike and it didn't look like it looked like like a high school kid like, like if you, that you would see on reddit throwing a punch yeah like yeah. those wild punches that he's he's like completely out of balance like like no mm-hmm. defense he mm-hmm. his, he looked afraid but yeah. i don't think i don't think i don't know if, i don't know if it was fear or just like mania like, mm-hmm. like it was real sad um i don't think he got paid enough to do it either i felt bad for him and I, I and tito's a bitch for doing him like that like 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 tito could have just jabbed him and put him down but tito jumps on him like it's the for the fucking belt and he's got to make sure this guy's out like, like, like he's a world-class <laughs> opponent who's gonna pop back up and like you know do some sort of fucking comeback like as you get nonsense. older you lose your athleticism it's difficult to describe like how a guy just doesn't move athletically anymore yeah but you can see it like you know it when you see it and that to me is what happened in that chuck liddell fight like he just didn't move athletically he didn't his footwork i, I couldn't tell you what exactly was wrong with it it just seemed odd and, and we've talked about the other hand like i rolled with joe Lozon. And uh, he just did this warm-up thing where he kind of bounced on his toes and wobbled his head ear to ear like this. And just the way he did it, I was like, oh, yeah, he's something different than me. Like, th- th- he just moved athletically. And mm-hmm. anyway, oh, oh uh, Chuck Liddell is an accountant, but he doesn't have a master's. Rich Franklin's a dude with the master's. There it is. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I'm always impressed when those guys are um, – have the or and girls have the intelligence. They're just winning at every at everything. Like um, – um, Oh, what's her name? Shevchenko. Shevchenko, yeah. Yeah, Shevchenko, um, Valentina Shevchenko. Like, she's just like 
good at everything. Like, like she's like a fucking Matrix character or something. She's like, a like dancer. Is she literally an assassin or special ops person or something? She she, she has some advanced firearms training. Um, that that's you know really cool stuff to watch. Military her do, like, experience? Am I wrong? I don't think military experience. Maybe I made um, it up. Obviously, you can go back to what's his name. Um, that fought Vanderlei Sil- Sil- um, Silva. Remember that stare off that they always talk about? Where like, uh, was it Mirko? Was it Mirko Krokop that has the standoff with Vanderlei Silva? And like Dan like Henderson, Vander- no, uh, it, it was it was. The I guy think you're right. Be, yeah, I think and, and you're like, right. Krokop is the guy that doesn't move, and Silva is the guy that like does the S- hand thing. And Silva ha- looks. His fighter name was the Axe Murderer. Okay, <laughs> he looks terrifying, and he's like in Krokop's face, like giving him the fucking Manson lamps, as Tony Soprano calls them, just the dead eyes. And Mirko is looking through him because Mirko was in the military special forces. Mirko has killed many men in his life. He has killed men. Okay. So the idea of mm-hmm. fighting this goofy looking like, like dude tonight, it's just, it's just a Saturday night to him. Like, like, like he's <laughs> thinking about, he's thinking about the beers he's going to have after he's done destroying this man. Like, like he's not afraid. You can't intimidate him unless you've got an AK 47 that we don't know about. Are you talking like, about Crow Cop, that guy? Yeah, Mirko Crow yeah, Cop. They, like back in well, like 2007 or something, the his videos were like the first exposure I had to any sort of UFC, like mixed martial arts fighting, and it was just like Crow Cop spinning kick, head kick knockouts, mm-hmm. and like it, like these are professional fighters, and he must be kicking so f- they know he's known for kicking. They've probably seen the YouTube video, <laughs> and they still get caught with a heel to just the temple. Every yeah. single time. What was, was really the line cool. with Crow Cop? He's like right, right leg kick. hospital, left leg cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He uh and then there was the famous fight where he fought Gabriel Gonzaga, who everybody thought was a pure jujitsu guy, and Gabriel uncorks a high kick in the second round that flatlines Crow Cop. Mm-hmm. Crow yeah. Cop's Crow Cop. That was one of the first UFC pay per views I ever bought. Yeah. The first one I ever watched was at Woody's house. We watched uh, John Jones versus Chael Sonnen. And th- that's what really sparked my interest in the UFC because that was such a good card. It had um, a big country on it. He was on the card, and I was fascinated. Kyle had an affinity for him. I was fascinated that like such a man existed within the, the this within what I – and he's pretty good. He, he peaked as like a top five, maybe heavyweight. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he'd do that belly rub thing, and it was just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, this is so cool that like – any body style, if you're talented enough, seems to be able to rise to like. I mean, this is a pay per view we're watching, right? Dana White yeah. hated him. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, I think it's interesting. It, he hated this guy because he didn't look like an athlete. He grew a big gray beard, a big one, like down to your nipples. Mm-hmm. And it, it aged him and made him look older. And he looked raggedy and older and nothing like they wanted a UFC top fighter to look like. But there he was beating guys who looked like they were, I don't know strong fitness models or something yeah yeah, yeah. It, um for a, for a while he knocked everybody out too which i find it like how could dana hate a guy who's finishing people isn't that the bottom line if you finish people who gives a shit how you because, look didn't look right it, because yeah. it was during a time when dana was really trying to like legitimize the the sport and and mm. and like really make it its own thing like like get it to the level it is right now i remember like six years ago like like somebody was like pointing out to dana that the numbers were slipping right this is before espn they're like, hey, your numbers are down, this and that. And Dana like had all the stats. He's like, our numbers are down. You know who else's numbers are down? Everyone. And he knew the MLB's numbers. He knew the NBA's numbers. He knew the NFL's yeah. numbers. Mm. And he's like, he's like, they're all like, like this. This group's down two point seven percent. These guys are down four point eight percent. We're down one point two percent. And you know what? Last sat last Saturday night, we had one of the biggest cards we've ever had. The biggest of this year. The biggest in the last five years. We're on the rise. And you need to learn. You need to learn a little bit more about sports if you're going to be a sportscaster. And I was just like, oh man, this guy <laughs> just eats. Like people give him so much shit. We wouldn't have MMA the way we have MMA if it's not for Dana White. But, yeah. Have you seen Ariel Hawani's latest like drama? Maybe you're too sick. Yeah. I well, sent we, you that thing with with um, Street Jesus. Where, but are you talking about something else? Uh, it is something else. Yeah. So you're talking oh, about man. the the prison thing. So, I UFC 200. This is a while ago, guys. Maybe it's I'm gonna 2016. Call it. I remember him. I was gonna call it five years ago. I was gonna. Call it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, all right. So five years ago. Brock Lesnar was coming back. He was a huge draw, and I think he actually became a champ. He left the UFC. He was coming back for UFC 200, and it was just 
you guys hear me every once in a while the ufc does a card that makes it a super bowl like event yeah and ariel somehow found it all out and mm-hmm. sort of you know leaked it not leaked it like announced it before the ufc did they completely didn't forgive him and the mm-hmm. way they tell the story they told this to ariel and said this is off the record you can't use this and then he used it anyway Ariel says, this is absolutely untrue. This is not what happened at all. It's a thousand percent bullshit. Joe Rogan is saying it, but his source is Dana White. Brendan Schwab is out there saying it, but he's just mindlessly parroting Joe Rogan. And this all sounds reasonable if you follow the scene. Like you, yeah. if you hear if you follow the scene, you'll hear this and be like, Yeah, yeah, sounds right. Mm-hmm. And he is pissed and he's like going after everyone with very strong words. And saying, like, that's not what happened. That's not how I got that information. They didn't give it to me off the record, and I, you know, backstabbed him. So it's, it's fun drama. I thought what you, with him uh, and, um, um, what's his name? Fucking Street Jesus, the fucking Jorge Masvidal. He's interviewing Jorge Masvidal, and uh, he says they're just sitting across from each other. They're both sitting on couches, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember it word for word, but he's like, So you were in print, you did some time in jail, huh? And he's like, What, what, um, next. Well, I don't know about that. And he's like, 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 no, nah, I, I, I don't want to talk about. It. He's like, you don't want to talk about it. He's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, those could be rumors. You know, you don't know if I was in jail or not. He's like, he's like so you don't want to talk about it. He's like, next, let's move along. He's like, okay, could we talk about your father? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we can talk about him. He was also in in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like the, the curb your enthusiasm. The curb your enthusiasm. <laughs> and it's like. This guy is verging so close to Jim Rome territory where he's mm-hmm. the guy's just like, call me out. I, I can't remember the name. He's like, he's called Chris Evans. Guy, Chris Evans. Call, call me that one I more get time. his real name. Ca- Jim call Evans, me that, maybe. Yeah. Call me Chris Evans one more time. I just did. I said it to your face. You won't do it again. I bet I will. I bet you won't. Chris and the guy's like up <laughs> and in Jim Rome's face and he's flipped him on his back and Jim Rome's <laughs> on the floor. Like, ah, I saw another G- Jim Rome's been on. First of all, I love Jim Rome. He's my one of my first um, like talk radio like heroes before Stern even. I used to listen to him like two or three hours a day. He came on my local radio station. He's national. He's he's out of L.A. I believe. I, does anyone have the background to get that story? That Jim Evans was a football quarterback. And he was kind of getting a reputation for taking sacks and protecting himself instead of throwing from the pocket and getting the hit. Chris Evans is a female tennis player. So he's basically calling him a girl to yeah. his face. <laughs> yeah. And that's what they call. <laughs> um, I didn't find that clip. <laughs> again, there was another instance with Jim Rome, and I don't remember the, the specifics, specifics again, but like they don't really matter. Basically, he's like talking to a football coach or someone in, the, in sports. You know, it doesn't matter for the story's sake. But he's just like, hey, you know, I heard this, this, and that, and the other, and and it's some, it's some edgy shit. Like it's like, oh my god, Jim, you're really going after him here. And the guy's like, um, that's not true. But I'm wondering, Jim, do you still beat your wife? <laughs> and 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 because and, and, I guess Jim Rome had a fucking domestic as- dispute at some point and beat his oh, wife. It wasn't oh. just the no, no. And, you know and, that question, right? Like yeah, when yeah. you stop beating your wife is a mm-hmm. yeah, the it's leading a famous question. sort of leading question when you can't answer it correctly. There is I, no any. Oh well, well, maybe that's the case. But in any case, Jim is like, ah, hey, come on, come on, that's that's a little much, I think. Is it? I don't think it is at all. I'm she just thought wondering. so too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I, I don't know. I, I like Jim Rome though. I think he's he, he has this really interesting like fan base and like they've got this like language of their own. It's it's. I uh, only know him for the gotcha stuff. Does he do like better stuff than that? I mean, he had like like I used to listen to a multi. I used to listen to a multi-hour radio show where Mm -hmm. it's him like covering all the topics of the day and then doing like um lots of taking lots of calls and then occasionally they would have the smack the smack off where they would have like fans would come in and do like this one or two minute like fucking slam of like like pop references, sport references. Like it was almost like they're rapping. They're they're Mm -hmm. referencing things that are meta to the show. Making fun of like 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 sports stars and stuff, and like like just attacking each other and the show and all sorts of things. It's like if you if you go on YouTube and find like I think it was called the Smack Off, but I would be listening to this laughing my ass off when I was like fifteen or something like that because these guys are there would be a huge prize. I don't remember what it was, but maybe it was ten thousand dollars or something like that. Like it was it was crazy, 
and there would be like levels to it. They, there was like a bracket system for like who could talk the best smack. And and like these guys would show up and just so well prepared with like these fucking soliloquies of just damnation. And you would just I, I was spellbound. It was so good. I used to hold rap battles on Woodycraft. And I would just engage with like, because um, Woodycraft was obviously a Minecraft server, but almost like the Discord, it became a social thing too. And there was a social hierarchy where different people knew the, I guess, guys who spent the most time on Woodycraft. And anyway, I'd hold rap battles with them. And uh, you guys have seen my music stuff. I can, I, I'm not great at rapping, but I, uh, look, you'd think I'm a two. I'm fucking four. You don't know it, but I am. Yeah, <laughs> and, scale of uh, 100. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, someone watched the PKA intro. It's not bad. So anyway, I'd hold these rap battles, and these g- kids would wreck me. They'd wreck me. They'd attack the quality of my server, my family, <laughs> me, personally. Like, I'm having fun here. Like, you know, like, taking it easy. And I'm going against, like, oftentimes these guys are 13, 15 years old. You know, lighten yeah. up. Uh, that did not hold true in reverse. And after a couple of rap battles, Chiz and I were just like, oh, let's never do that again. <laughs> I, I, I just, There's nothing I just, to gain here. <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure they were actually called Smack Ops because, like I said, it was I was 15 mm-hmm. when I listened to this shit. They still do them, by the way. And I, so I pulled up last year's and I listened to like 30 seconds of some guy going on a fucking rant. He's like, he's like, yeah, Jim from Boston, you're such a piece of shit. When you were born, the doctor, the doctor puts you in the biohazard jug and handed your father the placenta. <laughs> doesn't stop there just keeps going lately it's it was just, just really one. brilliant it's really mean shit it's really mean <laughs> shit yeah jim rome's one of those guys like when i hear his name i'm like oh there's something to do with sports but yeah i, I don't yeah, know yeah, anything at all he's really him. good it, it's it's a different kind of thing though like, like it's not like i used to watch so much espn like there, there there's a there, there's a ton of ton of shows on there where like like sports writers will compete against each other um and uh and, and like give their opinions on stuff uh, but i used to watch espn like five hours a day or something like that jesus uh, i was i was really really fucking into it but um jim rome was like is is the best of all of them because it's different it, it's it's closer to howard stern than it is to like um a standard like sports caster like espn guy who just gives gives you the facts straight up Mm -hmm. yeah some of those guys some just random broadcasters who you don't associate with comedy or being edgy can occasionally be very funny like dave ramsey sometimes i'll listen to him for financial advice and he'll just get really angry like these liberal journalists blaming washington on you being poor you're not poor because of washington you're poor because you're stupid (laughs) <laughs> I, I like that just sometimes like yeah dave this guy is an evangelical christian financial coach getting angry and i'm into it That's and uh, speaking of speaking of jim rome and espn fucking football season started like four minutes ago tampa bay and I, dallas I, just kicked off tampa bay and dallas yeah well, you, got, you got any predictions uh well dallas is gonna get trampled tonight is the, I hope so. is the consensus is Tom i agree with that on the buccaneers yeah. yeah yeah dude they're they're so good like their defense is mauling and then all the receivers and tight ends on tampa are so goddamn good i don't remember but, anything i don't know anything about football but i followed enough sports accounts back in the day on on twitter that like there were like sports haters who would be like here's a bunch of data showing that Tom Brady is no more than average at best and he benefits yeah. from a defensive minded system that caters to his pussy handed way yeah. of playing and then he like it's like all right I'm goodbye and then it's like well yeah. the only one in Tampa Bay because yeah. they have a <laughs> yeah. defensive structure that protects it and it's like dude come it's on it's now. just Taylor it's still going <laughs> after seven super bowls there's this dude Rob Parker i think his name is maybe Kyle you can confirm or deny that he's been he's been trying to make his name on hating on Brady since like 2009 and what just every dude. year like uh, <laughs> this year is going to be the demise of Brady he's done <laughs> and and then like he did it oh, they he started make montages of him yeah yeah there are there is a montage called uh, Tom Brady proving Rob Parker wrong. And I mean, anybody who predicts that Tom Brady is going to fall off and his age is going to become a factor after he won a ring at 41, you don't really have that right anymore because clearly someday Tom Brady is going to turn 50 or 60 and he's going to be unable to play football. That's just nature. That's not a prediction at this point. The dude got fucking three rings in his forties or maybe one when he was 39 was the most recent and benefited from a defensive system. Martin Brodeur. That, uh, 
Martin Brodeur. I can make words up too. <laughs> he was, he no, that guy's. He's, he's a goalie. Like, he he a played for New goalie. Jersey, the bad team. But, but just well, just to finish up real quick, what he yeah. Rob Parker? Oh, he was talking shit all the way leading up to this Tampa Super Bowl, and mm. then Tom Brady won the fucking Super Bowl at forty three years old, destroys mm. Patrick Mahomes, the alleged like other greatest player. The next and the one. next morning they cut to Rob Parker. They're like, so Rob, uh, do you uh, want to amend your opinion on Tom Brady? He's like. Hell no! I ain't no <laughs> pussy ass, bro. Tom Brady sucks. And it's like, you're just an I mean, asshole. At that, at that point, okay, there's nothing to do but at double that down. point. It's a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. It's horrible. Oh, He's sorry. the worst I guy. You, I have reached the end, Danny. My bad. But yeah. Oh yeah. no problem. That was that's the thing. It's like you're you're still talking shit when the guy is middle aged, beating Patrick Mahomes in a shootout. Like I mean, how can you do that? Three is pretty young. I mean, like that's in, in fucking football. You are elderly. <laughs> I'm making jokes. It's. I mean, I'm maybe trying to if, think. Uh, even, maybe if you're kicking, if, if you're a kicker, like like you can get yeah. away with being in your in your forties. But geez. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple even, of really man. good kickers. There's like rule. There's right? rules against hitting the the hit, the kicker, right? Like I mean, and I know mm-hmm. there's rules against roughing the passer, but like Tom Brady takes some hits at 43 totally. years old. Mm-hmm. There are probably compilations of of kickers just getting bowled over, right? They get like fucked if, up. They do the kickoff and the guy sneaks by. I know that's like rare because like that's not the kicker's fault for not making the tackle at that point. It's the mm-hmm. defense's fault for letting him slip through. Mm-hmm. I would imagine and there are clips of the kicker. Because when you kick, you have one leg down like a flamingo. And the cardinal sin, the biggest penalty is when you hit the plant leg on the kicker. It's an automatic 15-yard penalty. And there are clips of people doing that. And when your leg is planted, it, like your knee is just going to buckle the wrong yeah. way. That's carnage when they hit the plant leg of the kicker. That okay. sucks. Right about the so I looked up oldest kickers. There are eight. Five guys who are like forty five or older and still playing. Yeah, it's a mental it's it's a mental thing as much as physical. Like, like there's so much. Look, I mean, it's 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 easy to figure out. You only get a few shots per game to do your thing. You, mm-hmm. If you if you ever fail at all, it's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Whereas like like a quarterback, running back, whatever. Like the running back can just like whoopsie daisy, I dropped it, and they're like, yeah, oh man, get it together. All right, let's do that again. There yeah. are no do-overs for the kickoff. Quarterbacks and, and supposed for the, to the miss goals. like one out of three attempts. That's yeah. Crazy. Wasn't there a Super Bowl that was More. lost because of a missed field goal? Like directly, like an easy field course, goal. I'm missed? sure there was. Like not yeah. off the top of my head. It's but the like, Giants versus Buffalo. It went wide left, right? Oh, is the, did Buffalo have a chance to win one and they missed? Yeah, easy one? they had to, and everyone acted like it was an easy one. I think it was like 52 yards. Or okay, something. that's not an easy one. Uh, yeah. There's, but, a, there's a famous chip shot. It was the Vikings versus. I think Seattle or the Saints, and it was a 25-yard chip shot for the Vikings to win and go on to the next round of the playoffs. It wasn't Super Bowl, but it was playoffs, and the dude hooks it like 15 feet away from the uprights. Complete choke. Got oh. cut that season. Went to Seattle, I think, played a couple of years, and then started doing the same thing again, and now was just out of the league. That's something that Kyle's saying, too. Not only do they feel pressure, not only do they get all the hate if they fuck up, if you fuck up two or three times, you might be out of a job. You might be yeah. working at Denny's. Don't they talk about is is it called the yips? Am yep. I? Yeah, yep. it's like where where suddenly I think it's mostly like a golf thing where someone who's really good at golf it'll be like, well, for some reason Tiger Woods just can't fucking golf anymore. Mm-hmm. Like he just like now his swing is all goofy and he's like yeah. shaky out there. And then like sometimes oh. a couple of years later, it's like, oh, yeah, I just had a case of the. Yip. It's got to be a mental thing. Just like yeah. have, have you block. ever seen Charles Barkley swing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He looks like he's hurting when he's doing it. He's fixed it, but yeah, it was um like famously bad and it's kind like, of it's funny. Like, but wow. they, uh, they said he had a, a hitch in his swing. Me not being a golfer was like, oh, a hitch. You know, that must mean like, you know, I don't know, he's a little off target or something. Mm-hmm. No, he would literally swing, get stuck, and then finish through. And I I'd never seen a golf swing that bad in my life. It's the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's brutal. <laughs> I, I get the I get the yips in comedy sometimes too, especially in my main channel videos when I'm just not warmed up and I'm too in my head. Uh, 
uh, Chris Godwin, actually, on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, was dropping balls last playoffs. And he said, I kept thinking to myself, don't drop the ball. Don't drop the ball. Which, of course, he said, was an instant recipe to start dropping balls. Mm -hmm. I'll be in times in my videos where I have to address a big room of people. Maybe I'm wearing a silly costume and we get one shot at this thing. I got to go in there, give my little speech and then get out. And I'll be thinking so much about every sentence I say that it'll just be marble mouth and I'll just be blurring words together, misspeaking. I'll I'll stutter. I'll be hesitant. Mm -hmm. It happens to me a lot. You know where it happens to me? impressions so i had a lot of driving today and i'm like you know what you know why taylor and kyle are so good at impressions at least a lot of it is practice taylor's talked about how he practices in his car and he, you know this is not his first time when you hear my mexican impression first time in the last three years <laughs> i've tried it <laughs> that's why it's so bad and i do it in my head first just quietly and it's I'm slaying. And then I try it out loud. <laughs> and it's so You're bad. just imagining a Mexican guy talking. In yeah, your head. I do it great. And that's how you do it, though. It's like you jump into a new impression, and like within a few seconds, you're looking for Indian Island to swim back to. <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, I, 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 I kept veering towards Italianville. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, wow, the, the delta between how well I can think of an accent and how well I can perform it is gigantic. And it has to be yips, right? It's not as if I'm ineloquent and can't pronounce other words, mm. it, it's just I can't quite do it this way. I, it, it's just practice, man. It's like if you hopped into a I, kickboxing uh, class right now, you get your ass kicked from like, what's up? Or, yeah. or if I were to ask you, who was oh, the no. child star of Home Alone? <laughs> I, I knew the question say before you finished. It is Macaulay Culkin. Damn oh! it. He's learned. <laughs> yeah. I, we, last did, time we, I, we did this four days ago, so don't give him too much credit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did it on the hangout, so it was like Ten days yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect he analog. Like, he was like uh McCulkin Cully? No, I called it it's he is Macaulay Culkin. I called him Culkin McCully or something. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, I mean, of, speaking of Culkin McCullen, um, I don't know if any of you watch American <laughs> Horror Story. Speaking of who? I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> uh, I don't know if any of you watch American Horror Story. Um, I've seen no. some and he's in the new one. Yeah, I watched he's the, in the, the new season that he's in, and he is He's good. I like him. He, he's really good, and it's a good season. Like usually, it's so like usually it'll ups, it's upsetting. Like mm-hmm. like it'll it'll like make me a little ill. Like the freak show season. Like they used real freaks, and that's good and, for giving jobs. You know, I, they used real freaks, and I'm I'm just I'm a little disgusted just looking at them because they're so fucking gross. Yeah. Um but I can't and, tell but, if you think it's good or bad. He just means it's upsetting. I think I I didn't. I, it was awful. It was hard to watch. I I like the season with the witches because he just got a bunch of hot teenage chicks hanging out in a house. Like what what what's not to like? Plus one of them is retarded and she's a good actress. Mm. Um. So so That's that was a good way. season. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> man, you always you, kill you, it on the show, man. You're just so good. You strike out with all the witches and you're like, well, I'm. <laughs> and I've got Play Doh in the trunk of my car. So. There's, there's, a great, there's, a great, there's a great scene in that scene. I got a Brio like, train set yeah, in my it's knapsack. It's to pre- that. It shouldn't go unnoticed by Play Doh. Watch with gummy bears. I'm going to get one, one of the, wi- the, the, the retarded chick is a witch. She, she's not retarded. She's got Down syndrome. Syndrome, but she's got you know what down syndrome people look like she yeah. has oh, that yeah. look and um and, and she's really good actress and uh she's a witch and her and another one of the witches in her coven who's like an also like a 17 year old girl who, who and the character is like a Lindsay lohan type character like like she's an actual celebrity who's also a witch and she's in new orleans at witch school kind of undercover kind of keeping it on the down low and uh, and they go to welcome the new neighbor next door to like their school of witchcraft, and it's like a like a really hot young guy. Like I don't know, he's he's like looks like a young Brad Pitt or something over there like, with his shirt off and like abs bristling and 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 like sweaty outside like doing shit. And like they go to hang out with this guy, and and um, the retarded chick has like a cake <laughs> that she's baked for him, and then the other chick is wearing like a cocktail dress that's like split up the side, and uh, and they they walk in, and he's like won't even look at the hot chick he's all about the retarded chick he's like is that buttercream frosting she's like <laughs> she's like yes i made it myself <laughs> and he's just like that is so thoughtful that is so thoughtful let's <laughs> just eat cake let's have a slice <laughs> and, and, and the other chick is like the other chick's like 
I mean, if you want to put something in your mouth that's sweet and wet, or like, like, she's, like, 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 she's like being so like like on in, in your face, like like, hey, do you just want to go and fuck somewhere? Like, 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 like <laughs> no, I'm too full, <laughs> I'm too full of cake. Yeah. And, and, and he's just like, yeah, okay. But anyway, buttercream frosting, right? You made the frosting yourself. Oh, you're the best. You you right next door. That's amazing. Like like, just it's so funny that he has no interest in like. <laughs> And incredibly attractive. Wait, and and is lady. he is he a wizard or something or just a guy? No, he's like, just he's just the he's just the next door neighbor and he's he likes buttercream frosting and retarded girls. But I, um, good for him, everybody has their thing. That season about good. that earlier. This current season is quite good as well. Um, I like all the actors. I like the premise, and I like that like the mm-hmm. most the the most like hardcore thing that's happened is like there was an attempted rape, and they're 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 like we're gonna. The, 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 it's people that make snuff films they capture a character and they're like they're like um he's got 10 inches over there and he's gonna he, he's gonna make your any an outie and it was just like oh no <laughs> like, he's gonna and, rape you <laughs> yeah he's gonna rape you and and he's and the and, and, sock you too but but like. she's like she's like she's like yeah take this viagra because he's gonna fuck you while you fuck me you might as well get some enjoyment out of this that or he'll blow your brains out right now and he's just like fuck but he's not. He's. Damn, and, I haven't and, seen that part of or haven't oh, seen that episode yet. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I, I'm. I don't think I'm caught up. I think maybe a new episode just came out. So like, I'm gonna check it out when I get off. This uh, is American uh, Horror Story. Yeah. American Horror Story. New season. It's, like it's on a, Hulu. It's like a vampire premise this time. Vampire premise this season, uh, but with a really interesting spin. Um, essentially, like like I'll give away like the main plot point. It's that there are these pills that you can take that make you, if you have some innate talent, like. If you're an okay painter, now you are fucking Picasso. As long as you take these pills, mm-hmm. if you are a uh, um, one of the characters is a screenplay writer, he writes for like you know procedural dramas like like cop shows and shit. Now he's fucking Mark Twain. Now like like he sends off like a season's worth yeah. of work in a day, and Quentin Tarantino is is on board. Netflix is what, Netflix is like yeah we want two seasons of this. Like like every everybody like is eating it up because it's just it's so brilliant, mm-hmm. but it makes you into a vampire. Like, like you need to drink blood now to sustain yourself. However, if you take the pill and you don't have innate skill, you're a hack. Mm-hmm. You're just, you, you thought you had some skill. You thought you were good at a thing, but let's be real. You just, you're a pretender. Now you turn into like a mindless, like creature of the night, like, like real yeah. fucked up and creepy looking. The only thing that's a little unbelievable is the ones who are creepy and like fucked up. I can't imagine how they haven't been hunted down by the authorities. Yeah, like, like, that, that's like confusing. The, like the sheriff is just like, "Oh yeah, all those, all those drug addicts out there." And it's like, "Lady, does that look like a drug addict to you?" They're that dripping is- in blood, like, <laughs> just, 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 and, and like the way it is is like, like they aren't being sneaky. There's one scene where like all of the ghouls. They just are out in a well lit street at like seven p.m. Like twitching. you know, you know twitching this, around. They and this herky jerky twitching thing. It's mm-hmm. really hard to look at, and they look just like Nosferatu, like the old like first vampire movie where he's like completely bald and like 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 spiky teeth. Yeah, and which is a bit of a weird plot thing because like how did they get their teeth spiky? Because like I yeah, the, the, the other people like, didn't get their teeth spiky. Well, or maybe they did a little bit. Yeah, not as you, much though. You, you haven't caught have up. But you haven't okay. caught up. Yeah, but 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 in any case, really good season. I'm digging it so far. It's interesting though, like in the in the art for the the show, you know that the like the thumbnails. There's an alien in the thumbnail, like holding the vampire, and I'm wondering if there's some sort of like alien dynamic that, that that's yet to be revealed so i'm waiting on that probably i, I bet um, there'll be another layer they're only like what f- five episodes out maybe four Six? i think four? maybe three or four okay. yeah i'm wondering really if uh i'm wondering if you popped one of those pills kyle if you'd become like the picasso of jerking off maybe <laughs> you maybe. might mm-hmm. i blow I get, a load and it looks like some fuck it, it's just abstract <laughs> art like a, like a snow machine. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least your distance will be javelin throw levels mm-hmm. or the, the the god of vampirism will be like that's not a talent and then, <laughs> <laughs> you take <laughs> pills for that <laughs> you become a retard <laughs> um, uh, the other big thing that happened this week was rick and morty um both the ninth and tenth episodes were released simultaneously simultaneously hmm. see Seasons wrapped up, and so they spent the first eight episodes roughly being episodic, like 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 creature of the week stuff, like like Mm -hmm. like different things. The um the last two episodes 
all about the big plot. They they they, they cover I, no spoilers here, but like we get back to Evil Morty, we we get we get Rick's backstory, like full backstory, and we get like overarching changes to the universe that are it's like oh shit, some oh, stuff's gonna be sucked new. you in for the next season. What, where are you I mean, they all, it? Is it on Hulu? So I purchased it, and oh. then I have to watch it on delay on Amazon. I think. So like it takes like an, an extra day because I'm not getting the Cartoon Network s- streaming service and I don't have cable. So I watch it like the day after on Amazon. I haven't seen watch, any of season five. Do you watch Ted Lasso? Do you guys even know this show? Mm-hmm. I've oh, seen Bill Remind me. Seen. So it's uh, it's on Apple, so it's not widely mm-hmm. distributed. And um, uh, the premise is this. There's an American football coach who was actually a pretty good football coach. And this uh, soccer team in England, what they would call football, loses it, gets its coach fired. So they hire him and they bring him over. And I am I'm, I'm sleepy because I binged watched it last night until 4 a.m. It's not that high tea show, but it's just a dude with incredible EQ dealing with a difficult situation. The whole country is calling him a wanker and he's like <laughs> stays positive and wants to win him over. And uh, the sh- it's a half hour show, but it's like 22 minutes or something, you know, because that's how commercials work. And uh, I just eating these things like candy. I'm just watching like eight episodes in a night, cranking through them because I want to know what's next. It sounds cool. So I've seen the previews for that. Apple TV is the last bastion that I will not fucking. It won't happen. I'm not. I'm not buying Apple TV. Hey, wait, that's I'll, not. I'll, do you I'll have Paramount your... Plus? Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> wow. He's gonna, yeah, you know. I, does Apple TV have anything good? I, I have Peacock. I have Peacock's CBS. free. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Peacock. Is yeah, free. if you want to watch free. commercials like a peasant, <laughs> I have I have CBS All Access. I have BritBox. Okay, I have <laughs> I even that. heard of that. That's right, you haven't heard of it. That's the point. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> that's, you that's have a, I wonder what your monthly costs are. It doesn't matter what my monthly costs are. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't well, want to know. Um, <laughs> or, um, uh, I should probably join that Plex service. Probably one hundred twenty dollars or something. Probably like get that. a new but, debit card and save like seventy dollars a month. You didn't know you were spending. Likely, um, <laughs> likely. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I have all of the services. Uh, and, and like Kitty and I share a lot of services as well. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like mm-hmm. that's why I have BritBox. She watches like Downton Abbey or some shit. Uh, and like she, she, I wasn't gonna get CBS All Access, but she got it because she's a Star Trek fan as well. And so now I, I had access to Picard when I was just gonna pirate it or something like that. But now I have it. Uh, it I wish I pirated it. Still, it's awful. On, uh, but, I um, wanted to ask you about some uh, Rick and Morty. Is it any? Yeah. You said the first couple episodes, like quite a while ago, when you were watching it as it came out, that they were good, not quite, you know, as epic as the first couple seasons one back. and two. Did were you annoyed that that they took so long off the core plot? Because I'm I'm actually no. interested in that, like the evil Morty thing. It was it was fun. Yeah, um, it was a it it was an overall an okay season, um, better than not. I wouldn't say it's a bad season, but not a great season either. There were a couple of cool episodes. I like the. There was an episode where like, there were like so many contingent copies. You know how Rick always had these like contingency plans. There mm-hmm. were like, there was this thing where like he made a copy of the whole family as like 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 duplicates so that they would take the hit if like aliens came to kill them. Mm-hmm. But those duplicates were so well made that they thought that they were the real Rick and Morty and family. So the, of course they get the same idea. We need duplicates in case like there's ever someone, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it keeps going and going until they're just, mm. but, but it's like a copy of a copy, right? So mm. by the end, there are these wooden, like, like marionette <laughs> Rick and Morty's who are just like, kill me, yeah. <laughs> but, but they're super evil and they want to be real boys. So they're like capturing real Ricks and Morty's and skinning them alive and wearing their flesh. So that's a pretty good Sounds episode. Good. I like that. It's a good, there's premise. a Thanksgiving episode where um, they decide that they, they know that like I think I think I think maybe the premise was that like Rick and Morty were gonna try to sneak into the White House um disguised as turkeys. They were gonna transform themselves into turkeys and and get get snuck in. Oh, Rick wants a pardon. He wants to trick the president into a pardon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Transforms himself into a turkey so that he will be the turkey that gets pardoned. <laughs> Brilliant plan. And the president and legally binding. <laughs> and so the president, instead of being like, all right, well, 
we won't pardon any turkeys today. He's like, all right, I need a C- I need SEAL Team Six, and like 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 six like commandos come in comes in, and they build a machine to turn those soldiers into turkeys and put them into the truck as well. So they're trying to find out like 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 which one is a real turkey and which one is Rick, and things go very awry. So that was okay. There's one with like. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, Megatron. Rick, mm-hmm. Rick wants all the pieces na- required to create a Megatron uh, of these like ferret bot things. The best episode that wasn't part of the the evil Morty thing was the Captain Planet episode, where they had like a female Captain Planet called Planetina, and mm-hmm. um, and her and Morty really like kick it off and like 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 care for each other. But obviously, Captain Planet was back in the '90s, right? Like early yeah. '90s. Like that's when I was a kid. But the plant, so the planeteers are like in their forties now, and they're pieces of shit. So like, <laughs> so like, like, like you know, Kwame and all I'm like Earth, the Earth Wind Fire like like Heart guy like like yeah. they're all just complete scumbags who are like overweight and bald and like they're running they're like using Planetina to like make as much money as possible. They're like they've got her at trade shows and stuff, and like she just wants to be like her own person, fight for the environment, and fuck Morty. And there's this whole <laughs> clash going on it's great that that was a really good episode but yeah it was an okay season um some ups and downs I'll watch it yeah it's still a good show even if it's dropped off a bit i like it god my throat hurts yeah, that sucks it's... man two and hours then... to go and then you can go to bed yeah i might be up i don't know I don't, I don't really feel sleepy and then there's another show i've been watching i'm trying to think what it is oh i had a thing i I'm, i've gone back to watching sopranos because my sleep schedule is so bad that I just need something playing. That's my. Can you mind. tell me about your sleep schedule right now, Kyle? I'm always interested where you're at. Um, but because I'm sick, like I've been trying to like sleep through like the yeah. sickness, mm-hmm. and I feel like you know you you heal so much better when you are asleep. Yeah. And so, um, oh my god, wow! So somebody just won one thousand five hundred dollars in one hand of poker. Um, Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's not it's not that much. Right? In terms in the, of gambling, in a, in a Discord exactly. podcast hangout. It's oh, our, that's it's it's in okay. It's, it's your guys is okay. I thought it was, I don't know, World Series no, not World Series. No, no. This is, this <laughs> I was is very in, unimpressed. This is in our $50 Discord. Um, some guys just playing for funsies. Oh, congratulations um, to him. Yeah. Goodness. Oh, he bought back for another 2000 though. So mm. he, he literally was like, give me 2000 more, and he sat right back down. That that, that dude don't, doesn't play any shit. Um, mm. But yeah, so I was trying to sleep as much as possible. And uh, so there were days where I would sleep like 15 hours, like, I'd wake up in between and mm-hmm. piss a lot because I'm just drinking so much juice and nonsense. Mm-hmm. But like 15 straight hours, get up, eat a meal, be up for like four hours, and then try to go right back to sleep. Mm-hmm. And like I did that for like three days, like sleeping as much as humanly possible. Last night, I played poker for like three hours, made a few hundred bucks, and then went to bed at like midnight. And then uh, I woke up this morning at like 9, 10 a.m., something like that. And mm-hmm. so I've been up. So like it's kind of normal, like at this yeah. very moment. Yeah. But it could go awry. I don't know. It depends how these antibiotics affect me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really hoping I wake up tomorrow feeling like 100 percent better. Like like mm-hmm. my throat is just fucking yeah. killing me. If not 100, percent it'll be markedly better. Like you're you're definitely going to be on the down. I hope so. I hope you're yeah, good I'm, to go I'm, in 12 hours. I took my second tablet like an hour ago or something like that. I take three the first day. Uh, you know, like three every day. But you, you know. probably can't eat all the food you required at all right now. Cause I've you been know, eating soft shitty. stuff like, like, um, like for lunch, I had like a chicken salad sandwich on a croissant. So like mm. everything is like mushy and soft. Yeah. Uh, and I had like, um, like pasta salad. So it's just noodles. Um, but I'm definitely not eating like, like cereal or, or I don't know, like, like crunchy, crispy things like swallowing water hurts. Um, I'm about to, when Woody gets back, I'm going to get some, fucking numbing spray because it's getting worse the more i talk i'll uh i'll uh i don't know i got a topic for conversation i guess we were i thought uh, chiz wanted me to come on and talk about this actually right after it broke but we got canceled super heavily by fat chicks i know know if you guys heard about this i I heard i heard a bit about it yeah (laughs) yeah this was this was pretty juicy so these fat chicks dredged up an old podcast clip of mine from december that i just had no recollection of Mm -hmm. and looking back it was one of those rants that just comes from above where it's it's you can't even take credit for it like Mm -hmm. i imagine beethoven composed symphonies that were similar it's just i out of nowhere it it was say it was you you haven't heard this thing (laughs) it was like 
it was the point where you're like 75% through your podcast. So for you guys, it's maybe the three hour, 15 minute mark where the conversations died out. There's a lull sort of like there is mm -hmm. right now. So I just, I just come in with, is there anything more worthless than the bottom half of a fat girl? I mean, <laughs> and, and especially, and especially a titless fat girl. And I said, if her boobies don't come out past her big belly, she should be shot in the head like a cow. Woody, I'm talking about uh, the the issue I had with obese women. They tried to yeah. cancel us lately. So oh. it was, yeah. Oh, man, I wish I didn't miss the beginning. So. No, no, it, he's, he's just now it, starting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just cooking up. I was just telling them it was one. It came from one of those moments where there was just a lull in the podcast. Like last December, we were just bored. We were about to go on vacation. I wasn't taking it seriously, mm -hmm. and I just started talking about how um, nothing is worse than the bottom half of a fat girl because the the good thing about a fat girl, and I was fucking around, is that yeah. you it's easy to get a blow job and generally their tits are large enough to be to be fuckable to be and fun. You, yeah yeah and if you can get them in a hot tub the tits will be bobbing above the surface it's just <laughs> it, got a problem it, with this it, 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 well it got a little <laughs> yeah. it got a teensy teensy bit worse woody I, <laughs> I i i suggested that because the bottom half of fat women is so worthless that that we should really just bring back feudal samurais and put the fat women into warehouses and we measure their tit to belly ratio. If the areolas don't protrude past the navel, then the samurai guy walks up, pulls a katana. And I, I'm talking a katana as sharp as the one from Kill Bill, something like sharp. that. Just pull, pull it out and that woman should just be dissected bisected rather right there <laughs> on the warehouse floor and that's all i remember saying i i haven't gone back and watched yeah. the full clip but Reasonable. the what the way i said it and, and again it was completely non-intellectual it was just this no. passion that welled up inside of me yeah. and uh <laughs> it, you, it, didn't, you, didn't, heart, you didn't have a study <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh i mean it wasn't it wasn't pre-written material i guess is what i'm getting at okay. but i and then i saw it, it like in march it surfaced on this uh, uh, TikTok called the best of podcasting and it was there for positive reasons like the guy who ran the page thought it was really funny and a bunch of kids in the comments fucking loved it but then oddly five months or however long it's been since March later the feminists got their sweaty grubby fingers on it no, and no. they a bunch of them I heard about it for like a week before anything of consequence happened people will tell me about it on Patreon they DM me like haha I have the fats and then it got really big because I, some girl with 500,000, a million TikToks started talking about how these men need to be kicked off the Internet. YouTube needs to change their community standards, and these men need to be deplatformed. So from that point on, it, it was a feeding frenzy, almost literally a feeding frenzy. <laughs> Hungry, fat women were, less. Yeah, they were in my comments and. We were talking about earlier uh, wings, how people are calling him a rapist. And we also talked about how these fat women are, are saying it's not all right to have preferences. Well, like, sort of in that same vein, they their logic was that because I had said mean things in complete jest, obviously, about fat women, that now I was no longer a person and that anything that was said or done to me was completely valid. So the... Um, yeah. The seeing the true colors of the woke mob was very interesting. These people who claimed to be moral and um, like ethically, yeah. the, the this guy the, said the something I don't like. Take his livelihood from him, it, dude. My <laughs> everybody, everybody was calling my girlfriend like the meanest things you could possibly think. I was called a rapist. They were attacking my hairline. A rumor got out that That's I was strange. five foot five, and they everybody was like height shaming me. I, um, I call you fat? Isn't isn't that funny? I it's like, haha! <laughs> this this guy said horrible things about fat women. He's yeah. five foot five. Attack him! Attack yeah. him! What a loser! He, he's he got a he small he's, dick. He's he's balding. Yeah. He's he's got sun damage under his eyes his wow. girlfriend's a fucking a ugly cunt like and then like people would go as far as telling me they hope my parents get raped and murdered in front of me but uh yeah man it was it was fucking hilarious though because it's one thing to get canceled for saying something racist then you it's not exactly cool or humble to to be retaliating to be 
talking shit back. And if you get canceled for some sort of sexual thing, then that's really taboo, and there's not much you can yeah. do. You, oh, I mean, you, sexual act like like making he, jokes is different than rape non-consensual sex. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like if that happens, even if it's a false accusation, you kind of just have to deny and then just kind of disappear for a while but when it's the fucking fat jokes like you can say anything you want back to these people so just every day on my instagram story in my posts it would be more thinly veiled fat jokes like <laughs> hey guys dropping some more merch this week uh bad news however there was a fire at the fulfillment center and all women's sizes other than extra small were burned <laughs> please support anyway i hope you guys will pick up a shirt and it was something like that constantly and then like after every one of those they'd be like hey guys i really feel awful about that last joke i swear <laughs> this is getting to me tomorrow i'm going to apologize i will and then the next day comes and it's it's fucking i'm, I'm enlisting a new exercise program in my youtube crew and they will be fired if their body fat percentage ever exceeds five <laughs> And it's like it's still been going on. <laughs> and, and these women, these women still want us to like apologize. And some of them are still holding their breath, like, you said you were gonna apologize. And when you when you called the situation your bay of pigs, that was that wasn't an apology. That wasn't an apology. That, to be that's fair, a, that, that, that's far and away the best joke. This is your bay of pigs. <laughs> Ladies, Dude, if the, you want to get the, to Danny, the trick is a hunger strike. It, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Hey, uh, full disclosure, Taylor. That was my buddy, uh, cigar guy, who came up with that one. So it wasn't even my joke. That but was a good one. Though. I like the rant that. is the <laughs> rant is or maybe the battle of the bulge. The, the battle, battle of the bulge, bulge is good yeah. too. Nice, <laughs> fucking solid, dude. Um, but yeah, they ended up all they ended up being able to do was the they cancel sauce war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was a historical event, but it's still funny. Is that real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sauce war. Um, all they ended up being able to do, because, I mean, fat people aren't a protected category. There's no YouTube community guideline that protects them. Except from and, drowning. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, all they could do, they canceled uh, our live podcast. We They canceled two of them we were trying to do in L.A. A stand-up venue called Fourth Wall here. Just completely oh, pushed sucks. out, completely pushed out, and then LA the fucking lose on board with the anti-fat thing. I feel yeah, like uh, dude, part of the culture there, dude. I, 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 that's <laughs> very the true as well. LA. I mean, yeah, uh, the, the, that's Danny's the, outranked. The, the <laughs> so economy got to go with whoever's higher on the, on the woke totem. Right. So yeah. they canceled two events, one, one, both in L.A. maybe. Yeah. So we ended up just doing the live show in a park and it still worked. Mm -hmm. But um, it, yeah, it was just interesting to, to see. The big takeaway to me was that how full of shit the the woke left really is, because it became clear that what this was, was it was just whenever somebody is canceled, quote unquote, it's just it's just the starting gun that allows miserable people who like leftist politics or their new religion. And it gives them the starting gun to go be awful. Like it's okay for, it's like the purge for the next two weeks. You can do whatever you want to this canceled person and you're still a good person. That was really interesting to see. Yeah. And, and uh, lastly, it was just, it's fun to see what happens when somebody tries to cancel you and you just keep making fun of them. It just goes away. Like it just peters out and it makes them so mad. Yeah. The, and they'll it was get just mad delicious. About someone else making fat jokes or someone doing something they don't like. And, and it's funny, like, it's always like especially with like fat stuff it's like so obviously it's always the there's not a brigade of very thin people going to your fucking comment <laughs> section and being like solidarity with my enormous brothers and sisters <laughs> <laughs> like it, yeah. it's it's always someone like whatever their pet thing is that's mm -hmm. what they freak out about and everything else yeah. is fine their pet thing is yeah. that you could be short or that you could have mm -hmm. a little dick so they don't care mm -hmm. about that they don't care about body shape both of which are true yeah, yeah, you're you're five foot one, and and if anything, like like making fun of someone's height and is infinitely infinitely meaner than weight. You can't go on a heightening diet. Yeah, like that's just who you are. You could lose weight. The dick yeah, size thing, I feel like, is maybe worse. I don't know. Like, it, it, you, can, yeah, you can't grow your dick either. You can't grow your dick, and if it's too small, there can be like a whole sense of. I don't know, lack of self worth around it. Whereas short guys can mm -hmm. just hold their chin up high and be okay. Oh, well, not the the <laughs> <laughs> Poor they friend. hold their chin up medium, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if your dick's two inches long, like uh, that sucks, man. Like it's it's two inches that's... long. That is brutal. 
That's mm-hmm. that's another thing that happened to me too. Like in recent, really? Two inches? I, this was this week. Yeah, my <laughs> cock shrunk. No, uh, I grew actually. Uh, no, I, I accidentally. Well, I pulled my cock out on our podcast, and it's funny. I it was basically doing the stunt I did when I first came on your guys's podcast. I was just pissing in a can because I needed to piss, and I did that. And I tell my producer right after the show, "Hey man, you're gonna you're gonna blur my cock out, right? Can you please uh, write down the timestamp there? Make sure that gets mosaiced." <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem, Danny. I got that. This this kid smokes a lot of fucking weed, by the way. So you, you got it. It takes multiple attempts to get through to him. The next morning at noon, hey Austin, you mosaiced out my penis, right? Don't want that going live. <laughs> oh yeah, I washed it back twice, man. Totally mosaiced. Okay, great. At noon, I see the podcast went live. I'm like, okay, great. I uh, check back in at like t- noon or like or uh, twelve thirty rather to see how it's going. The podcast is no longer live, and I'm thinking, okay, this is a little fishy. <laughs> and uh, hey, Austin, why is the podcast down? You remember to blur my penis, right? Yeah, yeah, I totally did. But there was just this, this one second, Danny, just this one second <laughs> where your hand—I think it was just like the like the webbing between your thumb and your pointer finger. It looks like your penis. So just community standards. A lot of fat girls reporting us right now. Wanted to mosaic it. I'm like, okay, so um. Why didn't you just use the uh, YouTube Studio blur feature instead of taking down the entire video because it was deleted? Yeah. And then um, I'm like, you you didn't mosaic my cock out, right? And he's like, Danny, I feel sick to my stomach right now, man. If you want to <laughs> fire me? If you want to fire me? I totally understand. I'm I'm a pa- I, I'm going to be better. I'm going to sleep more. I'm going to stop smoking so much. So there's like a five second clip. More. There's like a five second clip of my very unimpressive, just limp cock. Full frontal on the podcast in 1080p, dude. And uh, it's, of, of course, Reddit just all over it. And I'm sure they didn't copy it and save it. And no, oh, yeah, they're gentlemen. I'm, I'm sure they yeah. weren't mean about it. No, but, just like they just like they respected Diego Sanchez's phone number. They respected my penis <laughs> privacy. I'll throw yeah. a link to Danny Mullen's uh, leaked picture. Right. And we'll see if this was truly deserving of being taken down by the fascists at you. <laughs> but it, it's like, did you see it. Justin Bieber's dick? Oh yeah, it's big. That was Fun many, that. many years ago. Yeah. Right? Was it not? Am I oh, like four? Am I? Am I four? Oh. Yeah, something um, like that. Yeah, right. Okay. So anyway, uh, his dick was it was big, and I feel like it's hard to say some guy has a big dick because like it clearly defines yours as smaller than that. It, oh, you yeah. think <laughs> you think ten inches is big, huh? Kyle, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> Kyle's Kyle's <laughs> looking. At, Kyle, are you looking for my dick right now? Kyle's tuned out. He's yeah, he's looking for my cock. <laughs> I'm I'm also looking. For <laughs> it's okay. Kyle is uh, the fifth best person here at this. So, <laughs> Danny Mullen, oh, there we go. Already, Zach. There we go. Me. Yeah, Hot I don't load. even want to look at it. I I don't want to uh, see I'm myself in that. Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> there Wait. it is. Oh, how interesting. Wait, hold on. I haven't clicked it yet. God damn it. There she is. You're supposed fine. To... Oh, oh, thank you, yeah. Woody. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, so Justin Bieber <laughs> just whips, you're shaking your whips his fucking mini oh, baseball no. bat out. <laughs> oh no! And claims it was shrinkage, and it's like you asshole. You as no one pulls out like a ten inch flaccid dick and well, says you're yeah, you're giving Justin drunk. too much credit. <laughs> Just, uh, Justin had a nice story, girthy, good limp cock. Like it wasn't a ten. It the, wasn't the like a fucking dick BBC. For like a, a, a boy's star. To like yeah. the girls frothy. I, I need horny. to see it again. It's been years, but it, it and was, uh, it was <laughs> it's been it, years. I need to look it up again. <laughs> I haven't seen Justin Bieber's cock in a coon's age. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hardly even burned into my retinas anymore. I can just I can hardly remember it. Dude, what what sucks though is like I just I mean I had to go my penis. It's um. I, I don't know. There's there's Actually, just a lot of variation based oh, on the season, it? based on the t- temperature in the room. And I have a huge nutsack, too, that it's kind seasonal. of like absorbs. Yeah, see, it's seasonal. My nutsack will like absorb sometimes up to an humidity. inch of shaft. Yeah, humidity is big. Wind chill. The, curv- the curvature uh, of the earth. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, your dick's rate. getting smaller the higher the plane gets. That you're like- yeah, <laughs> electromagnetism factors in. Mm-hmm. But I, I just had no, I didn't, I assumed my producer was going to blur that Alan shit. radiation belt. Yeah, exactly. That's, and then Did also where Polaris all, is uh, relative to Orion. What? Danny, do you think that he blurred it and didn't do a perfect job like the story he told? Or did he just flat out lie to you and say he did it when he didn't? That I think that yeah. I, I think he smoked so much weed 
that in his reality, like in his reality, a daydream is sometimes a thing that happened. Yeah. So when he said he rewatched it twice, I think he thought about rewatching it twice and then forgot <laughs> that he didn't do it. I think I like him. And I mean, like you got to be careful yeah. because you've you've pissed off fat women, and a lot of fat women are witches, and they'll cast a spell on you. <laughs> you um, I already got revenge on him though because, like, I, I obviously I. It, what, well, what I did is I we did a full video on this. There's a video coming out next week where I made him dress like a transgendered pedophile. I took him to Ross, got him a pearl necklace, got him a nice Care Bear jacket, um, yeah. made him put some lipstick on. And then I got a gigantic like 50 gallon uh, trash can at Home Depot and made him take an ice bath and then had a photographer take a bunch of nude photos of him right when he got out. And we're going to be posting those simultaneously on Twitter when the video drops. So there will be revenge. Oh. Jesus that Christ. is that's some pretty good revenge. And, mm-hmm. and, and, <laughs> working for and then we just murdered him. We just killed him. Yeah, right that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, take naked voyeur shots and post them. All right. Every yeah. one of your videos, it's like, all right, we're here to talk to people at LA. No, we're actually gonna go measure our penises, just the guys back at the <laughs> at the at the you know old country store or wherever. Yeah, the, the antique store at. in uh fucking Bishop, <laughs> California. Uh, that was the thing that happened. We There's a lot of cock, dude. Our a lot of cock. Yeah. That's funny. Penises are funny. How long is your podcast? Sure My podcast is about an hour and 45 minutes. He might have been right to take it down. So I have occasionally used like the blur effect or something like that. It can take YouTube on our four hour video eight hours for that mm-hmm. effect to mm-hmm. get changed and put out there. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't private it. He completely deleted it, which was the red flag to me because he was afraid it was going to get reported or something, even though it was private. Oh. So that's what I knew. He fucking panicked. Like I knew something was seriously wrong when he deleted it. OK, yeah, yeah, I can see maybe you private and then put it back. But yeah, mm-hmm. to, to just hope the blur effect is going to be speedy and protect your modesty. Mm-hmm. That's not the move. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah we- Kyle's looking. Kyle's looking at me different since he's seen my penis. No, I'm just I'm just focusing on 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 just, just swallowing the, the spit. One hour and fifty minutes is that what you're thinking? Focusing <laughs> on the darkness inside of me. I'm just 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 uh, trying to be one with it. Let's Iron check out this. Uh, Kyle making the show. <laughs> yeah, Iron Man. Are you are you like? Is I know like you're probably really bummed by it, but like, are you more bummed than you thought that you just no gym, no continuing with like with progress like i'm sure that hurts almost as much as the the not not it's a little annoying but it's yeah. like it's just like i shouldn't go in case i do have covid i don't want to like was, spread well, and you shouldn't and lift if you're sick bother you that you have strep which is like a little bitch disease children have instead of covid <laughs> which is what the cool kids get Strep can be brutal. <laughs> it can be so. It can be so horrible. Strep can. <laughs> and also, can you imagine like you're like about to get into a really difficult push day with strep throat? Oh my just, god! You would feel, like you feel would like dog happen. shit. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make. I missed the a week of now. lifting. I'm afraid I broke my hand. But shit, hold it up. Is it swollen? No, it, right here. It. Is what did she say? Tea, really? <laughs> what did she, what did she <laughs> the were burned. <laughs> um, it took. It took me a second. I thought it was a fisting joke at first. Ah, like, oh, domestic I, violence. I, I talked about on PK so quickly. <laughs> I was on a dirt bike. There was a tree into the trail, and it kind of like hit the bark buster. And the effect was with your wrist bent like this because the throttle's on, it pushed it backwards really hard. Kind of like, you know how people hurt their hands when they land palm down? Well, it was Mm -hmm. that, but I was holding the handlebars. And the first three or four days, my healing was moving along so well. I was like, dude, it's going to be okay. And then it has paused. So now I'm more concerned. We'll see. Nice. So I'm breaking uh... way too many fucking bones. You are well, right, with your it. hobbies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Before we jump to the next thing, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. Uh, fall is here, and we could all use a stiff breeze. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. 
Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our code PKA at checkout. Just pay the $5 of shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code PKA to receive your first month first month free. Just pay the 5 bucks in shipping. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew. Thank you so much, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the podcast, continuing to sponsor it. And I know it's because a lot of people out there are using promo code PKA. It's a great product, wonderful, easy-to-use service. And uh, you will, you'll, you'll like the way you look. I, I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to, like, I, I took one of those the first time I ever did. Just, just one little chewable thing, and like that night before we fucked, it was like, man, I'm like, I'm looking great. Like <laughs> your, your dick is just like the best it's ever looked. You're so you're confident. It's 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 wonderful. If Danny Mullen had taken Blue Chew before that, he he would have been the one. He would have brought up that video one minute in to be like, look at my hog, look at my <laughs> enormous hog that I've got barely contained in these in these in these pants. So. BlueChew.com, promo code PKA, just pay the $5 in shipping. Uh, This episode is also brought to you by Feels. CBD isn't about what you feel, it's about what you don't feel. Stress, anxiety, pain, and Feels is a better way to feel better. Feels is a premium CBD that will help you keep your head clear and feel your best. It's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. CBD naturally helps relieve, reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. Place a few drops of Feels under your tongue and feel the difference between within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding your right dose is important and everybody's dose is different. In fact, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you find the perfect dose for you. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD. Joining the Feels monthly membership can take can make your self-care easy. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel anytime. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash PKA and you'll get 50% off your first your first order with free shipping. 50% off. That's a very good, very good deal. Because mm. CBD can, you know, can, can really quickly add up. That's F E A L S feels F E A L S dot com slash PKA to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken. 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash PKA. It's a uh, it's nice. It comes in a cool little little dropper. Mm-hmm. And it looks nice, high quality. It came in a little little box for us. I haven't used anything it out of this like dropper. It has three yet. other droppers too. Like there was yeah. a pretty good supply in it. It it has well, I don't know it has if everyone three of, gets that. Three, yeah, I think they gave us to like sample these. And it's just three little tinctures. I knew we were gonna have them on the show, so I drank some last night. Uh, before bed, and yeah, I slept really well. Made me very sleepy. So yeah. if you need, I like some that they have that hotline people. to help you figure out your dose. Mm-hmm. Like I, I imagine they ask you questions about your other. I want to say CBD consumption, but I'm trying to say, do you smoke pot? Yeah. And you know, <laughs> they help you gauge your tolerance and maybe maybe your size. I don't know what they consider, and then figure out what's right for you. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, it's a very cool service. So check it out. F e a l s dot com slash p k a. Uh, the link for them and Blue Chew is below. So there Check you go. There you go. Cool, Wonderful cool. products just for you guys. Yeah. And I like, I love these little fancy tubes that come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their packaging was top notch. Yeah. I love that about, about brands. Like when they have really on point presentation and packaging, it's like, all right, some priorities are in place here. Do you think that your job makes you more in tune with that? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll see a product where it's, like on Amazon, I remember I bought some. Uh, like it was like a and, and Kyle's recommended this brand. It's called Thorn Brand Supplements. He said like, oh, they're really good. And I ordered some, and like at least the one I got, like the packaging is was dingy. It had like a sticky feel to it, and it was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Like I have B vitamins from like Nature Made or whatever, which was cheap as shit, and it has a way better packaging than Thorn. And so it was like. Just that. It was like, if you're going to charge that amount, spend the extra 11 cents in manufacturing and get a really good looking, get a glass bottle instead of a plastic one. Like, really make it seem high quality. It's probably more than that, though. Like, I, Oh, yeah, for glass, it would be more than that. <laughs> for, um, it was uh, scuff controllers, right? So you mm-hmm. might remember scuff controllers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had little uh, paddles on the back so that you could leave your thumbs on the stick and still press the buttons. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, he was talking to me about the 
packaging and it was expensive. I, I want to say it was like eleven dollars for that high end box and the high end foam. And you know, this is a controller that costs between like one fifty and two twenty. So eleven dollars yeah. on the box isn't like outrageous. I just somehow thought that when you bought products like that in bulk, they were two dollars, not eleven. Yeah. But man, yeah. stuffed controllers, blast from the past. Yeah. Everybody was sponsored by them for a while. <laughs> but he wanted everyone to have like a, a premiere unboxing experience. He felt like it was worth it. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It, it, then everybody I, watching the video is like, man, I, I want the high quality experience. <laughs> you're, you're like, yeah. You know, and you, I'm sure you've seen like, as a, maybe not as a content creator, they would sometimes send me things that were just special for me. Like, you know, yeah. I, I, when I got my copy of Battlefield, it came in a freaking ammo canister with like other <laughs> stuff and clothes. And I think it had a GoPro in it, <laughs> like shit like that. Yeah. Not everyone is getting this in their Battlefield copy. Mostly they get a mm-hmm. plastic bag from GameStop. But <laughs> this isn't that. This is everybody gets this. You know, it wasn't yeah. anything special for content creator. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think that stuff's interesting. It is. Have you ever used CBD, Danny? Or you're you're not even like a weed smoker, are you? And I am. My girlfriend basically has gotten me hooked on edibles, so her and I just waste away on the weekends. We eat some Caminos, we go to museums, we get brunch. But CBD is always um, I, I, it like left a sour taste in my mouth because I was down in LA like four years ago trying to get a job when I first moved here, and mm-hmm. I was just desperate. I had no self confidence. I was going to shitty Italian pizzerias, places like that. Yeah. I went into a pizzeria trying desperately to get a job. The manager basically said, "You have to work Italian to work here, so we're not going to hire you." Wasn't even qualified enough to make eight dollars an hour uh, making pies yeah. and uh, on the way out though one of his buddies was there he's like hey kid take my card and it was a fucking card for a cbd product of some sort and he's like you 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 said you were a comedian that you were trying to do some sort of youtube thing maybe we can do a brand deal and i of course never reached out to him but i just walked out thinking uh fuck la and fuck this pizza place and fuck cbd so that's Aww. always been my attitude. <laughs> what a terrible <laughs> takeaway! <laughs> it was, you get you get light. You don't get so hired. I was trying by to some, get a job. An opportunity <laughs> falls in my lap. Fuck them, right? <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm leaving the Italian place, angry, I hate everyone around me. Also, like, you got, yeah, you got the CBD. What if that guy is like? running feels cbd right now. yeah <laughs> you could have like, made some yeah money. it's like the on it of cbd and i could have been their <laughs> flagship yeah. uh, contact creator how long did, were you out there until you got a job Just um i will I, I moved down here and my the game plan was i was going to work at this thai place that paid like, outrageous amounts in tips it was going to be 300 dollars a night in tips and they wanted me to come down and stage And when I worked at restaurants, I worked at five star luxury French places in San Francisco. When we'd bring in somebody to stage, what does that that, mean? Technically, it's like it's like French for tryout. But when we brought somebody in, I mean, it was like 100 percent higher rate unless they Mm -hmm. had some serious defect personality wise and um, or work ethic wise. And so I thought the job was mine. I get down to this place. I stage. It's great. Like the other servers are smoking hot, like big teddy chicks. This dude's like bro, this is the spot. You're going to make so much money, dude. I can welcome aboard. And then, of course, like a fucking week later, they call me and say, yeah, I'm sorry. We went with somebody else. And uh, another lady with big tits. Gig, right? Yeah, that was this their is, type. So you worked for free one night, kind of? To see yes. If they wanted, and yes. they didn't like the way you worked. Yes. It, which is absurd because I was just obviously trying my hardest. I, I, like mm-hmm. I wasn't. I mean, I was taking it very seriously. Nothing I did could have put like could have possibly turned them off they i think mm-hmm. taylor's on the right track when he says they just wanted like another big titty chick to balance out the ratio yeah. but that left me with with really really low job seeking self-esteem i am um, I, I mean i got into ucla that's where i went to college but i went the community college route so which is it's like the back door i mean it's one step above these people who uh, had their rich sitcom star parents buy their way into USC for into 500 grand. LA out of high school or out of community college? Community college, which, I mean, to get in out of high school, you have to be the captain of the basketball team, the yearbook editor, have a 4.2 and score like a 1600 on your SAT. Community college, you just have to stay awake during class. 
yeah. and you're in for two years. Hold on. So it's super there. easy. That's what it takes maybe to graduate community college. But to get into UCLA afterwards, you still have to be someone of note. Dude, the people who go to community college in Sacramento are like methadone addicts. I, I mean, it was there would be classes where I would just do the homework and just maybe dedicate like two hours to studying. Mm -hmm. And I would just have like the best grade in the class because everybody else is so hopeless. There's nothing you can say. I'm still proud of you for getting into UCLA after out of community college. Oh, and and the fact you. that you were surrounded by people who didn't have that work ethic. And you're like, dude, like by comparison. That's still impressive. Like you did great. What do you? Uh, what do you, can we get? Can we have a weekly call where you just pump up my? I mean, you were the only one who said anything positive about my penis, and now you're just loving that That's I went to use I think I said it was fine. I mean, <laughs> somebody, I think Kyle just made like a disappointed noise. So we'll talk to them. Well, we can't even judge you. They're fully flaccid. Anything could have been, you know. All right. it, 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 and where you can it's, go from there, you nobody knows. And um, the um, the fucking I don't know. I was trying to bring up some ob obscure metric that would relate to my penis size. Yeah, What's no, the I, one where there's like the you bring the balloon over the jar and there's like a straw taped to it? That wasn't right. The barometric pressure was way off. Um, <laughs> but, that, but when I got out of UCLA, like I didn't feel like I earned anything. Like I didn't feel like I earned my way in. And then the mm -hmm. classes were super easy because uh, all the professors at UCLA, all they care about is their research. Like they're flying to Egypt and or fucking uh, like uh, Mesopotamia and working on Nebuchadnezzar's tomb or something. Yeah. They don't give a shit about like grading your paper hard. They just give everybody an A if they try or a B if they don't. I guarantee so, you there's like a half of the student body who's like UCLA is so hard. I was if you're pre-med, yeah. In high school, and now <laughs> I can't pass anymore. I was a standout and now I exist in this community of elites and I don't stand out anymore. Meanwhile, yeah. Danny's fucking killing it <laughs> and thinking that He's not special. Carry on. No, I I swear it's I, I am not trying to be modest and I'm not some boy genius. North Campus at UCLA, which is like the soft sciences and especially mm. history, is famously easy. Okay. But then I got out and I just like I always wanted to be a comedy writer and that's what I started doing in college. So I, my attitude was that I was too good for any job I had. So I would always get fired or everybody would hate me because I'd show up late. I'd slack. I'd always ask for time off. And um, I just I didn't like see any value in anybody hiring me. So like I I couldn't look the people in the eye when I was getting interviewed. Because I knew, like, you're, you're going to regret the hiring me. I, just, I, I have to lie and say you won't right now. Um, but so, like, when I got down to L.A., after I got uh, snubbed by the Thai place, I tried some other Italian place, not the pizza parlor, like a luxury Italian place. Mm -hmm. And they, I staged for them. They, everybody loved me. They paid me, unlike the Thai place. But then after three shifts, they're like, hey, man, we're sorry to tell you this, but the guy who you were filling in for, that's right, you were filling in, you weren't staging, he's coming back, we don't have a job for you. And that's that was... Up. It yeah. was fucked up, and it was like five years, four years into trying to be a comedy writer, and I remember mm -hmm. just being in my Mercury Sable on the curb after that at like midnight in the like L.A. night, just thinking like, dude, you are a fucking loser, and this sucks <laughs> like it, it doesn't get much worse than this nobody can yeah. say you don't have thick skin dude I, and just, okay to right, luckily it turned around you do it's your great, character how yeah. does one try to be a comedy writer right like like so i i get the basics you're typing on your computer but then what are there like requests for scripts do you cold call people like yeah go ahead yeah so i started out and you guys will probably know who I'm talking about. The guy who really inspired me to get into comedy writing was Tucker Max. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. He was uh, a guy who no, wrote no, yeah, way, way back in the day. He, him and Maddox. I, I read yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. They were, he wrote nonfiction stories about his life that were just funny, like him getting hammered drunk, him having sex with a deaf girl, whatever, those sorts of things. And I had lived a lot of interesting life thingies, or at least so I thought at that time. And so I just started writing in that mode and I put out three books on Amazon that are up. There's yeah. um, w one about jerk off parlors. That's like all true. One about um, uh, when my girlfriend told me she banged a black dude with a giant cock and I had like a psychological breakdown. It's got a great <laughs> cover. It's at least worth looking at the cover. It's called when your girlfriend bangs a black dude. And then I, I put out one called uh, in a, a really uh, metaphor laced title. I didn't, didn't hit that nail on the head or anything. And then uh, there was one called home 
which was about like the year I spent living with my parents after I graduated college where I was just a piece of shit. But I realized pretty quickly, Woody, I think after three years of doing that, I released the book home, which I thought was going to be my big breakthrough into the mainstream. And I remember checking the sales dashboard after like 24 hours, trying to restrain myself from looking at it. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. It's going to be, you're going to pull it up and you're going to have sold a thousand copies. And it's going to six copies. Like, <laughs> it, it, my, like 99% of my email list didn't even buy it. And, <laughs> and at that point, like there was another, um, just, uh, uh, moment of self doubt, huge like depression period. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Like I remember being at my busboy job, just staring into a wall, thinking like, "Dude, you are nothing. Like you, this, you fucking suck." The next pivot after that was I decided I was going to be a Hollywood uh, TV writer, and I applied to screenwriting school at USC mm -hmm. and UCLA. And for my writing sample, uh, quite ingeniously, I attached when your girlfriend bangs a black dude, which <laughs> I, I, didn't mean, I didn't really. Ready. You didn't even put the one that you thought was going to be like your coup de gras. Um, no, I, I wanted to hook him, Taylor. And uh, uh, when your girlfriend bangs a black, relax. I, I think How old I think were you that, when you made that decision, that was when I was 26. OK. And um, what, what I was really scared about and what I think it was it was so true and i'm really glad i didn't go through with that right well first of all i got aggressively rejected from both usc and ucla so <laughs> let's not make it seem rejected like they were prejudice <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not make it seem like like i was about to uh, get a staff gig on bojack horseman or something i was very far from that still but um i i know for a fact it would have been even worse than working at a big corporation, the level of political correctness that exists in Hollywood circles. Uh, I'm reading 1984 right now, and it's it's insane how prophetic that book is. But there is a chapter that really resonated with me where there's something called the two minutes of hate where everybody in the office, they flash up a picture of the enemy of the state and everybody has to scream at the screen, which, of course, well, it's it's Emmanuel Goldstein in that book. But nowadays we will recognize that as Donald Trump. It's like everybody in public. You have to be seen screaming at Trump. Well, that's how it is in Hollywood. Like if you don't send out a certain amount of anti-Trump tweets daily, if you don't have your pronouns in your bio on Instagram, if you didn't put up that fucking black square after the George Floyd thing, like you're going to lose your job or you're never going to get hired again. And mm -hmm. I realized fast that I couldn't live in that 1984 world and that the best way to avoid that is to do what you guys are doing, to just do things yeah. on my own. Do your own shit. Oh, yeah. We yeah. had a, a calculated five-year plan on this thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the meetings that are, go on behind the scenes. You guys don't even know. This show is scripted. <laughs> yeah I, I sat down with the producer every story i've told i went through with janice a bunch yeah, of times we, we the show's four hours too. we've been on here for 12 you know, <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we have a dry run <laughs> dress <laughs> rehearsal imagine how horrible <laughs> uh, we're beginning the dry run of our four hour fucking podcast uh, so, yeah this is this is really interesting stuff man you, dude, you went through a huge amount of disappointment and self Self doubt, mm -hmm. and it seems like not even just self doubt. Like looking at yourself in the mirror, like you fucking loser, you fucking yeah. idiot. What are you doing? Yeah. What, did you do anything to pull yourself out of that mentally, or did you just fully pivot? To, I'm doing my own thing, and or what? What was kind of your? What was going to be your breaking point where you're like, I'm going to go get a normal job if if it doesn't pan out, or did or were you so like, I'm not doing that shit that like, yeah, I don't care if I'm making you know thirty grand a year for the most niche, yeah. niche audiences. I'm not going to do that. I'm doing what I want. Yeah, I, I think, Taylor, it wasn't really a certain thing, like a pre precise moment. It just mm. I'm pretty optimistic generally. And even when I'm really, really fucking bummed out, like, I mean, even if I got completely Alex Jones deplatformed, I would be mm -hmm. bummed for a while. But then I would just get to work building my website to restart on a dot com. Yeah. That's how I'm wired. So I always just look like if things aren't going well, I'll always just look for the solution and how to fix it. And I started to realize as I got later into my 20s that I wasn't going to be young for very long and that I wasn't going to be alive for very long either, that life is pretty short and that I had no interest in working for somebody else. And it wasn't the nature of a job. I mean, mm -hmm. I could tell just from the, the structure of being told what to do and when to clock in and when your vacation is that I wasn't into those restrictions. Really? That bothers you? Because 
So you're a self-starter. Yeah. Clear to me. Yeah. And I find it interesting that you're like, I cannot come to work when you tell me to. Yeah. When you will obviously go to work when you tell you to. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, um, I, I just like getting better at stuff. And I love that YouTube and comedy, it's like, um, I mean, there, you, you can't ever stop getting good. That's why I like jujitsu too. That's why people like martial arts. It just, I like progressing and mm -hmm. like, I want to get better at the acting side of comedy like Taylor is like he can do a bunch of characters and also Taylor this is probably the single forum you could use your skill set like you could never be in a writer's room in Hollywood doing your Indian or your fucking Nigerian character no probably or, not <laughs> it, it, so it's great doing it don't you think though Dude, oh, I mean, and at this point on stage doing impressions I don't think people would like or uh, people it would be one of those things where it's like you know, people laugh at it and they like it. And then one blogger, you know, says they don't. And then their blogger friends promote it. And then there's like a false, you know, yeah. picture of people are in outrage over X, Y, Z. And it's like, no, it's not. That tweet has three likes, you fucking yeah. bitch. Like, yeah. no, people liked it. Yeah. And I think Bill Burr talked about it. Some comedian talked about that where he's like, yeah, I was killing this room. And then someone got offended and they like mm -hmm. went out and wrote on the Internet as though there was a vote nationally of who yeah. liked it and who didn't. And I was on the wrong side of history or some mm -hmm. nonsense. And it's like, yeah, that like it, those like kind of astroturfed uh, things, they do happen to try and fuck people over. How the many hours a week do you think you work, Danny? Um, I work 13 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, during the week and then i we usually when we shoot we're just working like dawn till dusk on saturday so a lot probably like 70 something i'm trying to get better about that i've out, i've got two editors now that help me out and um i want to start getting like writers on board i'm trying to live a more normal life hmm. um but uh because i'm starting to realize that if like when i'm miserable i'm just not doing good work so there's no point really in making yourself miserable. It's better to be happy and be slightly less productive. That'll be yeah. more productive in the end. You have to have a little time to live your life too, right? Like mm -hmm. if, uh, if everything is based on the ideas and the experiences you've had so far, but you're not refilling that yeah. kettle, I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. That holds, <laughs> things, yeah. Every so yeah. often, then you'll run out of material. Yeah, totally. As podcasters, that's a big issue for us. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, I mean, there's only so much talking I can do about masturbation. I've, I've pretty much exhausted the topic. You so, talked about the PC pushback. I, I, so I'm on the other side defending the PC pushback sometimes. And I sure. have this theory about it. Uh, yeah. Viewers have heard me say this before. So I'm going to say it in fast forward, which they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I lived in New Jersey, I was surrounded by unions all the time. I was really anti-union. Unions defended people who didn't deserve to be defended, and it made mm -hmm. me furious. I moved mm -hmm. to North Carolina. There are no unions here. I see what happens when there are no unions, and I mm -hmm. definitely at least see the other side of the puzzle, maybe come pro-union to some extent, um, mm -hmm. because it's like neither solution is a perfect one. Cool. Mm -hmm. You are in the center of the PC cancel culture pushback troublesome. You need to have your pronouns in your bio, etc. Mm -hmm. I live in Raleigh. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone who puts a pronoun in their. Bio. Yeah. No. I, there's. I don't. I don't. There's probably trans people here. I've literally never seen one, or at least mm -hmm. like, that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't exist in my uh, real yeah. life world. So. It is easy to have tolerance for the like PC pushback thing because it, mm -hmm. it's not here. It, it's yeah. like something you've heard about on the internet and it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. I have a friend and I have to be careful not to dox him, but he works in an industry where there's a lot of PC pushback and it, it mm -hmm. infuriates him. And mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure if he lived here, he wouldn't have that yeah. sense of frustration. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess the only way it could really affect you guys is if something surfaced that generated a lot of um, traction online and they came after your sponsors. But I mean, this, the types of brands you guys work with, I think that'd be hard to do. But I mean, that's the only real way they can get to you. Um, as far as it annoying me more than it annoys you, it, it, the way the reason it sucks here is because we live in L.A. And the real thing that pissed me off was the defund the police. That was a big thing that got going in Los Angeles. And I saw so many girls I went to college with sharing LAPD budget figures 
Like this is way too high. 140 million is if they're like fucking experts on how much it takes to enforce the law in a major That's metropolis. Right. It does seem rather high though, right? I thought you were yeah. a virologist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like and then of course they defunded the police and what happened? Immediately the murder rate went through the roof, especially in South Central where the poor black people live. So now they're just all killing each other and the death rates of black is? people um well, I don't know if what you're getting at, but I mean, it's primarily because there are no cops there, and now it's just a fucking free for all. I think Kyle's saying there's too many firearms in America. Okay, you're anti gun, sure. When I stepped away, I, I started coughing uncontrollably, and I guess I mm -hmm. popped the pustule in my throat, and then I started coughing up a lot of blood till my, oh. my teeth were all red, and then I had so I had to brush my teeth. And then I laid oh, you could have gone full boogie if you just came back with, <laughs> with bloody yeah, teeth. Yeah, I could have, yeah. Um, and, and then like, uh, maybe this is what Boogie needs to like get him fit again. Cause you know, he's up to like 385 now or something. Is he? Yeah. He's, he's getting him and bigger. wings are like the same weight. Huh? It, is that a success story? No, for, for that's a failure on all parts. <laughs> that's 360 degrees of failure. I'm trying to find the bright spot. Well, it, Boogie was over 500, right? So to be 385 is pretty fucking sexy i mean jesus how many years has it been though right like, like let's like let's how many pounds do you want to lose a year kyle let, let, i mean if you're I not think losing 15 is good if you're not losing <laughs> two pounds a week then you're not even fucking trying oh because i thought one pound a week was pretty good that's because one, one and a half uh, uh, okay so so i'm talking about average for a 500 pound man right Losing losing two pounds a week as a 500 pound man is incredibly easy. Losing two pounds a week when I was at 184 pounds was so hard. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like I'm barely eating. I'm doing cardio all goddamn day. I'm on I'm on so much caffeine. I'm like doing like 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 fucking Kegels sitting here doing the show. Like I'm walking 15,000. <laughs> I'm walking 15,000 steps a day. I'm I taking hot comes like that. Yeah. Oh, you have no idea. Oh, it, it's like a vice oh, down there. You know, I know. Um, and, uh, and and still, it's like, Derek, I'm not losing any weight. I lost I lost eight ounces this week. And he's just like, God, you are you are lean as dick skin. And I'm just, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was like, Yeah, but I, I really want to I really want to get below 180. He's like, Oh, you're gonna get there. And I'm just like, If you say so. Like it was so hard to like lose those last few pounds when you're below 10% body fat. My favorite. But I'm talking about somebody who's of 50 your process. Let me while we're while we're still on that. Kyle was talking to us. I think it was uh after the show, like off camera. He's like, oh, like with actual like dread and concern. If I don't weigh this by Monday, Derek's gonna up my cardio again and lower my calories. And it was just, it was like I, I, somehow when I step on this scale, I need to weigh this little. Yeah, yeah. Like I make sure I take a good full shit before mm, I get on the scale. I make sure that I worse. I make sure I piss all the, the like, like I'm like, maybe I just won't drink so much tonight and we'll call that weight loss. Like, like because <laughs> because there's that point where Derek's like, ah, oh, you only lost a pound and a half this week. What happened? And I'm like, I don't fucking know, man. Maybe I what, ate a what, spoonful of rice I wasn't supposed to. Like, what like, happened was last week, I dehydrated myself to make weight. So this <laughs> week, it's kind of in a deficit. It, it, it's like, it, but it's like exactly what you said. Like, and he would tell me like a week out, he's like, all right, if you don't weigh, you know, 185 by next Tuesday and let me know every day what your weight is then we'll go to like 45 minutes of cardio or 50 or 55 or 60 minutes of cardio, you know, continuous cardio. And it's Excuse like, me, Kyle, fasted cardio, fasted cardio. Yeah, dude, there was, a, you were like seeming so genuinely sad. Like what he said. And like, <laughs> as you're sending us the updates of you, like dehydrated as shit, we're, we're like, and like Woody and I are supportive the whole time. Like you're looking yoked. You're looking huge. Yeah. You're looking awesome. Keep it up. Like, and but when those ones started coming in, we're like, Ooh, you, you all right, man? Like, you're looking, it's looking a little rough. And even you were like, I just, I just need to get through it, man. Just eye on the prize. I just, and then I can eat, and then, and then I can eat, and I can go back to like, because you want, like, you want to sit around like one ninety something. Yeah, is where you're yeah. comfortable and where it looks yeah. more natural and. Normal. Or even one ninety five. Like, like, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Like, I've got a lot of muscle now. Like, like mm -hmm. all of that is fine. Um, but, but like, um, 
I think I'm going to, when I get back from my vacation, you know, 21 more days until I go on my vacation, uh, we're going to start a very serious bulk. Um, I'll be off probation and um, I'll, um, I'm going to go on a very serious bulk with Derek's help. And uh, probably for, I don't know, as long as he feels like. Are you like, going to be a clean bulk? Yeah. Like as far as diet? Yeah. I, I, don't, I, I see. I'm bulking. Yeah, but you look worse. You should go back to whatever you were doing before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm definitely going to gain a good bit of fat. Like that's just part of it. Like it, it just is. I don't care. Um, but it's it. If you're going to build muscle, you've got to like add some fat at the same time. It's not that you can't build muscle in a deficit. It's that you build the most muscle when you're at a surplus, and, and mm-hmm. that and that's the goal. It's to put on as much muscle. Uh, and the, it, as, as quickly as possible, it's to get as mo- mu- much out of your workouts as possible, right? Can I interrupt? Yeah. So you said to put on the most muscle. Are you trying to add muscle or strength? I don't give a fuck about strength. I couldn't. Go okay. Less. Yeah. I wish my strength yeah. would go down. The weights are getting dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're at the size you are, like you don't build muscle without building strength. Like that's just not how it works. Like you're you're stronger than you yeah, yeah. could need to be. For I had a quarter, every size. That's true. I add like a quarter yeah. pound a week to everything. I just put another micro plate on. It's not a big deal. I don't care about strength though. Um, I, I I could not care. People are always like, "What's your one rep max on this, that, and the other?" And I'm like, "Who fucking cares?" Do, are, do, like, like, <laughs> yeah, look how look at how cares. jacked I am, dude. You uh, think I, I give I, a I, fuck? <laughs> I care about real metrics, like how far my jizz shoots. Yeah, <laughs> dude. dude you, you, it, when you're standing at the foot of the bed and you still manage to hit her on the forehead and her head hits on the pillow, <laughs> like like. She's coming back for more. She's coming oh, back yeah. for more. She's telling people about this. <laughs> and they might come with her next time. It's yeah. a marketing plan. Yeah. That's the yeah. ultimate compliment no. is that went over my shoulder. That's yeah. what going for. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I, yeah. Uh, oh, I, oh you, you mentioned your weights are getting dangerous. Like, obviously, my weights are much lower than yours, but some of them are, it's hard. Like, dumbbells in particular, like um, incline. I do. Um, like a d- incline bench press, but with dumbbells. And in that motion, I'm very strong. Yep. But in the motion into like getting into position, yep. like that's, there's risk. 100% with you. Uh, that, that's what I was going to mention as well. Um, if, you're, if you're using dumbbells bigger than 65, 75 pounds, especially like, like especially on that last set, you know, like, like when, when I get them up, because I, I don't know if I'm doing it the right way, but what I mm-hmm. do is I, there are these little, um, they're the kind of things that you do like box jumps onto in a gym, little platforms. Plyo yeah. box. I bring a plyo box with me and I put that in front of me. And so I've got my dumbbells on there. So it's, I'm starting up at sort of knee height and I rock them back. I try to use as much inertia as I can. But there's a point where like I know I'm best to like do it in one motion mm-hmm. than to sort of like try to stabilize and be all ridiculous. So I just go back and my back cracks when I do it. When I, when I like, <laughs> when, like, like in a good way. Yeah. Another one popped. Oh, oh my. I'm swallowing blood. Oh, it sounds, it sounds satisfying though. No, it felt Doesn't... like a, you ever had, you know, pop rocks. Yeah. 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 But, um, not, so, yeah not made but, but yeah, um, just like rock back. And like when I get back, I'm, you know, I'm holding 150 plus pounds or whatever it is. And it's just like click, 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 clack. But yeah, super strong in that motion. The same with overhead press or when I do incline. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, yep. Like, like you can you can tell that you're in the right groove when you're doing those exercises. But getting into like like I've seen like the big guys like who have those massive dumbbells and they have a partner right who's like mm-hmm. like two at least one mm-hmm. maybe two and they're like helping them stabilize because they've got two hundred pound dumbbells they got two hundred fucking pound dumbbells and shit like that and it's like you could rip a if you rip your pec that's gonna be eight months before yeah. you're even like maybe the same again and then the rehab to like get your like muscle symmetry back your strength levels back i say strength doesn't matter but you want to be able to do work Mm -hmm. you know i don't care what the number is but it should be like you're roughly the same on both sides yeah Mm -hmm. yeah like 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 pec tears bicep tears shit like that you ruin yourself i would rather blow my shoulder out than have a pec tear i don't Mm -hmm. think i do um overhead press with dumbbells anymore it was that it, it seemed dangerous i was having a hard time i use um the barbell because it's nice it's, some, it's from the squat rack you can start it right here you can do your thing and then put it back right here it's i use a machine and, uh, but, and for the same reasons it's just safety yeah yeah i felt like um i felt like just getting up there with all that weight and um 
you know, there's people walking behind me sometimes, and I felt a little weird about that. Like, I never got squirrely. I've never dropped it, you know, because I can. I always get back to that like mm-hmm. p- finished power clean sort of like position. You know, you're right here, and this is a real like strong position to like hold weight. I don't know how much weight I can hold like this, but it's way more than I can lift. Mm-hmm. Two, yeah, way over two hundred pounds, something like that. Whatever, like, I can hold two or two or two fifty, whatever it takes, right here standing. Mm-hmm. But like, if I ever were to get like wobbly, like really trying to crank one out, and like I don't know, I just I was always kind of weird about that. But I, mm-hmm. I and uh, and I was worried about stabilization with my legs. Like like, am I really getting the most out of this upper body exercise if my balance with my legs isn't perfect? So I figured like, why why mm-hmm. don't I just sit down on this machine that's got like plates on it that I can like really incrementally change over time? And I and it and it's actually converging. So it's a converging mm-hmm. overhead press, which I don't know if that's better, but it feels better. I have less. Um, I, every now and then, I get a little click in my shoulder from, um, you know, doing the overhead press. Like maybe I, maybe I, I get that. Bad. Yeah, and I don't get that anymore with conversion. Neither of you guys like belts, right? Uh, I use belts. No, no, no. no. I, I don't. I don't like belts, but I don't do. I don't do any exercises really that require a belt. I, I, the I work for the I, overhead press. Interesting. The exercises yeah. that I pulled uh, that I pulled out um, because I'm not. It's not that I think they're. It's like it's the pit bull argument, right? It's not that the exercise is inherently dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's inherently dangerous for me to do it because I'm not trained to do these things. Like like mm-hmm. bench press seems pretty easy. Like like I get that there's a lot of form to it if you're trying to be like some champion, but if you're just doing the exercise, like it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Bent rows, on the other hand, and, and deadlifts. You can fuck yourself up with those. <laughs> I you can fuck yourself up with those exercises. I um I messed mm. up my bent rows one day. And I pulled one of the bigger back muscles and uh, my back is really nice. Like, like I've got a really big back and it was like <laughs> crippling to like pull this muscle. It felt like I had like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It felt like it just like w- cramped up and like twisted in on itself. And it was just like, oh, uh, uh, uh. yeah. and I, got, I had to leave the gym immediately, like, like in pain and like came home and used the foam roller, um, like took a hot bath like slept on the floor and it still hurt for like three days. I didn't miss any workouts because of it, but I was like, you know what? Never again. I'm never yeah. doing that exercise again. Like I, I switched it for this exercise. I made up. <laughs> I just made up this exercise where um, I take a incline bench and I, I, I incline it enough that it's like this high when I'm standing and I put my forehead on it and then I bend because that's going to stabilize me. And then I get into the bent row position with dumbbells because with the dumbbells, I'm, I'm able to really go back. People far put because, their chest mm-hmm. on it, and it's the same thing, but not so no, awfully the, no, dorky the, looking. No, the ladies love it when I put my forehead on it because <laughs> I, I throw my fucking J- Japanese bandana. My, mm. my fucking, <laughs> yeah, I yep. After every set, you stand up with just huge bread marks. <laughs> Bent over rows are not even on my scary list. I, I actually I do take, all like, the time. I do them to failure. I, I um, On my squat rack, I have these like extra long J hooks. I don't know what they're called. L hooks or something. Mm-hmm. And I just routinely drop like, I don't know. It's not too heavy, like 170 pounds. It just makes all this shatter. It makes me feel like I'm doing something cool. <laughs> like they like are taking yeah. a failure than just fucking throw that thing. The bar is bouncing around and it's all my gear. I can do whatever I want with it. Oh yeah. yeah. That is nice. Having all your own stuff where I'm like, you know, I'm not wiping down my machines. <laughs> it's all my germs. Why would I? The AC set to fifty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, like one, one of the nice things about working out when I work out when there's literally nobody there is like, first of all, I don't sweat. Like, like I don't sweat enough to leave a stain on a, a fucking machine, so I just don't wipe them down. And if that's bad, like karma or juju or whatever, then so fucking be it. Because there's no sweat on this thing. Like, at this point, I'm wipe like like like. If you farted in a chair, would you like dust it off or something? Like, like hmm. I, I haven't left any residue here. Like, 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 there's nothing of me on that fucking thing. And my, my I'm, I'm the, the back brand of new... your head isn't like sweaty when you're like Never. incline benching. Like when I sit up from incline I benching, or even like, yeah, I can see where my sweaty head was. No, I don't sweat um, during like even the the heaviest of workouts because I take three minutes between every exercise. So um, my heart rate kind of stays around 120. For like the full hour, hour and a half, however long I lift, mm-hmm. but um, which is high, but it's not quite cardio yet. And uh, but no, I never break a sweat. I wear like a uh, like like some nice Adidas track pants and like a um, cut off shirt or whatever. 
a tank mm-hmm. top or something. And I just, it's chilly in the gym anyway to keep the AC up pretty high. So I just don't get, I just don't sweat. You wear I mean, pants I sweat a while you work out instead yeah. of shorts. I've, I made that transition a couple months ago. I like saw these really comfortable looking like track looking pants on Amazon. My leg hair was, my leg hair was getting pinched in the, um, in one of the machines. And I was, uh, Oh, that's annoying. I just did Like I realized it was more comfortable. It's like way it. more comfortable. I wear like either some like Hurley, um, sweatpants or I wear some like um, some Adidas track pants, like a like a fucking squatting slav. I just wear like Converse shoes in the gym now. I have for a while. What do you wear? I got some Reeboks that are real flat. Um, that are they're like just like plain black cheap Reeboks. Um, they they don't have like a raised heel or anything, but they're like I don't know. They're just flat standard forty five dollar pair of sneakers. Just match the pants, and uh, <laughs> that's the important part. That's you know. You need to be looking good for the ladies. They need to be paying attention to the, you know, pants and shoes combo, not the red mark on your forehead. There's really no hot chicks that show up like when I'm working out because it's dangerous. Um, not only because it's 3 a.m., but because I'm horny. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's the but, real risk. Yeah, but like every now and then, like I've sent you guys videos and stuff from like noon. You know, maybe I hit yeah. like a noon workout. Oh man, it's distracting. I don't like working out with hot chicks because it's like I'm here to do some work. Like, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. not be distracted, I'm, not be distracted. Like, like, I'm sure there are mm-hmm. people who are like, yeah, let's go to the gym and fucking like do a half ass workout and like watch some hot chicks bend over. And it's like, yeah, let's get, let's get yoked so that we can have some hot chicks come over to our house and bend over. Yeah. Like, yeah. First of all, Dude. Like, like, and, it, I, and if you're I, I single too, if you're single, there's always that like, oh, you're a pussy, dude. You're missing a golden opportunity. Go talk to her. Like your mind doesn't let you off the hook for not walking mm-hmm. over to a girl who's at the leg spreader machine I'm getting her phone number. <laughs> First of all, the any chick, the whore machine. <laughs> First of all, anyone in the whore machine, I laugh at because it's a <laughs> exercise and it doesn't do anything. The whore but machine. The whore machine. The, the, uh, the, the one remember, that goes out. You mean? Yeah, the one that goes like out and you're doing I, like. I think fucking, I think in is sluttier. At, the the Kegel machine. I, one of the funniest parts of the of the office. Like Dwight goes to a gym to try to hit on Michael's girlfriend to see if she'll cheat on him, and he's doing the fucking he's doing that like thigh exercise right next to her, grunting and groaning. Like, oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I feel oh like that that, that burn is hurt. deep. Dude, <laughs> just made a gym purchase i'm so excited i have waited for like Ooh. six months for this to come into stock and i'm trying not to buy rogue fitness because i hate those lying cocksuckers what you got? i it, it it came to mind because we were talking about it's my equipment i'll do whatever i want yeah. i bought a curl bar an easy curl bar yeah that is wide enough that I can do curls in the squat rack. I no longer have to pick it up off the floor like some sort of peasant. I can stand in the squat rack, do my curls, drop it right down at thigh level, and wait for the next set. That's um, pretty candy. I, I like. Uh, how much was that bar that you got? I mean, I mean, three hundred. Three hundred. Okay. okay. Oh, I just didn't know how much because I I got like. Can I just uh, throw this little... out there? Why not? Yeah. Why not just because? Why not just have? a shorter stand to like sit it on. Okay. So keep in mind the gym can't fit more equipment, right? Okay. That's that's a big issue. Cause like, that's what I have. I use the bench, but it's tippy and you know how on a squat rack you can put weights on one side, then the Mm -hmm. other. You can't do that on the bench. You have to very carefully balance it. Interesting. And, uh, um, and yeah, I just don't like pick it up off the ground. I don't know why. Maybe it's the back thing. I'm not sure. I don't pick it up off the ground. Like, like at my gym, there's, um, there's one of those machines that you can like do, you can get the, the preacher, preacher curl, curl. Machine. preacher curl. So, so the preacher curl thing has those two like jutted it, oh, jutted out. So, so even I, if you're not using the pad, you use the no, height. It, of it's the... mounted on that. So I just I, yeah. I I drag that away from the wall and I use I I just stand next to it. I stand behind it and I I pick it up, fucking curl. I, you know, I bend my knees. I don't have to go down that far. I get back mm-hmm. up with it. I'm not curling it. Do you ever use like the preacher side? I I bought one of those for like 130 bucks and I love it. I always. I've never stood in front of it and grabbed it. I've always just used it like traditionally in the seated. When, whenever I've done it, and I'm weird about shit like this, like like the way it makes my elbow skin like, like 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 it it you know, your your elbow skin goes like flat on the vinyl, and then as I'm pulling it up, it's sort of like the skin like gets pinched by the vinyl. Or it, I have it, a towel that I lay over it for that exact reason. It's way more comfortable. I don't I don't like that sensation, and so and, and, and there's also like a machine at my gym that is a preacher curl machine. That you can mm-hmm. get in, and it has a really interesting angled grip to it. That's very, it's like this, and and you can like turn it down really low. Because if I'm gonna, 
I, I just don't need it. I like my free weights, you know, mm-hmm. like, like I, I really like um, just doing a reverse. barbell's a free weight. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah, it is. No, yeah. but, but I'm talking about a, there's a machine there. Oh, okay. uh, you, you, you don't use that cool. machine because you prefer the bar. All right. Yeah, I, I just I, I like doing the uh, like the, you know, supinated and pronated grip fucking mm-hmm. um, um, curls and uh, and just trying to get as much fucking weight on there as possible. I mm-hmm. like the idea of being able to curl a woman. Um, I, I, feel, I like, like guys be like, yeah, I could bench press my girl. It's like, can you curl her though? Can, <laughs> can you curl that bitch? I can I deadlift her. I can deadlift her. Now I'm, I'm working towards one arm curling her. I, th- I think I could. Bent, yeah, I could bent over row, girl. Yeah, I can curl my girl. It helps that she's a 14 year old bulimic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's easy as shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I would really like to get to the point where I can do that thing that Mac did, where he like pussy grabbed D and like, ah, <laughs> like fucking like like that's a lot. Like like if you yeah. get like a, you you really do need like an eighty five pound girl, and then it, mm-hmm. you're getting pretty close to conceivable if you get her to jump a little. If she yeah, jumps I mean, a little, I can absolutely do it. Like that. <laughs> yeah, like in that I'm, sexual I'm, harassment episode you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, right? it, it scoops her pussy. I can, and... I can definitely pussy grab it like a, like an eighty ninety pound woman. And if she gives me a little a, a little hop, then I can I can fucking get her up to head height for sure. Yeah. I'm I'm fascinated by what motivates you, Kyle. I love it. It's it's so non mainstream the things you're going for. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, cur- curling women. Yeah, there it's I'm also abstract. I'm actually talking about I'm actually talking about flinging them across the ice and trying to get them to to a very specific position. Not not sure. Heavy. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> Olympic you curling. Need, you need slippery women. Oh, yeah, I get it. I, no, I'll be ice. your broom, man. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I like, like, I was just thinking, like, like I have bench pressed girls, like, just for, can you lift me? And, like, 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 I picked a girl up and she was like, oh, wow, you can just lift me. I'm like, yeah, bitch, you're like 110 pounds. Like, what do you think? Like, like, yeah. every, you're like, you I know could have done this two years ago. Like, <laughs> I, like, there's never been a point in my life where I couldn't pick up a 110 pound woman. Like, like in mm-hmm. high school, we'd pick each other up and goof around all the time, and those guys were as big as me. But like, like, like I, I've also bench pressed, but you've got to like, there's no like friendly way to like grab a woman to bench press her. You got to get some gooch. You got to get a mm. good. I grabbed the pussy and then Found the, the throat. Scene. I, I think the this throat. isn't that hard to do. <laughs> Zach, can you show this to everybody? This is the scene where Mac <laughs> grabs D by the pussy. I hadn't seen this episode. Um, so oh, see, minute. see. This See, is he's as high got, as he went. I grabbed no, it. No, no, no. He's got a supinated grip, though. He's making it hard on himself. You got to pronate that shit. You, it's got to be a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Wait, you think if he grabbed it with the back of his hand somehow, that'd be easier? Not the back of his hand. You get down low. Like the if he thumb got up under her. A thumb cups under to the gooch, and you got all four fingers right on the mons, and you fucking oh. crouch a little, <laughs> and explode. <laughs> Such a funny the, picture. The uh-huh. Mons. I give you mad props for that. Did you just graduate a voluntary sex ed class? <laughs> Involuntary. <laughs> <laughs> the Mons Venus. What? What is it called? Like the, t- pubis. the pubis. The Mons pubis. pubis. Yeah. Wow. I haven't. I haven't heard that since community college. I'm impressed. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know things Kyle just said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, um, I think that's not that. Especially if she jumps a little. Oh, what he's doing is very difficult because he is single-handedly curling a woman. He's no, literally no. doing. Look again; he's got his elbow on his hip. Yeah, that's it still may... a curl. No, a curl would be the elbow on the side. If you put your elbow on your hip and use like he, I think he basically squatted, held her like that, and then extended his legs, and that's pretty <laughs> well, how he got I, there. I'm I'm almost <laughs> positive that there is wire work at play here. Just to be clear. Oh, um, you're probably yeah. right. Like, 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 there, there literally <laughs> is wire work going on here. Like, there's no way any of this is real. I'm talking about doing things that other people. I'm talking about doing some magical shit for reals, though. That's 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 my favorite thing to do. Is like, oh yeah, remember that thing, thing in Lord of the Rings that was nonsense? You think mm-hmm. we could try to fucking do it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't think you can shoot a bow that fast and then ride a shield down some stairs. Only one way to find out, bro. I've got the bow. I've got the shield. I'm gonna talk to Derek to <laughs> get me on a shield riding regimen. <laughs> his helm's deep dude you know, are you are, are you excited play. for the amazon show because I'm, I'm i'm getting a little excited because i know i'll be stoned as fuck when it comes out and i'm i'm looking forward to i'm 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 tamping down my expectations because i don't want them to is it any ruin soon? it i don't think it's soon like I, next I think year it's, yeah like a year they away. released an image 
Oh, I didn't even see an image they released. I'll have to it looks see oh, it, like the main characters. There is a thing coming out on Amazon before that that is fantasy that looks super high budget. I instantly thought of Taylor, but he had bigger <laughs> family things going on. Do you know what well, I'm talking about? Did you I, see the trailer? No, no, I don't. Uh, let I'm me see. Do they have like all their characters laid out? Like who's going to play who and everything? No. Um, I'll tell you what. The, while Woody searches for that, um, the Matrix 4 trailer dropped. And it was really fucking good. Like, like the, 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 the direction that they've taken it is really fucking cool. And I'm excited for the fourth Matrix movie. And I don't remember which one of the Wachowski sisters um, is directing and writing this one. But because I can't tell them apart, they both have that look about them. Um, yeah, it was nice when one was trans and the one wasn't still. Yeah. Um, and they went like full like pink hair and everything. So it's, it's odd looking folks. But. I'm really looking forward to that movie. I don't know if you guys saw the trailer, but it the special effects, of course, are incredible. Um, it looks like they've taken things up another notch, and it seems like what they're doing is that like they plugged Keanu Reeves back into the Matrix and erased his memory, but he's having like some deja vu, and they're playing that song, one pill, da 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 da, one pill, do de do, and he's like taking those blue pills like every day. And, hmm. uh, and and then like the Morpheus character shows up and is like he's got the red pill and like and then just some fucking mm. dubstep drops and he's fucking flying off rooftops and st stopping bullets and he's he does a Hadouken <laughs> he, does a, <laughs> he literally does a Hadouken so powerful that it like it explodes the dojo that they're in so like um, I'm so down he meets um, the um, uh, the Carrie Ann Moss character um, Trinity and 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 like shakes her hand he's like. Do I know there's something familiar about you? And it's pretty cool because like they both aged, but they still look pretty fucking good. But most people are like Matrix 2 was bad. Matrix 3 was super horrible. Yeah, Kyle's yeah, yeah. like, wait do you see Matrix 4? Well, that's they, gonna it, turn the ship around. I, it's not like they're making a sequel to those though. Like, like this is kind of doing its own thing, you know. And it's it's been a generation of time. This looks good. This looks like they're like back to basics. Like mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of the remakes he's made. He's just killing it with like Bill and Ted's Incredible Adventure. And uh, what was the other remake he made? I forget. He's making some shitty movies lately. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, that's the, the, the Bill and Ted thing is pure fan service. I bet, I bet it's, I bet its ratings are super high. And I bet it made like more money that I bet it made its money back because it's like a fan favorite. Like it's like a, it's like a cult classic. So like they were just kind of making that for that group of fans. Right. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Keanu was making it because. The, the the other guy like he isn't he hasn't acted and since bill and ted 2 <laughs> so it's like kind of nice oh yeah and bone. that guy aged he wasn't good looking in bill and ted 1 or 2 but yeah. he has aged into someone far uglier what are the ratings like 6.4 out of 10 i'm sorry yeah. 6.0 out of 10 i don't even yeah. know how that compares to i that. mean that's pretty strong for what it is right we know it's a garbage movie um, Was the, is that the the audience score uh, one moment. IMDb rating is what I'm looking at. I'd be curious to oh, Rotten okay. Tomatoes as well. But uh, but no, the, the John Wick shit is outstanding. Um, I'll, I'll tell you like the worst movie Keanu Reeves has ever made though. And, and and it's important when you're classifying like worst movies or best of the worst or something like that. It matters if they're trying. That's that that that's what matters. Like like I could go make the worst movie ever. I would just forget to take the fucking lens cap off, right? But mm -hmm. if if you're actually trying oh. and you're and you're a little bit capable, and you don't realize that what you're making is, is an abomination, that's a best of the worst. I'm talking about movies like The Room. That's um, the one I was searching for. I was thinking of the name. The, the room, room, the Tommy Wiseau um, fucking abortion of a movie. Um, I'm going to watch that in Colorado. That's on the list. Or um, or something like Troll 2. That's, all, that, that's well known. It's another one that's like so awful that it's hilarious to watch. There's a lot of them. Well, in like 1992 or something like that, uh, they made Dracula with Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins and Carrie Yules and uh, Winona Ryder. She, and, she, and, and it's directed by Francis Ford Coppola, you know, the guy that made the fucking Godfather. And you're like, holy shit, that's an incredible cast. They've got a cool way of thinking about this, making Dracula kind of a, a sympathetic antihero where like they explain why he's doing what he's mm -hmm. doing. And Gary Oldman has shaved his head like 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 a fucking retard to like make give him this weird ass hairline he shaved like four inches off his hairline and and then like yeah 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 so, so all right so who's gonna play like 
the main character. I can't remember his name. I haven't. I, it's been a while since I've read the books, but Keanu Reeves. We'll get Keanu Reeves to play the young British handsome man. And it's just like, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> and they did it. And his acting in that movie changes it from what could have been like an all time great movie to like, oh, no, he's on screen again. <laughs> <laughs> I heard someone say that they saw some. My friend came doing Keanu Reeves cosplay and he was so unconvincing as Keanu Reeves. I thought it was really him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sick line. Like Keanu's uh, not a bad actor, but like he's that not a was a good actor. I think he is a good actor. He's not he's a different kind of actor. He's an actor. He can only guy. play Keanu Reeves. He plays Keanu Reeves pretty fucking well. Um I, I thought he was great in the Matrix, obviously. Um and I, I thought he was I'm so glad Will Smith didn't take that role. Uh, and I and I think that he was um, really good in the in the in the John Wick shit, and even at Point Break, it's pretty fucking good. You know that action movie from way back when with movie. Patrick Swayze. I haven't Swayze. seen that one. You like it with the surfing and everything? I've seen it seventy five times. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Good, good. My friends and I used to quote it like it's like code for we it, we it was a part of my childhood. He's good in it, right? Like, like yeah. he's not bad. Like you know he's he has his moments. But playing fucking Jonathan Harker, that's the character's name. I just, it just came to me. Playing Jonathan Harker um, in, Dra- in, in Dracula. Guys, you should just go on YouTube and watch a few clips of it. It is so bad. He has to do a British accent, and he's a surfer dude. Like, <laughs> like, and, and Gary Oldman is acting his fucking heart out. Well, he's a tremendous actor. <laughs> he's one of the, he's like top 10 best yeah. actors in the world. Gary Oldman is. He's in- fucking incredible. And when you watch his like evil fucking portrayal, like there's a part where he, he, he like feeds these vampire whores an infant and the, and the laughter and glee in his <laughs> eyes when he gives them an infant. And John, and, and Keanu Reeves is just like, no. <laughs> and Gary <laughs> Oldman is like, <laughs> 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 and like, you, you it's like holy shit! It really looks like he's happy that he just fed an infant to some to Monica Bellucci and that and those other vampires. So died. Keanu is like stealing scenes from Gary Oldman, but in the bad way. He's like, he ruins them, and and the problem is like the first like quarter of the movie is just them in the castle together because that's how the books go too. Mm-hmm. Even more like there's a big part of the book where it's just Jonathan and Dracula in the castle, and and Jonathan is slowly starting to be like. This Count Dracula guy is kind of a weirdo, but if there's so much money to be made for my company, I'm going to mm-hmm. I'll be able to marry Miss Lucy when I not Lucy, whatever fucking went on the writer's character is. Lucy's her friend, but uh it's a real it's a good movie that could have been great, but the other, the rest of the actors are so fucking good um that Dude, they say it. We awful. should be talking about this Wheel of Time thing. Like I, I think it's going to be Wheel of Time. Yeah, it, so it's, it's an really Amazon good. release. I, I did put a link in there. Oh, thanks. And it looks like the budget is huge. They released a trailer, call it a week ago, and I was like, fuck, like, this thing slipped under the radar, and it's coming out soon, November. Oh, shit. I'm going to watch the trailer like without reacting and stuff. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how good it is. Looks like Sky- First of all, my first impressions is it looks like fucking Skyrim the movie. That's I mean, Skyrim is a great game. You, have you tried you on Netflix? Is you a show? No, or, I, I don't know what you is. No Woody, idea. have you tried you on Netflix? It must be a show. Oh, it's a horror show called You. I guess no, I, I haven't heard of it. Oh, if it's a horror show, I'll oh, like. Okay. Well, I just realized you're speaking Taylor's love language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love horror shows, good ratings. Wait, Rotten Tomato is it? All right, I don't know about the Wheel of Time, man. Audience I don't know. It's, it's... No, you're not digging it. Uh, I, I don't know. I just saw the monster and it was that that, that was kind of weak CGI. I don't know. I, I'm okay, going to watch it. I'll okay. give it a chance. Taylor, what do you they, they say? There may be nudity and sex in the Lord of the Rings TV series. Ooh. Thoughts? Uh, I don't really care whether there's nudity or sex or there's not nudity or sex. I just want them to not fuck up the world. Like I don't want a bunch of needless stuff in there. Like like they're they're getting away from the actual story of the like prequels and everything because that's what they're doing. They're doing like thousands of years. They're going more like peeling stories from the Silmarillion and stuff. I'm sure and maybe building around it. I know that uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's son did some like additional writing into the world, but I, I don't think any of that's like canon. So I, I I just I'm I have 
tamped down hopes. We'll see. I absolutely but, I want know. nudity and sex, and I can't believe you didn't say you wanted to. And it's not just the nudity and sex, although it is the nudity and sex. Mm -hmm. It's what it tells us about it. It's like if I said, Kyle, I'm building this great war movie but there's going to be no curse words in the entire thing. They're going to say golly gee and shucks the whole way through. You'd be like, ah, it sucks. It's not <laughs> that you're not cursing. It's that that is an indicator that you're being a pussy about this show. The same thing. If you're telling me that there's like Game of Thrones level sex on this thing, that, that tells me that you're like taking some risks and you're not afraid. And, and that might imply the kind of gore I can expect to find in this show. Like if you're showing Dong, you're showing beheadings. See, showing but I would, I would like any moment that's take. I felt the same about Game of Thrones. It was like, look at porn if you want to see sex. Like, if they could have taken out some of the sex in Game of Thrones and made the action sequences and the fighting longer and better, like, oh yeah, that's a trade out. Oh, that's, 10 that's times a good point. 10. The fighting was too short. In it was too Thrones. short. It <laughs> no, it was. It should have been even the, longer. It should have been honestly, even honestly a lot of the sword fights are really poorly chore choreographed in Game of Thrones. Some are. Like, like the um, I. And I, I got I kind of I, I've the, seen the it mountains times. one isn't great. The Actually, I was going to go. Oh, no, that, that one's snakes. good. I think he's going to take. Oh, yeah. God. That is, we pretend yeah. like that didn't happen. I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Ned Stark. Going. Ned Stark versus Jamie Lannister right before that uh, Lannister guard stabs Ned Stark in the back of the leg mm -hmm. or whatever. That's a really poorly choreographed scene. Um, <laughs> and I say so because I just watched a master swordsman like grade movies based on their choreography. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was the whole time I'm like, do the princess bride, do the princess bride, do the princess bride. And he's like, and now the princess bride. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> that one's so fucking. I don't cool. remember anything about the princess bride and the sword. Oh, you probably do. The The main character goes against the Spanish guy and then I'm not left handed and he switches hands oh, he yeah, goes on yeah, top yeah. of the cliff. And it's it's a dance. I don't remember it being like. I, I, it probably is super good. I haven't seen that movie since I was. It, it's not little. like it's not incredible fence fencing play, and um, according to this guy, it doesn't really correspond to a lot of the 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 stuff that they're saying. They're like, ah, oh, you you you. I see you're using Manini's maneuver, and like like well, that, I've never mm -hmm. heard of Manini's maneuver, but <laughs> that's probably not it either. Um, <laughs> like, like it's pretty good, but it's not like stellar. Um, but but there's a lot of like sword fighting in movies that just apparently doesn't make a lot of sense. And uh, I don't know. I like when they get things right. Like, like I don't really recognize bad-ish sword fighting, um, but I definitely recommend rec recognize terrible sword fighting where it's just silly. Um, the or same failure to engage, right? If I 3v1 you and two of us are just waiting for our chance, yeah. I see that right away. That's what, not specifically that, but but there's a couple of movies that, that were covered, like maybe 27 Ronin or something. And um, this guy was kind of an expert at facing multiple opponents. And he talked about how you do that and how it involves a lot of spinning and shoving opponents um, either into one another or away from one another to create that space that you need. Because obviously, like, they did kill Bill and he's like, and she's dead. Like, like he's, he's like mm -hmm. you know there's that scene where she's like surrounded by the fucking screaming 88 or whatever they are like 88 guys was actually that later they're like, were there really 88 of them nah they just call themselves that <laughs> why i think they said think it sounds cool <laughs> but, but there were like cool. there were like better 40, than like the, the 71 but the, the, yeah like the crazy 45 <laughs> doesn't quite roll off the tongue no. but you know she's surrounded and like as like like 1.5 seconds into the fight he goes and she'd be dead because one of those dozen people behind her would have stabbed slash decapitated. Man, her. it's a good thing they brought in an expert to make clear that up. <laughs> well, but then he like does another fight where it's like one versus two or three, um, and like immediately the guy like shoves the one guy, draws his sword in one motion, kills the guy over here, then faces the guy he shoves, and now it's a one v one because he's already killed like two of them like like really mm -hmm. quickly and without a lot of flourishing or nonsense, like um, that that really succinct sort of japanese sword play that's cool to watch um and i really it, he did the gladiator when it's uh joaquin phoenix facing um um, um the, the um kurt uh, russell crow and uh and then a couple others it, it was interesting I, I like that stuff i like seeing experts break down movies um i like the couple, climbing one I, I can't get his name right alex alex an old yeah he does one on climbing you know what's on a when you said uh the guy walks into a 1v3 and then he quickly calls it down. That's why I like watching Landmark and Smitty Stone and the great Escape from Tarkov Twitch streamers. Because mm -hmm. it's like they walk into a 1v4. And now, like, if less than a minute later, now it's a 1v2. Like, 
well, if you guys couldn't beat them 1v4, you're kind of fucked now. And then it becomes a 1v1, and like, we all know how this goes. You know, you, you couldn't beat them 4 on 1, and now you're the last guy standing, and I'm pretty sure your leg's blacked out. There's been so many times where, like, I'm in that same scenario, like, Larry's dead, Mitty's dead, whoever else is dead. I'm, I'm just like, guys, uh... I'm just going to leave. <laughs> like, like I can hear him in there healing. He's going to cancel that animation the moment I try to run in there. Uh, I, I'm going to leave. Uh, Larry, I got your shit. Um, it's in a bush. Uh, everybody else, you're fucked. But I'm on, my way, I'm on my way to Dome. I'm on my way to Dome. It's over. It's over. I There's no way I'm running down to that Larry hole. All, almost every day. I, I'm like, you know, because um, if people don't know, Escape from Tarkov wipes every couple of months. And I think the current white might be three and a half months in. At this point, if Larry's playing like he always does, he's so rich, he could equip me like a non-noob, like a not a new character. I could, yeah. We could roll through a bunch of tasks. I could get to level 10 in a night. There's a few guys in the Discord, um, if you actually wanted to do that, I'm sure they've offered to like equip me and stuff. I mean, even Class is like a, a multi-millionaire. You know, he's got... Yeah, he's got it wouldn't be Class. <laughs> so, he's so classist. <laughs> what, what about that guy who won that poker hand he might be able to help you out let's see yeah i don't know if you guys are talking about like video game money or real money we i'm are, so uh, out of uh video I'm game sorry, money Danny. We um, should okay <laughs> loop you back in uh in his game dark off players tend to get wealthier throughout the wipe okay okay yeah i didn't know if you guys had just rich fans who would like, oh no no so if buy I you a you, hard working fans if i asked you to carry me right after you were wiped out that's a big ask but mm -hmm. at this point, you're asking Jeff Bezos for a half million dollars, which mm -hmm. is a lot to me. Mm -hmm. But to him, he pissed. Yeah, you wouldn't million. notice it. Yeah, yeah, what, not a big so, deal. So this is the game of the moment right now. What's it called? Escape from, Escape Tarkov. from Tarkov. It's uh, okay. it it might be the greatest first person shooter ever made. It's uh, it's very very complex, very complicated, uh, very difficult to play. Incredibly high skill ceiling, and a lot of very unique game mechanics uh in that like i won't dwell on this too much but like in call of duty right you're like oh i want an m16 i have one unlocked so i'll pick an m16 if you, if you die nobody's gonna pick up your m16 and take it home with them it's just like it's yeah. a bullshit fucking digital piece of nonsense on the ground and escape from tarkov everything you have is real as far mm -hmm. as the game is concerned you keep every bit of loot and money you've acquired in a stash mm -hmm. it when, if you die in the game and i take your gun off your body it's my gun now i'm taking mm -hmm. it back to my stash putting it on the fucking wall and mm -hmm. i i can i can sell it on there's like a flea market in game that mm -hmm. all the other players have access to i can set a price and just like ebay and ebay your gun off and they'll pay me in rubles and i can take those rubles and i can buy parts for another gun and build that gun mm -hmm. just like you could in, in the real world mm -hmm. the problem is if you're bad you eventually run out of money mm -hmm. and like like if you're good you're just fucking climbing that. You're, you're like, oh shit, I've got 10 million rubles now. I can have anything mm. I want. And the guy who's got 50,000 rubles, he's like, shit, I got a pistol. Mm -hmm. I got a backpack that holds like three cans of beans. Speaking, <laughs> of, bean speaking of beans, I really need some beans because of this thing. You have to eat. You have to eat. Or like, like if, if you're drink. going, you got to eat and drink. And like, like if you don't heal, let's say, let's say you get fucked up in a raid. You go into the game, you get all fucked up, you die. When you come out, you have to heal your body, like in the real world. You have to go and like mm -hmm. like use medical supplies to heal yourself up before mm -hmm. you can go back into the game. These mm -hmm. are separate instances of the game, like like mm -hmm. completely separated. Could could be by minutes or could you be by days. You can win the game and come back, you know, just injured a little bit, but in your next raid, you're still hurt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's fun. oh, yeah. and the, the I, we could go on and on. When you get hurt. There are like five different ways to get hurt. Like you could break a bone, you could black out a limb. But one requires you have a light splint. bleed, a heavy the other, bleed. The other requires a surgery kit. A light bleed requires some gauze. A heavy bleed. There's a couple of ways to fix it, but there's like different medicines for your heavy bleeds. If you, if you can get hurt, like actual pain that like blurs your vision and messes with what your character can see and hear, there might you be will tinnitus. have. There are there are some <laughs> strong like stimulate like 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 epipen type medicines that you can apply. But you'll have like these after effects, just like a like a hangover, and your character mm -hmm. will be like like his vision will do that tunnel thing, like and you've got like a mm -hmm. pounding headache, and you're just like, mm -hmm. fuck. And, and when you're hurt, not only, like you, you like I don't care, man, be hurt, bitch. I don't feel mm -hmm. it. But your character is like, oh, 
Uh-huh. Ah, ah. And, and the other guy is like, uh-huh. like hears you around the corner, like moaning. Uh-huh. And he's just like, he's like, all right, he's coming. What, uh, what era is it in? Modern. Uh, modern. So uh, two years from now, in a fake it, Russian city. Yeah, it sounds super interesting. It sounds like a gigantic commitment, though, to get good Massive at it. Commitment. You work yeah. too much for this game. This is a game yeah, for maybe. people that don't work. No, no, you can't. <laughs> this, game, this game does not. It's not fun. It doesn't it, sound fun. It, like, like, <laughs> it sounds it awful. Was, <laughs> it, like, like I know, I know a lot about the game. I'm not good at it, but I'm okay at mm. it. And if I practice enough, I can get to like a four out of ten level, like mm. like almost average or something like mm-hmm. that. Like okay, it would take me a solid month to get to end game, and I'm in mean grinding every mm-hmm. fucking day. You don't think so? Uh, it, you think it would take longer? Yeah, how much longer? You don't know anymore. To, end you, game is Kappa. Is oh. that what you're saying? Oh fuck Kappa! I'm talking about getting the flea market and being able to afford Meta Meta Gear. Oh, that's, that's probably quicker than that, dude. dude yeah. it, it, t- it takes months and months and months. Are to get you familiar Kappa. with what it takes to get? Oh Kappa yeah, now? oh yeah. What level is it? It's seventy one. Yeah, but, okay, then you do know. <laughs> but Landmark has been playing twelve to fifteen hours a day for the last three and a half four months, and no he's like a le- he's like a level sixty four. Eight, yeah. Damn. And keep in mind. It, it, every level is exponentially harder than <laughs> level 71 is as much xp as zero through 70 <laughs> it's crazy i think i said that wrong 70 is as mm-hmm. much as zero yeah it, it's out fucking rageous like like that's why Smitty Stone I, got it spinny stone's kappa it's crazy so like so like i would much he grinds um labs i'm sure so mm-hmm. yeah i would much rather play rust because that's like one week of pure determination and like grinding all week and like when the week's over you got dark circles under your eyes and you feel like shit but Tarkov, if you're going to be like a Tarkov streamer, it's your fu- people be like, Kyle, stream Tarkov. And I'm like, you claim to be a fan of Tarkov, but you're clearly not. That or you're a troll. Like, 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 like you realize I can't just stream Tarkov. You want me to go in with a fucking Glock and lose it four times in a row until we're broke? Because I can make that happen. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to play while streaming. So if if I wanted to make money off playing video games, me, somebody who hasn't played anything since Majora's Mask came out on the N64, <laughs> what would be my play? What would I do? Is Straight to any- Tarkov. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you talking about like Twitch streaming? Yeah, like I, you know, I, you know, I have games. You, you don't need a game. You can just you just go on there and, and just like 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 do just talking and answer questions. Like like if you like I've played a bunch of games, but I think my most successful streams have been when I just play poker. And uh, I just stream my poker game, and it's because it's poker is so slow. You know, you're mm-hmm. almost always folding mm-hmm. your hand. It's it's very mm-hmm. rare that you're even playing a hand that I can just sit there and shoot the shit forever. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's the way to go. And I've played like I've played games like Nazi Zombies and Vermintide that are like really like con- continuously blowing shit up and shooting shit. People like poker just as much mm-hmm. they're, or they're more. When I play Zombies or Vermintide, generally I don't interact with the chat. And oh, the chat's I do. Favorite it's hard. Thing. Yeah. No, I'm saying it wrong. I interact with the chat, but I don't do it as well, and I miss too much. Whereas if I do just chatting, that is their favorite thing for me to do. I always mm, get more viewers. For sure. But I feel like I can run out of material. If I were to do just chatting all the time, then before long, it it's the same stories, the same financial advice, the same yeah. this, the same mm-hmm. that. Whereas yeah. if you play a game, there's like something else generating content. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy poker, but I'm not going to play in this high stakes poker game that these these boys have going. How on high there. are the stakes? Like, what? How big is a big pot? Almost thirteen hundred now, Woody. Um, one guy has lost one thousand one hundred dollars, and one guy's lost thirty seven hundred dollars so far. Thirty seven hundred. Um, is he the guy? No, 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 no three hundred seventy. Easily... Oh, okay. sorry. But even the thirteen, there are people who can lose thirteen hundred dollars who don't he even worry about that. Yeah, tomorrow. He, he doesn't worry about that. He he's not going to yeah. notice that money. Yeah. He does not give a fuck. Isn't that crazy? Like, I don't know. Just guys that can like, we asked a guy like, how much money do you have? Or what do you do? And he's like, the question you mean to be asking is what does my dad do? And it's oh. like, all right. The other, that answers it kind of. Yeah. You've it's, generational wealth. They're playing two, They're for those who like might be interested. They're playing $2, $5, $1,000 buy-in. Uh, no this is, hold them. Uh, this is going to be so dangerous how mainstream gambling is getting now. 
gambling is being integrated into every sports broadcast. I just watched, for instance, what the Jake Paul fight. I didn't even finish watching it. But gambling was such a huge part of that production. They were cutting away to the Dave Portnoy gambling desk before every fight, just encouraging fucking 18-year-olds to blow their paycheck on a frivolous boxing match. Online, I have a buddy here in L.A. who lost 20 grand that he could not absolutely afford to lose on online blackjack NFL fantasy. I hear ads for that. Every time I watch any sort of NFL content, it's going to be interesting. I seriously considered betting 10 grand on the Jake Paul fight. I, so if you guys don't know how gambling works, everybody knows, but it it is rare that I am both fully confident that this guy's going to win. And he's an underdog. That never happens. Whenever I mm-hmm. know someone's going to win, you bet $3 to get one back. Like that, mm-hmm. you know. But this time I knew Tyrone Woodley was going to kick his ass. This guy's a world champion. Finally, he's a real boxer. Sure, Jake Paul beat up the NBA player. Sure, Jake Paul beat up uh, Ben Askren, who's famously known to be a poor striker. But now mm-hmm. he's against Tyrone Woodley. Tyron Woodley's mm-hmm. an actual world champion. Like I just knew he would win. Yeah. And um I, I and he was the underdog. Like yeah. you'd be a fool not to bet on that, or so uh-huh. I thought. In the end, I didn't bet. And I'm just like, I, oh, yeah. I never want to bet. I'm always so happy yeah. when I don't bet. <laughs> uh, Dude, my my two MMA bets are so disastrous. The two ever. First one was Forrest Griffin versus fucking Anderson Silva. I bet on Forrest Griffin. You guys wow. might remember that one. Because uh, he weighed and, 205? What was your thinking? I, 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 dude, I don't know. I think I was like, okay. oh, he's funny. He's got a good personality. Fuck Anderson. <laughs> so, it might have been like after Anderson had, had, dis- yeah. had decision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Damian Myers, <laughs> Good timing. Uh, but uh, yeah, exactly. He like decisioned two guys. And I was like, he's fucking done, dude. He's washed. And uh, of course, <laughs> that's one of the most highlighty highlight reel knockouts of Anderson's career where he goes mm-hmm. into the matrix, dodges a bunch of forest punches, mm-hmm. and then comes back with a dink jab that flatlines oh, right, for us. And then I bet that Matt Hughes was going to beat BJ Penn in November 2010. And of course, BJ, like from the opening bell, just in the time it takes to take six steps and then throw three punches, knocks Matt completely unconscious. And that was the end of my gambling career in MMA. BJ used to be so good. <laughs> He was insane. He's uh, my buddy Uriah. I know Uriah Faber from Sacramento, and Uriah was really good friends with, with BJ. He'd go out to Hilo all the time, and I guess Hilo just had uh, a prodigious Coke, or BJ had a prodigious Coke problem. Still does. Huh. What, how yeah. did he have a Coke problem strong. and a weight problem? Come on, BJ. Yeah, he Hawaiian. Dude, he... Hawaiian, yeah, a lot of pork, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of sweet meats. A lot of, lot of homo homo hoi hoi. Yeah, no joke. I, Hawaiian a, men tend to put on body that's fat. That's where you make a turducken with yeah. pineapples and pigs, and you just keep repeating it with larger pigs and pineapples. That it sounds pretty good. I just made I mean, that pineapples up. Oh. So big. I don't know how that scales. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, man. They, they, so my well, you start with a pig fetus. Child. Yeah. <laughs> <The> child <laughs> pig. You get that, fe- that pig fetus inside of a mini pineapple, and <laughs> then you go from there until you've got an enormous pig and... I guess Mm. you would need some bigger pineapples, but we'll work on that. Turduckins are like, I've never had one, but it's like, it's a little weird. It's a little like, like spitting in God's face. Good. You're you're, you're (laughs) starting to, you're starting to get me on board now, but like, I don't, I don't like duck. Um, What? What what do you like? Not like about duck. It doesn't taste very good. Um, Well, that's wrong. Like like deep fried turkey. Deep fried turkey is just so fucking good that like, that's all I want to eat. If I'm eating some sort of cooked bird. That isn't like chicken. Um, deep fried turkey is fucking incredible. I, I prop, I might do one for the boys. I'm gonna cook a lot for the uh, uh, when we're on vacation. So like, I don't know if somebody wants to spring for a fucking deep fryer and five gallons of peanut oil. I'll fry us a whole fucking turkey. What's that night. cost a deep fryer? The whole shebang. You end up like under 150. Like like for everything. I want to say not the, too bad. I want to say the deep fryer is like 75 dollars for like the pot. And the uh, the burner, and then you've got to get a, a thing of propane, which is like maybe twenty five dollars, and then you've got to get the peanut oil, which is like another like thirty five to forty five fifty dollars, something like that, if I remember correctly. I, again, it's been t- I didn't do Thanksgiving last year because of my diet, and then so it was the one before that last time I did this shit. But um, I own one, 
Um, it's it's mm-hmm. outside. It's been out there for two years, full of peanut oil. So probably not still good to eat. Yeah, I would think that. Yeah, you're going on vacation. Where are you going on vacation? I'm going to Colorado as soon as I get off probation in 21 days. How long? Four. Uh, minimum of two weeks, but I'm I, I may extend it. Um, I may like uh, like I'm going. So like I, my friend group is kind of like broke up into guys that I've known for like m- five years or more and a group of guys that I've known for like one or two years and they don't always mesh super well together. Yeah. So like one week is like long time guys and the other mm-hmm. week is like um, sort of newer guys. And so, yeah. there is some crossover between the two. Mm-hmm. So like I, I, I rented a big house. I mean, we all did. They right chipped in. <laughs> Um, got an Airbnb, and so we're gonna do two weeks like that at this place in Colorado, just smoking it up all day, every day, and uh, and then like, I don't know if I'm going to extend. I have a one way flight, so mm-hmm. I haven't quite decided yet. But um, I might fly a girl out there with me and like mm-hmm. stay for another week or another two weeks. Like like I don't know. I haven't really settled. Um, a couple of the guys have mentioned that hey, I might stay an extra week too. So like, if there if I get in a scenario where like scum for example somebody I actually like is like yeah you want to <laughs> you want to stay for another week like like then all of a sudden like 180 dollars a night airbnb is rather affordable to just go another mm-hmm. week um so so i could see myself doing that um i don't know at least two weeks maybe a month i have that I get same home, I'm, i've already I'm, i've already started packing my belongings um like, like i'm doing it a little bit every day like like yeah i'm not gonna need my kitchen aid mixer so it's packed you know i'm not gonna need like my winter clothes, so they're packed. So I'm already packing my bags uh, and my belongings because I'm moving in sometime in November. I'm going to get out of Georgia and go to a legal state um, because I love marijuana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you certainly do. I'm excited for you. <laughs> it's going to bring He's you so fan. much joy. Look at him. He loves it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like catnip like, to him. Like, that, that's, from that, that's a reference from uh, the Chappelle show when they're mm-hmm. talking about black people liking chicken and they're like, yep. watching the black people. Look at him. He loves it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 22 days and one hour. So we're just about to like roll over another day here in a few minutes. I'm, I'm, it's, I've had this, this timer on my phone for, I don't know, almost a year. So yeah. I, I've just watched it take down day after day. And it's, uh, I don't know. Three weeks to go. When that, That's... when that, when that thing goes off, it's going to be, uh, it, and, and, and like the, that alarm is set so that it's, um, it's, um, John Denver, um, Rocky Mountain High, Colorado, Rocky Mountain High. <laughs> like that's that song plays when when the timer rolls the fuck over. So I don't know. I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty excited. I've been planning this trip for four years. That's <clears throat> yeah. that's long. I was planning my Vegas vacation that I got that I had this last uh, summer for like three four months, and I had a timer and everything too. I was fucking pumped, and then I just immediately got COVID, and it was such an anticlimax. Like the yeah. weekend wasn't even that great. But I can relate to what you're talking about, like the two friend groups so well, because Mm -hmm. all of my friends from college or some of my friends are from elementary school. They're like good looking, well-educated guys that I can bring around classy people and count on them not to make fools of themselves. And even some of my girlfriend's friends might like to hook up or potentially date those guys. But then I have my YouTube filming squad. <laughs> it's got guys like Mudflap and King Croc and Swolby One Kenobi. We had one party, one big party for my girlfriend's birthday last year in September. We had a big Airbnb in uh, San Diego, like $1,500 a night Airbnb. Had all my filming crew over and all of my girlfriend's hot friends. And then after that party, I'm not going to tell you how it went, but I'll tell you that we had another one in March and none of my girlfriend's friends attended. <laughs> they, they just wanted nothing to do with these like, creeps. Like, they must like, have been. Hey, uh, yeah, hey Danny, is Mudflap going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> OK, good to know, because I won't be anywhere fucking near <laughs> the Airbnb if Mudflap is going to be. I'm here. sorry, <laughs> lady, but no matter where you are, Mudflap is going to be near. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, will find you. he can't help he's like an orbiting moon you know That's... he's shit in the freezer right <laughs> <laughs> is that a real I, bit <laughs> i'm just listening like it's, it's a very much do i want to go do i want to go with the youtube crew I, I, I there are both sides of my personality in there well, like if, if you your school crew or your YouTube crew, the split, I, the way Kyle's doing it, that's the way to do it. Yeah, it sounds like the mode Kyle's in right now. He would want to go with my real friends because they would be much better wingmen uh, in the event of some pussy getting uh, opportunity. I, I, so your school crew is not your real friends. 
What's that? Your school crew is not your real friends. My shooting crew or my school crew? Wait, I don't know. Uh, Which one's your real friends? Well, my friends from before, I, I mean, they're both my real friends, but some are just, I mean, much less uh, socially adept characters. Is what I would say, but like, yeah, if but you want to, what were you talking about when you said real friends just now? Probably the old, the guys I've known since elementary oh, school. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not necessarily like, like looking to get laid or anything. Like, I really just want to smoke some fucking weed and watch <laughs> good movies and, uh, and and just have a good time. Uh, a lot of these guys I've never met before. I've just kind of mm. like talked to them online for years and years now, and so this mm. will be the first time I've met a few of them. But a few of them I have met, and uh, they all seem like no, non autistic guys. Oh, and let me say this. To those of you in the fifty dollars Discord who keep messaging fish and being like, "Hey, do you think I can come on the trip? I'm I'm a cool guy, you know." And then you sort of like lay out your sob story about how how some awful things have happened to you in your life and how much I've meant to you over the years. Look, I feel all of that. I'm sorry that you've had a rough time. That stuff sucks. You've all had rough times. We all have, right? Everybody here has had a rough time from time to time. It happens. Shit happens. Life is life is a bitch. I really do appreciate everyone who's watched me over the years and still watches me and all that stuff. I, I enjoy entertaining. And without you, I, I'm just sitting in a room just being weird. But I've been planning on this trip for four fucking years. I'm going to be in like a compromised position, literally high, you know, like, like I'm not going to feel comfortable with absolute strangers. And like, mm -hmm. I know that you think of me as someone, you know, really well. Right. But I think of you as like MC hammer 3636. I don't know what you even look like, bro. Like you could that be a dope, weirdo. Though. You could be, you could <laughs> stick your pants. dick in my ear while I'm passed out. <laughs> and they you will. Could, like, you could like do weird stuff to my food. <laughs> like, like we, I'll do some sort of a trip in the future where like any of the fifty dollar Discord guys that want to can come on. I think that's a good way to like whittle people down to like the the least weird. Like maybe we'll do a paintball <laughs> trip. We'll do a booze cruise. Like like we'll do a paintball trip. We'll like rent a big fucking mansion and get and get some whores. Like <laughs> we'll go to Vegas and like pool our money and put it all on black. Like 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 what if we did that? What if we all like raised between like a hundred of us? We raised like ten thousand dollars and like put it on like black. And then we guaranteed we we're gonna take the money, put it in crypto, and it had to sit there for ten years. <laughs> like, 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 yeah, like, what like is, doable things. <laughs> it's hundred percent doable. Like, like it's just a funny bit to do. And yeah. like, and like, what if in ten years, like ten thousand dollars that we that we uh, what would it become? Like eighteen thousand dollars. That eighteen thousand dollars has grown to like one hundred eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> and like, like those of us that invested are like, yeah, I, I'm actually. I do have that money to loan you, like Ben, because I did this thing <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah. Like, like, I don't know. Like, like we'll do something silly, is what I'm saying. Like, like, mm. but this is maybe like not my, an investment scheme. <laughs> <laughs> maybe an investment yeah. scheme. Maybe an now, investment you, scheme. You give me money. And you go find three people to give you money, and you give me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to talk to you about my multi-level marketing goji goji berry um, situation. I'm going to need all of you to, to like come in with me on that one. Yeah, um, from the Indies Mountains. But but yeah, like, like like this is like that um, that thing Howard Stern used to play of like George Harrison or whoever the fuck when he was like finally saying, "Look, I'm not going to sign any more Beatles memorabilia, okay? With peace and love, peace and love." I'm telling you, no more signatures. No more. You mail me mm -hmm. something and I'm throwing it away with peace and love. If I wanted you on my trip, I would have invited you. And that's not me trying to be nasty. You didn't invite me to like your family reunion because we don't know each other, right? This is like a personal private trip that I'm taking with a, with a very small group of friends that I've known for years. Mm -hmm. So like inviting yourself on that trip is... Forgive me, but autistic as fuck, and it and it leads me to believe that at no point in the future are we ever gonna like be able to match to the point where like I'm like like I I wouldn't invite my, I know Harley pretty well. If Harley was going on a trip, there's no way I would invite myself on Harley's trip. If Harley wants me on his fucking trip, he'd be mm -hmm. like, "Yo, Kyle, you want to come? <laughs> you want to come get scared?" He'd yeah. say it. He'd say it, and, and and like he knows I'd probably come. 50 50 maybe maybe not depends how i'm feeling mm -hmm. and i've known that man for years he's stayed at my home like like i've i feel i've worked with him many times i don't know you dragon slayer 69 i i can't mm -hmm. I but can't. you could know me yeah i just don't <laughs> we're talking about cohabitating for a week you know i mean like, i already like, know the rule about no dick in your ear 
Yeah, yeah I mean, square. at least when nobody's around. Are there any like, other like, I hope. I hope that. <laughs> so so I, I I hope that like you're not so goddamn autistic. And I'm not talking to one person. There's like ten of them. Like 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 just know this. It's nothing personal. It's just that I don't know you well enough to invite you on this trip I've been planning for four yeah. fucking years. That means ever so much to me. Like like I don't need you like getting me swatted. Or like, mm. I don't know. Get, for all I know, you're a violent drunk, and you're gonna get weird and like pick a mm -hmm. fight with somebody. Or, or like, l for all I know, you're gonna like start crying and get fucking weird. Or you're gonna take too many of your pills one night and like fucking break a lamp or something. Like I don't know you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> These this are all Airbnb, real what a rampage. This Airbnb. <laughs> what a rampage. <laughs> I, this Airbnb, like, like we're not in a mansion or anything, but I'm out. I'm, I'm like eight thousand dollars in or something like that for this Airbnb. So it's like. I can't have you like fucking shit up for me. We're 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 essentially strangers. These weirdos you're describing, they might get along well with Danny and his friends. Yeah, they can. Yo, you know yo, yo look, pills, you know, breaking lamps. You want to go hang out with Mudflap and the boys? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> are, you, are you prone to breaking lamps and putting dicks in ears? Because this sounds oh. like mullen content. Only when I take enough pills. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, let, let me. We and, and there are guys in our Discord who are like always just fucked up on like Breaking one drug like, 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 <laughs> like, 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 like like clearly they're, they're, they're they have destruct self-destructive what's the guy's name who parachutes drugs Sn snorlax yes <laughs> oh no you guys have a guy named snorlax who parachutes drugs that yeah. is the guy that i would that is a guy i would hang out with i want snorlax to come to my patreon and start making a I, relationship he's a little him. subdued you you should you well, he's, 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 just, he's fucking snorlax I yeah you so. might call him sedated even he's just <laughs> zannied out yeah he, he's and, and it's just like he's, he seems like a, he seems like a nice guy but it's like frustrating to deal with him because he's like doesn't hear mm -hmm. you got to repeat yourself so many times and then he's then there'll be like this pause and he still didn't get it. And it's just like, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> You're not worth my time here. Like, like, like I'm, yeah. what I'm doing a thing. Life feel like about him, right? Like, if he was my kid, I'd be like, my kid is a is fucking winner. First of all, he's in the fifty dollar PKA Discord. Oh my god! <laughs> you know he got to talk to Woody the other day. Yeah, my kid is the best. I wasn't gonna rip him. It just I was gonna be. I would be concerned that he's always in his altered state. I, I've never seen him not. Uh, I haven't either. Um, I'm sure it happens occasionally. I mean, he's got to sleep sometimes. I'm sure, but, 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 but some assisted sleep. Issues. But yeah, yeah I just I wanted to your issues, bro. Address I wanted to like address that like blanket wise because like a lot of you will message like guys that you know are coming on the trip and like again, it's it's nothing but sobs and and oftentimes it, it comes with an offer to like buy me some weed or like a pl like ply your trade. In whatever whatever it is you do, whatever you're mm -hmm. an expert in, it's like yeah yeah, I'll I, I'm I'm a fucking race car um, race bike rider. I'll, I'll Kyle could ride my bike for an afternoon. And I'll teach <laughs> some, some cool skills, and it's just like dude, I'm gonna be high. I and I have no interest in learning to like ride your track bike. Oh oh, but you don't even know, bro. Like like I'm a I'm a movie aficionado. I'll be quoting every movie we watch. It's like. I, I well, would that hate sounds that. first of all, that sounds awful. Like, like if, if someone <laughs> out there is like, "Hey, uh, Kyle, I'm trying to. I'm I, trying I to work for the Lord of the Rings Amazon show, and mm -hmm. I have the entire thing on a flash drive. If you want to come, or or like like, like <laughs> they'll, <laughs> or they'll offer like dollars of weed, and like like weed is so cheap in Colorado. Like like I, ounces are like 180 dollars or something like that. Off the top of my head, it's probably you'd probably get some cheaper shit, and obviously there's more expensive shit. But it's like I'll smoke you out, and it, which for what he's benefit means like they'll get the like here hit this you're high now i smoked you out that's smoking someone out it's like it's, <laughs> yeah it's like let's offer have a, you 50 cents worth like, of hey bro you want to sip <laughs> yeah. it's literally it's less impressive than saying can i buy you one beer you know yeah. you know what i've done a couple of times people are like hey matthew why don't you come to me i'll buy you a beer and it's like you did like four things wrong in that invitation. <laughs> There's no way I want. First of all, well, that's not my fucking name. I, <laughs> you should know, I despise alcohol uh, more than anything, beer. And traveling to you to do something I hate just doesn't seem like a good idea, especially since yeah. you don't know my name. To to get interviewed effectively. The, yeah, the real first name thing. 
they probably don't mean it like this, but I see no, it they as don't. super creepy. I see it as like, ooh, I have inside information on you. I have um, maybe I've stalked your Facebook or just watched enough of your content that I'm calling you Matthew when nobody does. My wife calls me Woody, right? It, yeah, th- but they they know just enough to know that, but not enough to know that nobody fucking calls you that. And we've had this little talk we're having right now a dozen mm-hmm. fucking times over the last decade. And and I just see it as a creepy sort of like. I've never called this man Matthew. It no. would be weird. No, it what, would be uh, weird. What if we did that in like pre-shows? We're like, all right, Matt. Uh, <laughs> it would be <laughs> like <laughs> it would be like if Woody called me FPS to my fa- like, yo FPS like 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 Harley does that for like shits and giggles. Like like he'll, he'll call me fucking FPS in real life, and it's it's cute. It's funny. I get it. I get the joke. Mm-hmm. Especially when there's another Kyle like right next to me. It's weird when there's like mo- there's there's a lot of Kyles. Yeah. It would be so weird if Woody the called monster me just yet. drains. Yeah, no. That's but, what you're but, gonna do? Go get high and drink a bunch of Monster Zero Ultras. But but, but yeah, Kyles. like 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 I, without getting like into too much detail. Like like I mean, you, you look, you see like the craziness that goes on in Wings' life. I don't need that kind of nonsense. And one of you could be a little, uh, you know, you could you could you could put on your Twitter like, oh, I'm hanging with FPS Russia, and like there's a fucking street sign in the background. Yeah. And now we're getting like swatted or like people are showing up. That's all it weird. takes. And, you know, like like somebody wants to come fucking fight me, bro. Because, oh, you think you're so tough, you can fight Diego? Like somebody who doesn't understand, <laughs> understand sarcasm. I'm a fucking black belt. Let's throw down. Uh, fucking dude. Rex Quando, eight years. <laughs> Rex Quando. <laughs> can, can we switch That's over good. to Wings? Or did, did you want to talk more on this? We covered him up pretty good. Dude, um, I, but- I... So Wings apparently is getting all this negative attention. We covered that pretty well. I have this hope that it's like an upswing of Wings' attention and possibility again. We talked about it on the show with Harley, how if he just played the heel and leaned into this, he could be huge. He could be wildly successful. (sighs) I feel like there's a TikTok thing happening right now, and if he plays this right, shoot for the moon bro like like i think if you're being accused of pedophilia even in jest you just totally distance from that the, like lean into it, it, it <laughs> lean, into lean into it, it. give lean give all those it. tiktokers like, look, more attention you need you need your wife to be playing like 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 the sound of like a screaming child every, every <laughs> like, like 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 just be like just, just ah, help help <laughs> deal with that honey <laughs> Don't I, make me come in there and shut it up. You know, then you have like, 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 into kids, and, and then his wife like, comes on scream and scream with the double ponytails, looking like she's six years old oh, <laughs> Maybe no. with a giant yeah. lollipop. I mean, <laughs> I would get a child. I would get an actual human child, <laughs> like, 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 like to just like I kind of like run in and look 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 afraid and disheveled, and then run back out and and just be like, we got a code seven, and this is just, just, just like. You know, and they get back into to the... playing some game from. Oh no! Yeah, wait, this is the new well. girl. It's a code five. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like li- literally framing the man for like pedophilia is just just yeah. so it's fucked. It's so low brow and easy to it's do. Fucked, Ricky. Like, ah, fucking but greasy. I, <laughs> fucking greasy. I, I, I get that it's not the perfect opportunity, but it's an opportunity, and I, I just hope he leans into it somehow. Plays the heel, like you know, doesn't give a fuck. It, no, I saw his. I saw his stream. He's just like you guys, just always ruining my life. You do this and you do that. You already got my Twitch partnership taken away, so I'm out twenty five thousand dollars for that. And they're like, "You're a liar. This didn't happen." He's like, "The cops just left." He's, he's like, "No, they didn't." And he's like, "Honey, come in here and tell them the cops just left." And it's just like, <laughs> "It's like Dude, you're being trolled engaged, so yeah. goddamn hard immediately." Like, like. You'd think he would he would adapt in his approach over the many 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 years of this. I, no, he. I we talked he about why he successfully can't trolled. It baffles me because this man is a social media professional with 12, 14 years experience, something like that. How, how is he still? Well, then again, I pronounce when people feign ignorance. It's his, it uh, reporter name, and I didn't get it. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, oh, oh yeah, Bernie. Gores Bernie. was his last name. Yeah. Bernie. So you guys can combine that in your on your own. Yeah. And uh what was it? It was Bernie Gores. Faster. Bernie. Gores. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so now songify that. <laughs> so I, I wanted to, to save it for the very end. I would feel Danny, bad. Danny, I don't know I if you're familiar uh, with what happened, but like they, they had this fake CNN account that looks very official. It's like uh-huh. CNN Mogadishu or something, and he just got all sure. the like branding. And like one letter off of being like official. And mm-hmm. uh, they're like, 
you know, they got a picture of wings and they're, they're saying that he's a correspondent named Bernie Gores, who's been like killed by the Taliban, you know, in the withdrawal from Afghanistan. And mm-hmm. they're like, like in memoriam and stuff, or like maybe he's missing. And they do this every time there's a, a natural or world disaster, like, like whenever a building bro- blows up. Or, or something explodes, they're like, mm-hmm. rip Bernie Gores, like, he, he, they, they, you know, and they show that picture of wings. Well, this time it got picked up because the Afghanistan thing is so, mm-hmm. like, such a hot button issue. Yeah. That people mm-hmm. are like, look at this, a CNN correspondent's been murdered. <laughs> goddamn libs, get fucking <laughs> take that one on the chin. And and, and, and it's just like, it's a, now they had to, like, put it on all those sites that, like, correct things like that, like Snopes and uh, mm-hmm. all the all the correct, correctors of the internet nonsense. To like affirm that no, this is a YouTuber. <laughs> He's not. There is no one named Bert, and I haven't seen anyone be like. And just so you know, that name is meant to be a pun. That they, they still don't get that. Like yeah. none of these people, like at Snopes or whatever, get that. Like like, like they don't get it. They don't. Wait too, wait. It, 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 it's like it's really late for me. I don't get it either. What's it's in right, the what chat? Was, I wrote it. Do you see what I wrote? Burn. <laughs> Where's burn. the chat? Oh, such a under word. private. Channel. Oh no! And then yeah. how do you pronounce how do you pronounce it correctly? Bernie, like how do you pronounce like Bernie it? Bernie like... Sanders, last name okay. Gores, kind of like Al Gore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, they're that, getting more and more creative that's in the covert that's not, racist that's, tricks. That's, yeah. So you got to respect problem. that. It's a problem. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'm yeah. so care- I'm so careful about what I read aloud because it's, I'm such a dope. Remember, remember when oh, that, yeah. that you. Um, you gotta be. Remember when that like uh, that news report came out about the plane that went down and the pilot was like, "We too low," and then and like, <laughs> like, like, and, and like the rest of the flight team is like, "Ouch, bang, dim," or like, yeah. like, <laughs> "Holy fuck." Like, Holy like, fuck, and, like, and we gone is, crash. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, we gone crash. Like, like, it, was like a, it was like a Korean flight team that all passed away. And she's reading it yeah. so, like, soberly. And she's, she's like, yeah, oh, yeah. when you read We Too Low or whatever. <laughs> we, too low. <laughs> <laughs> we, we Too Low has got to be the best one. <laughs> we Too Low is too so low. fucking good. Wait, wait, so, so legitimate news outlets were reading the name Bernie Gores? <laughs> All over Twitter. Um, I don't know if it got picked mm-hmm. up by like mainstream media and like read out, but like it became, it got trending on Twitter. I think it got enough of a push on Twitter because <laughs> of the so hashtags funny, that That's like a lot of people. Funny. And you know they <laughs> look. I like the idea of like trolling like big organizations and tricking them into our like nonsense that we do mm-hmm. that, that, we, that we do here. It's mm-hmm. kind of a funny little like, hey, look, look at that. We got them to like buy mm-hmm. into the silliness. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one I don't mind, honestly. That one seems like nobody's getting hurt. If I'm wings with that one, I, I lean into that one for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. like, like, like I I go on like my own Twitter and do a memoriam to myself, mm-hmm. like, like, like the mm-hmm. whole the whole night. Yeah, get his wife to be like crying and have a tearful video about Bernie and how like yeah. he, <laughs> he trusted the Biden administration <laughs> and they left him hanging and like like, that like, like oh like, that's that's dark like, left him be hanging. like be like we raised two hundred thousand dollars they left him hanging I know, oh my god did you even <laughs> process I don't sure Kyle did it on purpose <laughs> no I mean they don't have ropes like that there it's it's kind of a backward society they don't they don't have they use they use stones they yeah. use vines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Mind you, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know, I saw Biden today uh, on YouTube Live uh, doing his his like whole co- his COVID thing. Really okay. good stuff. I thought it was really good stuff. He's like, you know, opening the whole federal faucet to like fight COVID and like like I, I can't remember the specifics, but he's Is gonna have. Af- oh, I'm sorry. Carry on. He's gonna have like the three biggest retailers like Amazon. Uh, maybe Walmart and like like one of the big pharmacies. Like I can't remember specifically, but Amazon was definitely one of them. He, they're going to like use the whatever like the defense. There's there's some kind of thing the federal government can do to like declare a product like for national security or something like that. And they're doing that for COVID testing, and it's yeah. going to be sold at cost. So so they're trying to get as many like COVID tests out there for as cheap as possible, um, backed by the federal government. And then lots of stuff that they were working on. To like, like he had a really good moment where he was like, "Parents, I'm going to speak to you personally now." And he kind of goes off the tele- teleprompter and he's like, "If you love your children, get them vaccinated. Get them vaccinated. Go get that shot. You get them. You get them shots for everything else. Why not this? We're all sorts of vaccines. Get this vaccine." And he starts laying out some st- some statistics about 
12 to 17 year olds making up this large percentage of serious hospitalization case type cases. And it's like, yeah, man, get the fucking vaccine. I don't know. I'm glad I have the fucking vaccine. Someone that's in my life right now just got fucking COVID. And it's like, I, like, 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 I'm not going to, I, 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 I care about you. So I'm just not going to shit on you. But like Two people in my life died from COVID. It's rough, right? Um, and and look, like, like it, it's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't even want to talk. Now that you say that, I don't even want to talk about the Herman Cain Award because that's pretty fucked up. Oh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> were the people who passed away like deniers, or were they just victims of deniers? Oh, in my life, <laughs> yeah, deniers. Not deny. They just that wasn't so for them. Would they get yeah, a Herman Cain Award or another? Uh, well, the Herman Cain Award winners typically like broadcast and stand on a soapbox. They lots of stuff bad. on Facebook. That wouldn't describe them. They were Fair. just, you know, Republicans. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, the Herman Cain Award is a subreddit that uh, it's a little dark, but I enjoy it. And uh, basically, they they take the Facebook history of people who have died of COVID. And it's like post after post of like, you know, like comparing wearing a mask to being loaded onto a train to Auschwitz or, you know, the thing where the thing where you got the two rat, the thing where you got the two rats and like lab rats. And they're like, hey, have you had the vaccine yet? And the, the, the other lab rat says, no, I'm waiting till they finish the human testing. And, you know, like all these cutesy things like that. Yeah. And then at the end and, and they're like, they're like. Nobody will ever muzzle me, and it's always a fat white guy with a fucking goatee. And uh, and at the it's end, it's to hide the double chin. Oh, if they're, if they're, hide fat, the they're at risk. Yeah. And and at the very end, every like, like there's usually a post or two where they're like, "I'm so sick right now with the COVID, like like 104 degree fever. Every breath is agony. I need prayer warriors." And <laughs> and then the one and then the one right after that is like. In memoriam for Big Daddy, he died last night. We're trying to raise some money for his Big funeral. Daddy. We, we got we got two grand raised, and I'm thinking like, <laughs> average funeral's got to be seventy five hundred dollars if if we're just putting them in a, a decent box. Like like mm-hmm. they don't they don't Cremation's have funeral. cheaper, I think. Sure, then you end up with that like Chinese takeout box. Pretty much, yeah. I uh, I wanted to save it for the end because it's not like a joke thing, but I had. Uh, a bunch of people messaged me about my wife's thing going on. So I wanted to give people a little update for Danny's benefit. Uh, she had uh, a, they thought it was a tumor in her spinal cord, which is a very obviously serious thing. So we went to the Mayo clinic up in Minnesota all of last week. Uh, and we were there getting tests done, more scans and everything. Really, really good doctors there. I, it's I, I'm going to cover it more deeply on the PKN. So earlier this week on PKN, if you are on the Patreon, you already got that. Um, but basically, we went there like immediately. They do scans and everything. It takes you know not nearly as long there as it would the traditional hospital. And they found out, or this really good doctor, world class, was like, this is not a tumor. It's what's called a cavernous malformation, which is where blood vessels in your spinal cord like in the cord itself, I'll get bundled up and, and fucked up and it causes bleeding and that can cause tremendous amounts of damage. So like on one hand, it was like, I don't remember how I described it on, on PKN, but it was like, like the tumor would have been horrible, horrible news, but like a cavernous malformation is not like a, Oh, good, hooray. Like it's still an incredibly serious thing. And uh, her pain was going down for a while last week. Cause I was like insisting, like she couldn't be on her, like, lifting anything doing anything uh go i went to my brother's wedding this past weekend we like drove all the way from i thought we we thought we were gonna miss his wedding and thankfully we were able to make it but we we drove all the way back from minnesota to st louis slept and then drove straight to kansas city for his wedding and so my wife was on her feet a good bit those two days and just being on her feet those two days we got her back here and she had like another big flare-up of pain the past couple days i guess since pkn uh doing a little better this evening um, but what initially it was going to be, uh, surgery or you take a little break and you see if the bleeding naturally the swelling goes down and gets, uh, more manageable for surgery. Cause you obviously don't want to go in there when it's at its worst. And, um, what they said was, okay, in, in about eight to 12 weeks, get another MRI in St. Louis and then send it to us at Mayo and we'll analyze it, see what's up and what we recommend. Um, but because of her pain flare ups, again, we're moving that to maybe like a month from now instead Because it is like time is of the essence. And the thing with these bleeds is they can happen at any time for any reason. Like you don't know. Um, And if a bleed gets severe, it can cause things like 
numbness permanently or, you know, in a severe a paralysis, like very, very serious things. Um, and so, yeah, we're waiting about four weeks or so do that again. Uh, if we hear from the doctor, like, Hey, it hasn't progressed. It's actually like getting a little smaller, uh, that might, depending on his recommendation, that could either be an indication of, you know, give it another month and see, or it might be, you know, it's gone down enough that it's more easily operable and it's near the surface of the spinal cord. And so we could like cut it open and go in there and like drain out the amount of blood we could. Um, but there's all just, even if it shrinks up like teeny tiny, just it having been there and bled means there's like a 50% chance in the future it's going to bleed again. And you don't know. It could be days, weeks, months, years. You like you don't know when it would bleed again. Apparently, if you get the surgery, it can cut down on that risk a good bit. The future bleeds, but still nothing's for certain. So that's uh, that was the real fast version update of it. I got so an unbelievable amount of messages from people being really kind and supportive, which is which is a nice change. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so thank you guys all. I, I saw people like, I had people reaching out to me like, hey, we're going to start a GoFundMe. And I'm like, please do not do that. Like, don't don't start a GoFundMe. For Dude, I've raised so much money. They happen. just keep sending it to me. They just, yeah, they yeah. just keep sending it to Kyle. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you. Well, never forget it. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, never mind. I, 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 I named the organization The Taylor Fund. <laughs> that has that has nothing to do with you. It's, it's, just, no. it's no. just called the Taylor Fund. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's about ta- it's about getting me a nice line of suits. <laughs> it's called my Taylor. <laughs> you fools! Uh, weird he spells really, his name that way. <laughs> it's dumb on the surface, but what makes bleeding so bad? Do you know? Does bleeding mean yeah. pressure? What like it would seem so, like bleeding is a a way to shrink this thing. So the the bleeding because it's in the spinal column. Uh, there's nowhere for it to go. Uh, so blood there just accumulates and by pressure, it can like impact nerves, which causes weakness or like, uh, numbness, uh, like neuropathy feelings, which is painful or just like straight up, like sharp stabbing pain. And it's like a cacophony of pains because it's your nerves. And so it could go from like a dull thud ache to like sharp to, numbness to tingling to like just a whole range of it and it 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 is my understanding caused by the pressure build up there uh and how and and what it's doing at the time like it's so complicated we still don't know everything about the spinal cord it's it's you know really difficult another surface level dumb question but like what hurts is it her back that hurts where the spinal cord is or does it like shoot down her legs because nerves do yeah it's uh it's in her back like in a band around here is where oh, it'll get very intense like and a belt like a belt, belt and pain. then uh in addition to that she'll get like leg pain like shooting down her both of her legs and then like numbness tingling in the lead legs like feeling a little shaky which is like fucking <laughs> really scary to be you know see my wife being like my, my legs are really shaky right now and it's like well like do do we need to, down. Like, to get in the car and drive to mayo right now and i keep telling her that i'm like just 1 a.m. Drop of a hat. Wake me up. You got to go to Mayo. Like get in the car. I'll drive the seven hours. Like last night, it was scary. She just like sat up in the middle of the night, like like Taylor, like 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 yelping in pain, and like just had to like sit up and like breathe for a couple minutes. Uh, and I'm like, do we need to go somewhere? Do we need to do anything? And she's like, no, 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 no. I it, it's starting to subside a little bit, but it woke me up. It was so intense, and it was. Does she have any painkillers? Uh, they painkillers don't work as well on these nerve pains like you need to really dope yourself up with a lot of it um and i accept your we term haven't, we, we haven't uh she's <laughs> speaking she my language <laughs> yeah, she, she doesn't want to use them really uh, she doesn't See, really like ideal them. perfect but yeah, yeah not for her. Her. Oh, I can, I can, I can pop can get them though, right? We're really yeah. asking about for the Colorado trip. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, few, a few vials of morphine, and, uh-huh. and you know, yeah. like, like, like I can handle the injection myself. Uh, Just, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, pain pill. Would these go good with a Chardonnay? <laughs> <laughs> either good or bad. You know, <laughs> you can, you can go either way with it. But yeah, um, a lot of those opiate pills don't oh, work. Oh, that's as well what I should have asked issues. for. I'm so dumb. I should have asked for fucking codeine syrup, my favorite drug. I could have been high all week. Damn it. Go back. Go to a different doctor. <laughs> that's literally drug seeking. Um, 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 yeah, I, maybe I, that's not a good call. Yeah, but but no, codeine fucking <laughs> syrup is like my favorite fucking drug. That shit is so <laughs> fucking good. 
It's so agree. fucking good. And you could have had it. Luck. You could be high right now. I I wish he'd given me some Tylenol three. I should have asked for painkillers. I should have been like, you know, the pain is just unbearable. Mm-hmm. I can't get this. It is really bad. Like, like I bet, dude. It would make you fail a drug test. Yeah, like but you, you just tell you, you're like, yeah, because I got these. Um, you know, you mm-hmm. get your name on a prescription. You can have whatever the fuck you want, except for marijuana, which is, you know, there's medical marijuana here. That's a weird one. But uh, but no, like like once I was getting tested and this chick had popped for opiates and she's like, but I got a prescription. And like, do you have it with you? No. Well, we have a problem then, don't we? And yeah. Like, oh, shit. You're in trouble. Um, get me. Yeah, Lanky Jerry gave it to me. He has a prescription. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if she really has one, it might be a solvable problem. Yeah, yeah, probably <laughs> so. But but yeah, if I get prescribed, you know, an opiate, then I just don't know I'm on an opiate. Uh, it is the same thing. Like I could do Adderall if I wanted to. You know, I have a script for that. But I don't because I don't want to go through the whole thing of like always testing positive for um, amphetamines. Oh, uh, well, thank you for the update, Taylor. Thank you yeah, for taking my no questions. Uh, you yeah, guys man. Wanna... Wish you, yeah, wish yeah. you the best. Danny, thank you yeah. so much for coming on. Always good. Always guest. a star. Um, hey, man. If I hadn't I can... been so sick this week, I would have arranged for Finster to come on with you because um, I think that would have been a that really be funny good. to pair you two together. Finster is a cross-dressing uh, Twitch streamer. Um, who is like a makes a really passable pretty girl? Um, mm. but not voice. He he doesn't. But, but when he opens his mouth, it's mm-hmm. like oh ho ho. Okay. Yeah, he's a straight guy mm-hmm. who looks like a hot chick, mm. and, really and hot. It, okay, and, uh, and his voice is normal. And it would have been fun to have you guys on together. We'll yeah, do it another uh, time. It'll be fun. Well, maybe I'll put him in a vlog. I'll let him peg me. Is this the uh, guy? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. it's I, not gay. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> that's not that. Oh, he's got a real cock. <laughs> I've seen it. But I, I think he wants to put it in girls. I think he has a girlfriend. I'm not sure. <laughs> You've seen mine, unfortunately. But yeah, guys, I'm fucking psyched to be on here. I think it's almost my two-year anniversary since I first came on. That was like November 2019, October 2019. Time it's been lies, fucking. Man. I know, man. It's been great times. Glad no uh, audio malfunctions this time. It was fucking no. fun, man. Anytime. Yeah, I went downstairs. My wife's like, how's it going? I'm like, really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> so check out Danny's channel uh, below. Go give him a, a watch. Yeah, if Thank you like you. PKA, you'll probably like his stuff. It's always some fucked up yep. shit. It is, yeah. I'm about lining fatties up and executing them in the street. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 there's got to be some kind of a pun where you turn Schindler's List into something about fat people. Oh. I work on it. I work on it. Give us some time. <laughs> that'll be our, that'll be our homework. I yeah. can already see it though, dude. <laughs> No, now, now I'm now I'm gonna force it if I try it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to work Schindler into something caloric. I don't have it. Yeah. All no, right. It's... PKA five six 